there is just one more obstacle to reach the 2012 World Series of Poker main event final table. <laughs> Day seven. I'm just trying to play my A game and just try to do what I got to do to get there, you know? Obviously, it'd be life-changing for me, but I'm not really thinking about that. I'm just trying to get there. Rob Salaburu and 26 others are embarking on a day that every poker player dreams of. Every day has been a struggle. Every day has been a grind, but it, it's awesome. It's an awesome experience. One day of poker to put themselves in position for life-changing money. All in. All in. Come on. All in. The final obstacle is here. 27 down to nine. This is day seven. Welcome to day seven of the World Series of Poker main event presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. On this critical day, the field will go from 27 players to nine final tableists. I'm Lon McCarron with Norman Chad and Kara Scott. We will find out what happens when everyone is battling for the same goal. We're at uh, day seven. It's the last day before the final table. So it's very exciting. I kind of used my one time up today. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I'm October. <laughs> All I'm trying to do is just think of the cards, think of the shifts, don't think about the money. You can't do that. Gail Bowman won't sneak up on anyone anymore. At first, she was a curiosity. Now, she is a contender. Get that double up yesterday that I'm going to mean business. No more 11th place. We're taking this one home today. World champion. Confidence can be a good thing at the poker table. What are you listening to? Get it. Day seven. Win the <laughs> Whoa, can't cuss on there. <laughs> good job. <laughs> FT, let's do it. Rob Salaburu seems loose. Still got a long way to go. You can sense the nervous energy inside the Amazon room, but Elizabeth Hill seems calm on the verge of history. Only one woman has ever made the final table the main event. This year, we could have two. The chip leader wears black, Mark andre Latasur from Canada. With the exception of the ears, I look just like Mark andre when I was his age. <laughs> Three players over the 10 million mark. Latasur, Daniel Strelitz, and Salaburu. Hill in fifth, Jamie Robbins in seventh. Let's go down to Kara Scott, who is with the chip leader. Marc-André Ladoucet is the chip leader going into the last 27 players. Tell me your thoughts going into day seven. Um, there's a lot of play left. I, uh, it's going to be a, a tough and long day. Uh, probably going to be here for another 10 to 12 hours. Um, you know, trying to put myself in good position for, well, one, make November 9, and then and hopefully, uh, hopefully have enough chips to be able to make something happen at the final table. Another former main event champion from French Canada as well. Jonathan Dumel is a friend of yours. Has, has he been giving you any tips on how to get through, even just in terms of not being fatigued at this point? Uh, obviously, being here when he won uh, was very inspiring. Uh, you, know, you, um, you know, you see a lot of things, you feel a lot of things. Uh, it definitely helps you getting prepared for, uh, for something like this, yeah. Okay, well, good luck out there. Thank you. Thank you. Lottisur highlights a very tough feature table. Merson and Sylvia on his left. This is a problematic table draw for Mark Andre. Amateur Elizabeth Hill has an above average stack, but we'll have to contend with Mark Andre here. Elizabeth Hill fears no one player should fear her. She is a silent assassin. I, I mean, I root for the Ravens and yeah. root for the Orioles and Nationals. I love Maryland basketball. Did you say Nationals? Yeah. Our boys. What? Our old boys. Your old boys. The kid I played with in high school is actually on the team. Really? Steve Lombardesi, yeah. 255, the Blinds had 16 and 120,000 with a 15,000 chip ante. Cy Watson opened the action for 255,000 on Mark Andre Latasur, the chip leader. 10 tray into the muck. Greg Merson on the Jack Link Speed Jerky Hole Cam with pocket queens on the button. The University of Maryland's Aaron Kaiser finished 104th here, and now three other Terps remain. Merson, Percy Mahatan, and Yuval Bronstein fear the turtle on. <laughs> and Cy Watson graduated from the University of New Hampshire. He's sort of out of his league here. <laughs> trying to follow Merson's chip count through this main event is like trying to ride a greased mechanical bull. <laughs> a re-raise to 675 from Greg Merson. In the small blind, Jesse Sylvia looks down at 7-6 of clubs. Cal Lutheran University, he should stay away. 
And he does just that. In the big blind, there is Percy Mahatton. Jack seven. And he will sit this one out. So back to Cy Watson. Now Watson has a sociology degree, please. <laughs> a sociology degree means I'm in college to party, I'm in college to check raise. <laughs> and with that degree, he's living in the San Francisco Bay Area. It's a good hand and glove fit. A re-raise to a million five. He has Merson covered by about 1.1 million. Boy, it looks like Watson might have gone to college to four bet with the worst hand. <laughs> All, in. All in. All in from All Greg in. Merson. If this were a beard competition, Cy would win. Sadly for him, it is not. <laughs> Watson with ace 10 end of the muck, and Greg Merson had a hand he was willing to run with. Watson did not. Silas chose to overplay, ace-10 off, out of position against Greg Merson. Do not do that. Elementary, my dear Watson. <laughs> well, the field and Cy Watson learning you have to be ready to go to war if you want to get mixed up with Greg Merson. Merson's worn a different jersey every day of the main event. Tonight, it's the Arizona Diamondbacks' turn. Here we are on day seven, a day that very few poker players will ever experience. Whether by fruitful flop or bountiful bluff, 27 players are left, each hoping to run hot and make the final table at the end of October. To this group, Norman, what are your words of wisdom? Well, it is a sad state of affairs when I am asked for wise words, but here goes. Keep doing it. What is it? For Mark andre Lattiser, it means looking good and playing better. For Elizabeth Hill, it means playing any two cards and pushing around the boys. For Greg Merson, it means wearing a different jersey each day. Go with what got you here, even if it means wearing Luis Gonzalez on your back. I never, I never expected you to look the way you look, by the way. You know what I mean? I'm sure you get that a lot. Yeah, yeah. He dug down in that closet. He's like, I got that Armani, Armani Exchange shirt. Like, yeah. Three years back, I got a use for it. He's just like some model. He's looking all boss. Yeah. I can. Uh, some French I couldn't model. bluff. I'm an online player if I needed to. All right, three chips in play, 5, 25, and 100,000. Lots of lavender in your stack is a good thing. Action on Dave Balkan with pocket eights. Balkan born in Canberra, Bryce. Australia. This is first World Series of Poker Cash. A raise to 250. I'm wearing a suit at the final table, man. Rick Mercer. suit at the final table. Looks at a jack eight, and they go into the muck. To the button, Jesse Sylvia. Jesse James Sylvia, queen 10. He needs one more class to graduate, but says he's putting it off because no one is asking to see his diploma. <laughs> the 26-year-old originally from the poker hotbed of Martha's Vineyard now lives in Las Vegas. He calls for 250. Well, on the button, Sylvia is going to try and take Dave Balkan to school. All right, it is heads up, Sylvia and Balkan. The poker pro against the Australian amateur who works for Poker Stars. The flop, 6-7-7. Seven, seven. Pretty good flop for the pocket eights of Balkan, who still leads. Yeah, he should be pretty comfortable with that board. He seems comfortable reaching for chips. That is 325,000. Now Sylvia, who missed? How much do you start with? Six, Troy. Well, Jesse Sylvia will play the role of Jesse James on this hand <laughs> and try to steal it, I believe. It looks like he is reaching for raising chips, Norman. And that's indeed what he does. That's a raise to 785,000. Ah, but Jesse James has to answer to the sheriff in the sheriff's hat. Indeed. Balkan says, oh, no, you don't. 1.7 title. A re-raise to 1.7 and a snap fold from Sylvia. Balkan takes it. Boy, we saw Cy Watson over eager with ace 10. Jesse Sylvia over eager with queen 10. A lot of activity here early on day seven. Jesse Sylvia loses 14% of his stack. To make it this far in the main event, you got to be doing something right. The amateur label doesn't mean you're playing amateurishly. With 27 players remaining, we have two feature tables and one outer table out there. Nico Mog put his last 1.1 million in the pot with Ace Jack, was called by the dominating Ace Queen of Russell Thomas, the Connecticut actuary. The checkered actuary against the indefatigable Nico Mog. <laughs> All right, here is the flop. 9-8-4, no immediate help for Nico Mog. 
See how Nico Mog just stands there and takes it like a man. He stands there and takes it like a man. Tray of clubs. Thomas picks up a flush draw. Uh, that hurt us. We just lost an out. Good luck, Nico. No luck on the river. Nico Mog's era That's is done at the 2012 main event. Russell Thomas sends the amateur to the payout window. Uh, the 27-year-old German made me proud. He just couldn't crack the system here. His exit leaves two Germans still in the main event. About a 15% bump to Thomas's stack, bringing him above the 10 million chip mark as he breaks the seal on day seven. Nico Mog, the first player eliminated in his final stretch on the road to the final table. A look at downtown where the World Series of Poker began. Joe Hashem, the last champ to win it all down there before the series moved full time to the Rio. At the secondary featured table, a look at former chip leader Rob Salaburu. He's holding court down there. Salaburu has the biggest stack at this table, but there are few, if any, weak spots to exploit when the field gets this small. So far, Salaburu's confidence is supported by a big stack. He's got game. Gail Bowman has a below average chip stack, but it's not time to panic yet. She does have a couple of bigger stacks to her left, plus her fallen and muck nemesis, Andras Korknoy. 7.6 million is the average stack. The next eight knockouts worth nearly 295 grand. There is 30-year-old poker pro Paul Volpe, whose poker fancy was tickled while watching Chris Moneymaker win in 03. Ace nine off and a raise to 240,000. Volpe ranked the number one online tournament player in the world just before Black Friday by card player and pocket fives. There is Andras Koroknoy, the Hungarian pro. A seven of diamonds. Excuse me, how much is this? Two six. Two it. six. Volpe with almost 2.7 million. Corknoy folds to the big blind Steve G. Jack nine off, and he calls for 120,000 more. When G had his first uh, stint as a poker pro in the 1970s and 80s, there was no online then, right? That is true. All right, G in the hand, but dominated by Volpe's ace nine, seven, ten, deuce. G with a gut shot. He checks to the razor. Volpe with ace high still, which is good. A 280,000 chip bet now. Yeah, Volpe has the right idea. G with a draw, wondering what Volpe's up to. Looks like G has other ideas. There's a call. Maybe if G misses on the turn, he's looking to steal this thing. All right, so turn card coming with a little more than 1.2 million in the pot. No improvement to G after the six of clubs falls. He checks to Volpe, who picked up a useless gut shot. I'm a little disturbed by the clash of Volpe's shirt and baseball cap. <laughs> An eight would give him a straight, but would give G a higher straight. He checks back. Volpe didn't want to pull the trigger again. River card, another 10. Volpe's ace provides him with that 100% next to his name. G and Greg Merson, the only bracelet winners left in this field. The 56-year-old didn't start playing Hold'em until the late 1990s. Well, G. Putting some chips together, some of those 100,000 lavender chips, and he bets 675. I think G's picked a pretty good spot here for this bluff. Volpe would have to call off almost one third of his remaining short stack here with ace high. And short stack is right, Norman. Volpe with the shortest stack at this table. And Volpe. Not ready to commit right there. That would have been a very difficult call. Indeed. And for Steve G, that was pretty satisfying, taking in those chips with Jack High. You have it? I thought about check raising the flop, but I didn't want to play a big pot in case you had a big pair. G musters up a river bed and takes the pot. An interested observer of that hand, Rob Salaburu, whose upbringing taught him a lot about the game. I've been playing since I was 17. I Went to college, tried that, dropped out, and uh, kind of stuck with it. Glad I did. My mom's an awesome lady. She's taken care of me my whole life and always made me feel like I had everything I needed, even though we didn't grow up with all the funds in the world. It's all right, because there's other things more important. She's really helped me develop who I am today without worrying about money and not thinking about any of that stuff and just really taught me about life in general. My brother flew out too. He's awesome. He's a maniac. He's really a pump for me too. Fist pumping everywhere. My mom's never gambled or ever been to Vegas in her life. She's an artistic lady, so it's kind of a different world for her. So when I saw her show up, I was really excited. Happy for her to be here. I know she's in a different element. 
I'm excited that she's excited, you know, she's more pumped than me. One of the reasons Rob says he loves poker is that he likes to travel and float around. Then when he's at the poker table, he likes to splash around a lot of pots. Rob's mom, Coco, and brother Yule nearby. Under the gun, Paul Volpe with ace-queen. And he folds. He's been to your seminars, Norman. <laughs> Rob Salaburu with ace-king. Good fold from Volpe, huh? And we have learned that Salaburu always bets like he's in a hurry to get someplace else. He raised it hurriedly to 250000 Folded over to Bobby Corsioni. 10-9 of clubs. Corsioni in no hurry with 10 9 suited. Turn him, turn him. Uh, Corknoy oh, yeah, folds out of order. Gonna have, yeah. Something tells me Corknoy yeah, falls out of bed every morning into a yeah. pot of boiling water. <laughs> Always finding trouble, isn't he? Corsioni's cards are hidden from where Andrush is sitting, though. I'll give him that much. There's a call from Corsioni. Steve G folds a small blind. Danny Wong now in the big. We haven't seen much of Wong, but he's a dangerous player. On the Jack Link speed jerky hole cam, King Four throws his blind and cards to the dealer. Good luck, bud. So heads up, Salaburu and Corsioni. And Corsioni gets top pair and the advantage. Rob missed and bets 295000 Salaburu is splashing the pot. That bet was like an impressionist painting. That was wild. <laughs> A thing of beauty and hard to interpret. He really should look into decaffeinated drinks. So now to Corsioni with a pair of nines. Well, I think Corsioni would leave quite an impression on Salaburo here if he raises him with top pair. Yep, just a call. All right, building a pot, 1.4 million. Turn card seven of spades. Rob wants to lead out again. 925. One speed and one speed only in this hand for Salaburo. Remember, he raised pre-flop from early position, so Corsioni might be worried he has an overpair to that board. Corsioni with top pair is best, as we know, and he does make the call. Salaburo's got a problem. River card now. Problem solved. The king, Salaburo, catches top pair. I don't know, Lon. The more and more <laughs> I watch it, poker just seems so unfair to me. And the messiest one and a half million chip bet you'll ever see. Yeah, just the way Salaburo bets could put you on tilt. Corsioni, good until the river. Does he believe Rob Salaburu? Nope. Huevos Rancheros. Huevos oh. Rancheros? I see. Thanks. That's frustrating if you're Corsioni. And on top of that, Huevos Rancheros? Huevos Rancheros. What's that mean? In San Antonio. It means uh, nothing. It means like the nuts. <laughs> right. Of course, Yoni, it meant Icaramba. And he is down to 5.7 million. Well, Rob calls it Huevos Rancheros. We just call it the winning hand. Salaburo moves into second place. The best poker content on the internet. Your super high roller bowl seven champion. Oh, yeah. Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that fight? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. Welcome back to day seven of the World Series of Poker main event presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. This poker tournament often compared to a marathon with good reason. Seven days just to make the final table, then a two-day final table. Each player now guaranteed almost 300 grand, and the race for last woman standing still very much up for grabs. 14 of the 26 players left are 20-somethings, including the two women causing quite a stir, Elizabeth Hill and Gail Bowman. Hill folds. Percy Manhattan woke up with Kings and opened the action to 260,000. Over to the big blind, Mark andre Ladasur. He graduated from the University of North Carolina at Greensboro, where he had a tennis scholarship. Majored in finance and business with Jack Nine. He makes the call for 140,000 more. And he will dance blindly into the lair of pocket kings. <laughs> All right, here's the flop. Ace, 10, 4. The Kings are still good for Manhattan. Ladasur's singles match record in college was 2 and 20, Lon. Uh, maybe he played a lot of 6% backhands. <laughs> Glad he got his degrees in finance and business. He owns a nightclub down there and bluffs at it here for 290000 The Canadian with an aggressive serve and volley game representing an ace. Leading into the pre-flop razor, Manhattan now with the Kings. Manhattan is going to turn Kings into a bluff. 
A re-raise to 625. Nice read. A lot of sort came to the net, and I'm not sure he can handle Mahatton's passing shot. And I'm done with tennis metaphors for the rest <laughs> of the main event line. Thank you for that. Lot of sir folds. Percy wins the pot. He's in 13th now. Go, Maryland, go. These Maryland guys are rolling. <laughs> and who knows how far I would have gone if I played in the main event. Level three, day one. Fair enough. <laughs> Mark, you're from Montreal? Yeah. Yeah? No, I've been, I stayed there for a little while. I did some work up there a long time ago. Oh, yeah. Mark Andre still the chip leader. On the outer table, former chip leader Daniel Strelitz got involved with 9-7 and turned a gut shot against the pocket kings of Russell Thomas. Basically, Strelitz kept bleeding out, and Thomas kept slow playing. Yeah, Strelitz raised pre-flop, let out again on the flop with nothing. Now Strelitz putting more chips together after the 10 of clubs fell. 615,000. One continuation bet leads to another. Russell Thomas part of a select group of lucky human beings Two first names. <laughs> Thank you, Norman Chad. Thomas called pre and post flop. And calls again here. Strelitz wondering, what hath I wrought? All right, river card tray of hearts. The pocket kings of Thomas hold up. Check. Well, Strelitz checks this time. Strelitz finally puts up the stop sign. And that means it's finally a green light for Thomas. It is go time with those kings. 925,000. See you, Daniel. This would be the time to fold. See you, Daniel. Strouts has nine high and he's reaching for chips. River check raise bluffs are like traffic free Fridays on the 405. They are rare. <laughs> but there it is. He makes it over 2.2 million. An unexpected turn of events for Russell Thomas. I call. But there oh. is the call. Thomas's Kings will take the pot. Strelitz gifts three and a half million chips to Russell Thomas. Well, Strelitz turned it over like he had the nuts. And Russell Thomas has two smarter first names than I do. Who didn't know that line? Thomas moves into third as he stacks over 3.8 million new chips. Daniel Strelitz with the bluff drops to seventh, losing over a quarter of his stack. So Strelitz gives up some of his hard-earned chips to Mr. Plaid 2012. Russell Thomas checking into third place overall. Back inside the Amazon room at the Rio on McCarran with Norman Chad and Kara Scott on this day seven of the 2012 main event. This year's leaderboard filled with extremely tough players showing you just the top nine. Now the virtual final table as it stands. Lottasur on top, Abrams ninth, Merson in sixth. Merson was on the cusp of a tournament breakthrough time and again, getting down to the final three tables and bubbling some big buy-in events before winning the 10K six-handed bracelet this year. The sixth max, he says, is his main event. He loves playing shorthanded. Merson's main event story, a remarkable one so far, down to under three big blinds on day five. Climb back to the top ten. He hasn't done it by running well, he's done it by playing well. He says he ran three big bluffs on day six, and he was three for three, so he's in a zone. Action on Merson now Sorry. on the Jack Link Speed Jerky Hole Cam. Seven to six off suit. He was at the University of Maryland for only three semesters. He says he knew after just one Wait, semester it wasn't for him. A raise to 250,000 on the button, Jesse Sylvia with Queen Jack of Diamonds. Merson and Sylvia, two young cash game guys who like to play pots, like to see a lot of flops. Call. Sylvia loves to be on the go, traveling light, owning a few things. He makes the call. In the big blind, Jamie Robbins looks down at King 10 offsuit. Robbins attended Stanford for one year and says he left to pursue life. He makes the call. When you're pursuing life, I don't know if you should pursue King 10 off. <laughs> Three players will see this flop. Nine, Trey, seven. Robbins left with two overs to the board. He checks. Now Merson with middle pair checks about as lazily as one can. And now Sylvia missed, but not out of it, with two overs himself. Sylvia does not let go of his shoulder. I wonder if Dr. James Andrews has any poker clients. <laughs> he also won't let go of his chips. That's the bigger problem. And there's a bet of 340,000. Will that make the others let go of their hand? Robbins folds. Now to Merson. Merson with middle pair. He loves to see a lot of flops. And he's like a bulldog when he gets a piece of it. That is a call. So Merson and Jesse James Sylvia. Turn card. 
Six of hearts. Merson turns two pair. Has Sylvia drawing dead to a foul deck. Merson checks again. Well, Jesse's drawn dead to a foul deck, but he's riffling the chips with his left hand. And if you're touching the chips line, it's always more likely you're going to bet the chips. Yeah. No, but he does check. Wow, that's discipline. River card now. The five of diamonds, and that puts four to a straight on the board. Greg Merson will have to move his arms if he wants to bet this. <laughs> That's 525,000. A four or an eight makes a straight, but Merson not worried about that. That bet less than a third of the pot. Right hand on shoulder, left hand on chips. Jesse Sylvia has no give up in him on this one. Wow. Lots of those lavender chips worth 100 grand. And he will posture with a raise to over 1.1 million. Well, Merson in a similar spot now. We just saw Russell Thomason making a value bet on the river, and then you get raised. Merson wondering, does Jesse have it or not? A call. call. And that call will be worth 3.9 million. Sylvia knows he's toast. He has to show. Merson again showing his chops there as Jesse Sylvia bluffs off almost one-third of his stack. And gives Merson enough chips to move into fourth place overall. Slightly bigger of work or what? Sylvia drops to near the bottom of the pack. It's pretty sick. You've been playing too much PLO. <laughs> but that hand didn't even involve blockers. Merson figured it out. Here are Phil Locke and Antonio S. Fandiari with their thoughts on that last hand. No Limit Texas Hold'em. It's an insane game and you can't always make the right decision. And sometimes, you just get caught with your hand in the cookie jar. Jesse, I love the way you play, but in this particular spot, I think it's okay to just give up, especially against a player like Greg, who loves to hold on, who loves making good reads, and who doesn't mind playing big pots. Right, these young wizards don't realize that sometimes you can just throw your hand away. On the river, it's okay to throw it away. And you know what, if you're not gonna throw it away, you gotta put a little bit more pressure on, especially against a player like Greg. He's very likely to call. It is hard to criticize you guys. You're on day seven, and I didn't make it to day seven, but still, I think this is a spot to just give up. I love hearing the magician talk about these young wizards. Antonio now over the hill at 33. <laughs> 26 players still alive. Let's travel to the outer table and see Daniel Strelitz. We just saw him lose a 7 million chip pot to Russell Thomas. He just three bet pre flop with Ace King against the pocket tens of Michael Esposito. Esposito, 43 year old commodities broker slash burgeoning triathlete. Michael now makes it a million eight seventy five. An interesting note: the dealer did accidentally expose the king of spades. Now he's asking for a count on Esposito's raise. Strelitz with a bigger of the two stacks. All in, all in, all in and a call. Ace king against Esposito's pocket tens. Esposito at risk. 12 million chips in the middle. My goodness. And one of Strelitz's outs is gone. But that did not appear to slow Daniel down one bit. Here's the flop. Jack 7-4 Rainbow couldn't ask for much more if you're Esposito. Turn card nine. No help to Strelitz. Status quo. Strelitz is going to need an ace or a king to knock out Mike Esposito. The river card is a five, and the pocket tens come through all streets unscathed. Esposito with a big double up. Strelitz had a great day six. So far, day seven, not so great. Esposito quietly now has a top five stack. Strelitz still has a workable stack, but it was a lot more workable before that hand. The triathlete Esposito racing towards the final table. This is the World Series of Poker main event presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Inside the Rio, the Amazon room starting to look like a ghost town. Mark andre Latasur, the chip leader. Let's go down to Kara Scott by the feature table. In the 43 years of the World Series of Poker main event, a woman has only made the final table once, and that was Barbara Enright, who finished fifth in 1995. But two women in the top 27 isn't unprecedented. For example, in the year 2000, when there were only 512 runners, that's compared to 6,598 this year. Annie Duke finished in 10th, and Kathy Liebert finished in 17th. 
17th. Generally, women only make up about 3 to 5 percent of the World Series field, so it's a big news story when we have two women going this deep in the main event. Gail and Elizabeth are both there, and the press has been watching them closely. We'd like to see women taking a more active role in the game, and having a female, maybe two, at the most prestigious final table would be a good start. Bowman currently 15th on the leaderboard. She's already made a little history as the first female chip leader at the end of any one day of action of the main event. Under the gun, Rob Salabuer with Ace King. I gotta hurry. Have that back. <laughs> I know he's gonna raise it up. Speed <laughs> poker in progress. <laughs> a quarter million. <laughs> All right, over to Gail Bowman. Pocket tens. She's been a poker pro a couple of years now. This main event a far cry from her previous big cash of 19,000 at this year's EPT grand finale. She originally wanted to be a university professor, but says she was too lazy to complete another three years for her PhD. I can sympathize. Heck, if they hadn't invented the remote line, I'd be too lazy to get up and turn off the TV. <laughs> well, the button and the small blind falls over to the big blind, Paul Volpe, and he will relinquish his blind. Heads up, it'll be Salaburu and Gail Bowman. Beauty and the Beast. Pocket tens against the ace king. A flop, nine six king. Salaburu finds top pair and checks. They both check. All right, turn card, seven of hearts. <laughs> Was that 300,000? Well, I believe he bet before the turn card hit the felt. <laughs> Just the way he bets, it does not seem like he's sincere to me. There's a call from Gail Bowman who added a gut shot there. Well, the way he bets, Lon, the way he acts, I just think it throws off opponents. Rob with aces up. That's a million. Boy, he actually waited a beat and a half before betting that time. I wonder if that's a tell. I'm not sure if Gail believes him or says to herself he hit that. No, Gail right now in that doesn't want to call, doesn't want to fold conundrum. Pocket tens, top two. makes the call. Yep, yeah, top two. Yeah, from no pair to top pair to top two. Uh, Gail Bowman kicking herself for giving away those chips to Rob Salaburu. And this Texan now finds himself the chip leader once again. Gail Bowman loses a quarter of her stack, down to 22nd place. Rob up to 17.2 million. What is it you say again? Huevos Rancheros. Huevos <laughs> Rancheros. I don't say it all the time. Well, it seems like you always have the nuts. So. Wavos Ren Charles, just one of the many oddities we've seen from Rob Salaburu at this year's main event. One time. Woo. 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 I'm gonna have to bust the knit. I call. Good hand, knit. Here's a knit. I'm paying you off in yellows. Six balls. Mark of the beast. Good for TV. One in the tank mode. Real serious right now. Oh. Add that back, please. Thank you. Bubbles, rent shut off. Oh. His favorite game is PLO, and he says he now finds no limit. Hold him boring. Maybe that's why he plays so fast. He's trying to get back to a PLO game. <laughs> he is the chip leader. Fold it to Yuval Bronstein with the Jack Link Speed Jerky wild card hand. And he's going to raise it up to 265. Bronstein in early position, and he's not fooling around. He's got B or C, pocket nines, or ace jack suited. You were perfect on day six. I wish you good luck here on day seven. Bronstein, a, a solid mixed game player, born in Tel Aviv, Israel, has moved back to Tel Aviv after Black Friday. He attended the University of Maryland for three years. Volpe, 10-9 of spades in the small blind with the short stack. He folds. Salaburu makes the call from the big blind with King Jack offsuit. Two guys who seem a lot more likable with the shades off. All right, here we go. Trey, Jack, eight. Salaburu with a pair of jacks. He checked. If UV's betting, it's still B or C. And don't pressure me to make a choice. <laughs> Bronstein with a bet of 275. You good? Salaburu yeah. calls. You check the turn? I check. Salaburu turns up the turbo, checking before the turn. <laughs> <laughs> That'll save him time here. Five of spades, a dark check already from Rob. Okay, if Bronstein bets here again, I'll reluctantly commit to C. Top pair, top kicker with the nut flush draw. Okay. <laughs> 385. He bets 385. 385. 385. And Rob literally beat him into the pot. That's amazing. Salaburo plays like he's double parked. I love it. <laughs> All right. River card now. 
Check. That pairs the board. A check from Rob. I break that like 2,000 FO. I had check. I got the net. Bronstein had pocket nines. You were close, Norman, but you lose it. Bronstein also loses the Jack Link's Beef Jerky wild card hand. Why did you make me commit to Ace Jack? <laughs> I thought it might be pocket nines. Why did you bully me into Ace Jack? Jeez. Bronstein still on the virtual final table in ninth place. And this guy's got chips over here. Everyone go home and lock your doors. Get in? Ooh, good game, sir. Salaburu sits atop the pack, but a lot of poker yet to be played. Some of it you might call ABC poker. Then there's Salaburu poker. Hey, whatever works. Tonight's bracelet moments are brought to you by PokerNews.com. Seven different No Limit Hold'em events had buy-ins of $1,500 at the 2012 World Series, and those seven bracelets went to these proud winners. Local pro Brent Hanks, Israeli Army vet Cliff Goldkind. It feels good. It feels really good. North Carolina's Carter Phillips, Kansas amateur Dung Nguyen, Brooklyn pro Henry Liu, Texas lawyer Neil Willerson, and check Tomas Unik, whose victory, like Goldkind's, was also his first ever World Series cash. The $1,500 events are a great way for new or inexperienced players to get a taste of the World Series of Poker. Many of these events held on weekends, and this year, over the seven events combined, there were 21,886 entries, an average of more than 3,000 per tournament. I shy away from the $1,500 events, Lon. I believe event 42, which I final tabled, was $2,500. Uh, when will it end? Osmus folds over to Gail Bowman with pocket eights. A raise to 250,000. Uh, by the way, at the moment, this is the first year since 2001 in which the World Series has not had a double bracelet winner. Brian Rast won two in 2011 to keep the streak alive. Folded to the button, Steve G on the Jack Link Speed Jerky hole cam. Ace six off suit, he throws that away. In the small blind, Danny Wong. Wong's got a lot of talent, doesn't play a lot of tournaments anymore. UC Riverside graduate with pocket fives. How much are you playing? Four. Wong with almost eight million in his stack. And there's a call for 190 more from the small blind. In the big blind, Paul Volpe with two jacks. If Volpe doesn't go all in here, I will go take the stripes off his shirt. <laughs> Uh -oh. Yep, he is the short stack and does move in for almost a million and a half. Twelve big blinds left for Paul Volpe. Now pocket eights and Gail Bowman. She's rather short stacked herself. And she mucks the eights. Oh, Volpe's been pretty snug lately. Bowman with the good fold. If she had called, Wong almost certainly folds. Now he's thinking about playing. Now Wong with the fives and a much bigger stack. A million something, right? Does make the call to put Volpe at risk. Wong got three to two on a call and hoped he was up against over cards. Gale likes her fold. Now Volpe will try to hang on with the jacks against Wong's fives. Here's the flop. Four king ace. No immediate help for Wong. Ten Volpe still in good shape for the double up. As small as it would be, though. Turn card, deuce of clubs. Wong picks up a wheel draw. Wong triples his outs. A three or a five now busts Paul Volpe. The river's an eight. Volpe and his jacks survive only because Bowman dumped her eights pre-flop. The double up worth over 3.2 million to Volpe and takes a bite out of Wong's stack, almost 20% worth. Danny sits with about six and a half million now. Gail bemoaning the fold in hindsight, having missed hitting her set on the river. Volpe still short stacked, but still in the game. Fate is fickled. Volpe now may go all the way because Gail Bowman didn't make a bad call. Danny Wong's career path, not like most of today's 27-year-olds, a college grad who turned down banking to become a poker pro. He's won over $2 million in tournaments, but his best game might be Chinese poker, a game he learned at the ripe age of five. He says his dream job would be an ESPN Sports Center anchor. I've got no pull over there, Danny. You're on your own. <laughs> Wong with King, nine of hearts. It's been folded to him. He's made three World Series of Poker final tables. A raise to 245,000. 
Volpe off his recent double up with Jacks. Just sees one Jack with a tray, and they go into the muck. On the button, Salaburu. If Salaburu were a Sports Center anchor, I guarantee you the highlights would be done in like five minutes. <laughs> the big stack with Ace King of Clubs and a re raise to 725. Folded back to Danny Wong now. Wong out of position here with King 9 against the chip leader. Danny, your move. This is driving Salaburu nuts. <laughs> well, Danny Wong is not done. Hey, he's suited. Five million raises. Five million. Danny four bet and then robbed five bet to a cool five million. And Wong wasn't even done moving his chips in on his raise when Salaburu repopped him. I, I tell you, it's just off putting. It can mess with your mind. It's exactly what he's hoping. Danny Wong gets rid of his inferior cards. Boy, give this guy 18 million chips with Ace King. He's unstoppable. Well, Wong did the right thing there, but he lost a quarter of his stack without even seeing a flop. Wong now down to 21st with under 4.8 million. He holds his head in distress. He's the latest to get Salaburud in the 2012 main event. Rob accumulating quite a mountain of chips. The first player to 20 million. How far will this run take him? Rob Salaburu threatening to run away with a main event. More than a five million chip lead and no sign of let up to Rob's left. Gail Bowman's day seven has not gone quite as she had planned. She currently sits in 22nd place having lost nearly half her stack. Right now we head back to the feature table to check in on the other woman remaining in the field, Elizabeth Hill. It's been folded to Hill on the button with pocket sixes. Hill lives in Bergen, Norway, home of the second largest Bergen Mall in the world. She's down a couple of million tonight, a raise to 250 in the small blind, David Balkan. When I was a Maryland Boy Scout troop leader in the late 1980s, that is the exact outfit I would wear to dinner every night. <laughs> With ace eight. A raise, 625 total. Balkan re-raises to 625,000. Now to the Canadian and the big blind, Marc-Andre Lottesur. He is friends with Jonathan Duhamel, and his roommate is bracelet winner Pasquale LaFrancois, who finished 11th in the 2010 main event. Ace deuce for Marc Andre in the big blind. And he puts out a re raise of his own to a million 345. Wow, the, the best hand raised, the second best hand re raised, and now the worst hand four bets. I don't think the best hand is long for this hand. <laughs> it does go into the muck. Balkan with ace eight. I hope your race is better than mine. Well, it's not better, but it's prettier. Now it's better now because Balkans is in the muck. Mark Andre will stack the chips and show the ace of spades. Ace of spades. By the way, Lana, I called Patrick Antonius this morning to let him know it's over. <laughs> Here's my man. Mark Andre Latasur in second place late on day seven of the main event. Over to the lone outer table. The story of former chip leader Danny Strelitz continues to evolve. With pocket eights, he just three bet. German pro Jan Heitman who holds pocket six is very even stacks of three million plus. Heitman all in. And a quick call from Strelitz. And the 35 year old German pro and poker commentator in a world of hurt here. Heitman all in and Strelitz in for almost all his chips. Strelitz letting his rail know he is ahead right now. And Heitman all in. There's the flop now. 5-7 King. Heitman still hoping. Strelitz still good. Another King does Heitman no good. Strelitz looking for the knockout. Heitman's got to have a six. The river card's a queen. Strelitz takes it and ends Jan Heitman's main event. Gentlemen, it has been a pleasure playing with and against you. A gentlemanly exit for Heitman, but his small pocket pair gets clipped by the eights of Daniel Strelitz. In 26th place, Jan Heitman takes his bows. The best poker content on the internet. Your super high rollerball seven champion. Oh yeah! Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that fight? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. On the final day before the World Series of Poker main event final table, who has the advantage? The known pro? 
I'm going to play every hand the way I think it's supposed to be played. If I think I have the best hand, I'm going to play it out. The once anonymous pro. So I've been up top for the last couple of days and just trying to carry it all the way through, ride it all the way out. I go for the win. I don't really go for anything else. Or the tough amateur. Poker is a constant learning process. You always have something new to learn. I've been practicing now for four years, and this has just been an amazing outcome. Bronstein, Salaburu, and Hill, key figures in a talented main event field. Different backgrounds, same goal. One bracelet, eight and a half million dollars, and the title of world champion. Day seven continues now. Welcome back for our continuing coverage of the most prestigious tournament on the planet, the World Series of Poker main event, presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Here at the Rio, crowds starting to form. Who will make the final table? I'm Lon McCarran with Norman Chad and Kara Scott. Certainly one player the crowd is rooting for is Elizabeth Hill. I'm not rooting for her. If she wins the main event, the world's going to lose a really good waitress. Gail Bowman has been Hill's partner in crime. Is it a crime for women to outplay men at a poker table? Hmm, maybe it should be. Greg Merson's rocky day six has turned into a serene day seven. The 24-year-old can't relax yet, but he looks very comfortable at the plate. Merson currently in fourth place while everyone is chasing Rob Salaburu, who sits with more than 21 million chips. Mark andre Lottasur in second, just 25 players remain. Everyone on page two with a below average stack, but no reason to panic yet, an average stack holds 66 big blinds. Gail Bowman has one of the shortest stacks, but the shortest of them all belongs to Wilfried Hering. I wonder if Andras Cork nor can see Gail Bowman on this leaderboard. After all, she's only a couple of spots ahead of him. <laughs> we start the action over at the secondary feature table, where the chip leader, San Antonio's Rob Salaburu, sits. His late decision to play in this main event is paying off. Salaburu with more than double the stack of anyone else at this table. Gail Bowman has certainly proved herself worthy. From the way she acts and bets, Gale can appear tentative at times. Tentative won't work now. Time to step it up. Love him or hate him, Salaburu knows how to pick up chips. Rob loves to play the big stack, but he has to be careful. If he speculates too much, I speculate that he might regret it. Why do you have all the orange chips? Because I win all the pots. <laughs> <laughs> Very simple. Is this what you've done every day? Just wreck the table every single day? No, she saw me. I had to play tight yesterday, right? I folded for an hour. Yeah. I did. Until you had kings. Until I had kings and I had doubles. And I went straight to the top. Rob opened the pot for a quarter million with a six off. Pocket kings for Korknoy. Oh no, Hungary. Oh no. It was Gail Bowman who had kings when Korknoy infamously raised all in and mucked his hand. Korknoy disguising the strength of his hand. Just a call. The Hungarian sensation. And a blindfold. He's my boy. This guy's so badass. He gets it in ace king to ace king, flushes out on the guy. And then offers the guy one free one free percent free roll. That's nice. It's awesome, right? Okay. Good people. Heads up, big stack against small stack, and there's an ace in the window. Bad luck for Korknoy. Salaburu checked. Hungary, huh? Korknoy checks. Doesn't like that ace. Turn card, five of check. hearts. Another check from Rob. He turbo bets and he turbo checks. And with the pocket kings and no action on that flop, Korknoy puts in a quarter million. And he turbo calls Rob already in the pot. <laughs> Fastest draw in the West. Get you paid. Rob ahead with a pair of aces. Queen of diamonds on the river. Another turbo check. Nuts. And a check from Korknoy. Aces yep, are good right. for Salaburu. Whether he says huevos rancheros or nuts at the end of a hand, Salaburu wins these pots with a swagger. Two kings. Korknoy yeah. got bit with the Kings. It could have been a bigger hit, but it still drops him into last place with 25 players left. Salaburu's speculation paid off. He inflates his holdings to more than 22 million. He even stacks his chips unlike any other human. As day seven continues and each elimination is magnified, one player who appears to be larger than life is Rob Salaburu. He's young. He's brash, and with over 22 million chips stacked. It seems that no matter who you are, you have an opinion on Salaburu. There just is no middle ground. Rob Salaburu perplexes me. One minute, I think he's just a fun-loving guy on the rush of a lifetime. The next minute, it seems like he's rooming with Attila the Hun. 
He's got a little Phil Hellmuth in him. He's got a little Scotty Wynn in him. Even a little Puggy Pearson in him. I guess if he wins the main event, he'll belong in that company. At the one and only outer table sits Stanford grad Scott Abrams with an 11.3 million chip stack and a set of sevens up against the former chip leader Daniel Strelitz who caught middle pair in a gut shot. Abrams, the pre-flop raiser, decides to bet 305,000 in this blind versus blind battle. Strelitz comes along. Abrams with a master's degree, the rare young gun who's always played mostly live. Strelitz sees a thing of beauty, completing his seven high straight. And Abrams said appears to have gone down in flames. He checks. Strelitz, 22-year-old who has ruined the last two summers in Las Vegas with P.S. Hines. Daniel trying to right his ship. He's given up almost half his chips already here on day seven. He bets 560,000. Sometimes when two young kids are at the table, it's as though they're playing online. They don't talk at all. They don't make eye contact. And they may or may not be wearing any pants. And there's a call from Abrams as a master's in management sciences and engineering. I think he has the math down pretty good in this game. <laughs> the river card now, king of clubs. Abrams comes up empty. And he checks again. You know, if an online bill ever gets through Congress, Lon, I hope it includes a top set exemption. If you flop top set, you shouldn't have to lose a big pot. It just doesn't seem right. <laughs> That's a great point. Strelitz with over 1.4 million now. He announced 1.425. Yes, Scott, he talked. That's what people do. <laughs> I call. There's a call, and Abrams will hand over the chips. See, with the top set exemption, these atrocities would not happen. But Abrams will send chips across the table. A great turn card for Strelitz, turning his day around. He's once again knocking on the door of 10 million. And Scott Abrams gets a little weaker now here on day seven. And Daniel Strelitz moves into the top nine. Strelitz quietly stacking his chips. And Abrams handles a setback, as I would expect him to, silently. So Scott loses almost a quarter of his stack, but he remains in the top nine here on day seven. One player who has already rebounded on the felt is Greg Merson. Well before his poker success this year though, Greg made a comeback off the felt. I've been through a lot in the last few years. Uh, I've battled a drug addiction since I was 18. I went to rehab when I was 18. I was clean for three and a half years. I had a relapse last year that cost me over half my net worth. Got clean again in December. That's like the most important thing to me. More than any amount of money is just having my life back in control and just like having another opportunity at life, you know. I'm really grateful to just to be alive and not have overdose. It's tough, you know, you gamble for a living, you're on like the fast life and I just enjoy like Sitting at home, playing online, working out, doing yoga, staying sober. I don't do it. Unfortunately, I still smoke cigarettes, but I don't drink. I don't do anything. I don't plan on ever doing that ever again. I constantly go to meetings and stuff. This is the most important thing to me, and it has to stay number one for me to have my life in order. Greg had been clean for three years before his relapse, so he knows staying clean is an ongoing battle. The top stack at this table, second overall, Canadian Mark andre Ladisur. Looking good. <laughs> Jamie Robbins in 11th place, finished 11th in the 09 main event. The blinds are up right now to 80 and 160,000 with a 20,000 chip ante. Wilfred Heyrick, the short stack here with sixes, shoves. The 25-year-old pushes with 18 big blinds left. Over to Elizabeth Hill on the Jack Link Speed Jerky Hole Cam. She folds 7-5. On the button, Dave Balkin folds. Lattisor. Looking good. He folds to Merson with Queens. Good call. Yeah, yeah, that's an easy call. So Herig at risk. His six is in severe trouble. Yeah, a grimace from Wilfried Herig. Herig trying to take Martin Stashko Plaid to the final table. His dream of the final table fading. Merson with just under a quarter of his stack at risk. All right, here's the flop. 10-7, king all hearts. Neither player has a heart. Not much there to Heerig's liking. The pocket six is trying to improve and stay in the main event. 
Nine of clubs is a little help as he picks up a gut shot. Here it triples his outs. Now a six or an eight would keep him around. And the river card is a six. The long shot comes home. He rig rivers a set to save his main event. And as we've seen before, Merson takes the hit matter of factly. He doesn't get too high or too low at the table. Many players are devastated by bad beats. Not Greg Merson, who's been through so much worse away from the table. Here with over six million to play with. Merson cut down to around nine million and another chance to battle back. The best poker content on the internet. Your super high roller bowl seven champion. Oh yeah. Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that fight? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. Welcome back to the Rio in the 2012 World Series of Poker. 25 players left in this year's main event. Among them, 27-year-old poker pro Danny Wong. You can't ever really ever get worse at poker. You can only get better to stay the same, you know? And those factors alone, you know, make things tougher. It's tougher and tougher nowadays. You always have to strive to get better, improve your game. You can't ever think that you're the best or above anyone else. You know, you have to have respect for every opponent, no matter what. I have to disagree with Danny on one thing. Even though I was never that good, you can get worse. I have. <laughs> Wong with pocket eights. Born in Hong Kong, came to the U.S. with his family when he was three years old. Lives here in Vegas as a poker pro now. And a raise to 325. But Danny's point about respecting opponents is advice everyone should take. Respect their game, respect them as people. Folks often forget the second part. Folded to the button, Yuval Bronstein with pocket sixes. Born in Israel, moved to the U.S. when he was five. Even with that mohawk, UV always gets my respect. He makes the call for 325. To the small blind, Andras Korknoy on the Jack Link Speed Jerky Hole. Cam 8-5 of clubs. He folds. Steve G in the big blind with Queen Trey of Hearts. And he lays it down. So heads up, Bronstein with his sixes against the pocket eights of Danny Wong. Trey seven, five, rainbow, good flop for the eights and the sixes. Wong appears to have a good head on his shoulders, though with that hoodie, at times it can be hard to see. Wong with the best of it. Bets 450,000 into the bigger stack of Bronstein, who added a gut shot. Come on. UV moves all in for over $5 million. And Danny Wong suddenly not as comfortable with the overpair with all his chips on the line. Yep, UV's got him out chipped. Wong. Wondering, can he trust Bronstein? <laughs> he does decide to fold the better hand. Well, in this hand, Wong gives a little too much respect to Bronstein, but I don't blame him. Bronstein moves on to the virtual final table, sitting in ninth right now with nearly 9 million chips after that bold move. UV bluffed me a lot in World Series Event 42 this summer. It worked. I finished sixth. He finished fifth. <laughs> UV is a pro's pro, well-liked within the community and very talented. Born in Tel Aviv, Israel, he says he uses cash games to fund his tournament buy-ins. He's managed his poker success in spite of the fact that he did attend the University of Maryland. Hey, this is the thing about Maryland. The football team's lousy. The basketball team is so-so. Poker, if USA Today had rankings, I'm sure we'd be number one. <laughs> Three chips in play right now, 5, 25, and 100,000. A total of almost 198 million chips in play. Action on Rob Salaburu under the gun. Ace, eight of spades. He has more chips than anyone. A raise to 320,000. Salaburu speculating again. He's turning the weak ace into a premium hand. A bigger ace for Jeremy Osmus, local pro ace queen of clubs. He plays closer to the vest than Salaburu. He's not crazy about ace-queen suited. Jeremy was bit by the poker bug after many viewings of the movie Rounders. He makes the call. Gail Bowman folds to Bronstein with pocket nines this time. 320 is the call. So Andros Koroknoy, the short stack at the table, playing it safe. The button Steve G folds to the small blind. Danny Wong, who looks down at two black tens. The guy who opened has the worst of these four hands, and no one has re-raised him yet. Yeah, Osmus with the ace-queen called. Bronstein with the nines also called. So now to the 27-year-old pro. Come all in. 
And he shoves for over 4.2 million. That gets rid of the big blind. Back to Salaburu now. Wong with 26 big blinds. And you got like nine. Salaburu getting a count before he folds. Rob does fold. Osmus now with ace queen of clubs. And again, I believe he's still not that crazy about ace queen suited. What does he think Wong's up to? Osmus gets out of the way. Bronstein now with the nines. And a tough, legitimate decision here for Yuvi. This would be for almost half of his stack. If I'm Yuvi, I might think I'm in a coin flip situation, but I know I could be buried here by a bigger pocket pair. Bronstein not happy about this moment. Wong has put him in a difficult spot. I call. Bronstein makes the call to put Wong at risk, and UV sees he's in bad shape. And credit Danny Wong. Earlier he folded the best hand against UV, but as Phil Helmuth would tell you, that's okay sometimes, because you might find a better spot later. You saw the fist pump from Wong, looking good for the double up through Yuval Bronstein. Now here's the flop, and it's all jacks. <laughs> yeah, I'm marking it as a Danny Wong double up in my scorebook already, Lon. <laughs> you see the less than mark next to Bronstein's percentage. Turn card ace of diamonds, over card gives Bronstein a way to chop. Well, Wong no longer at risk. We would have a chopped pot if a river ace or jack comes. The river card. Can UV pull out some chips from this pot? Is the tray of hearts, and that makes the double up official. Danny Wong now has about nine and a half million chips nines. to work with. I wanted to call so bad there when he was tanking because he would call me with jacks faster. I thought he had nines or tens. Danny sure. Wong happy with his double up. UV Bronstein not happy with his call on that one. He was ninth a moment ago. Now UV Bronstein sits in 18th place. Your dream boat. That was a dream. Danny Wong jumps into eighth place after the timely double up. UV Bronstein, an eyewitness to how quickly things can turn around around late in the main event. Up and down the tourists go, up and down the chip stacks go. This is the World Series of Poker main event presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. One player whose chip count seems to keep rising is Elizabeth Hill, and she can thank her boyfriend for jump-starting that success. I'm Elizabeth Hill, and this is my second main event. Me and my boyfriend Harold, we came last year and we played the main event. I had so much fun, I knew I wanted to do everything I could to come back and play again this year. Saved up some money, came down here, we played some events, it didn't go very well for me. But my boyfriend cashed and I decided to spend my 50% on playing the main event again this year. He's the one who taught me a couple of years ago. He started teaching me all the basics. We talk a lot about my hands, he's definitely my mentor, <laughs> I guess you can say. One of the most valuable things that he's taught me is you're always learning. It's always a learning process. If I would actually win, I would definitely split my money with my boyfriend, Harold. We are kind of 50-50 and everything. I've gotten very far, but it's still so far away that I don't really want to think about it too much. I just want to do one level at a time and, and try to play my best. No live poker in Norway, making Hill's success here even more impressive. Hill's boyfriend, Harold Olsen, always nearby, watching her progress towards the final table. One of the last two women left. Looks down at ace, king of diamonds. I don't want to horn in on Harold, but I do have a lot in common with Elizabeth. She's from Norway. I am Norman. <laughs> she can be aggressive, but she's got a real hand here. Ace, king of diamonds, and a raise to 325,000. Over to Greg Merson in the cutoff. He looks down at 10-7 of spades. You know, if Greg Merson had not played a single hand of this main event against Elizabeth Hill, I believe he would be the runaway chip leader right now. <laughs> you might be right about that. He is not comfortable sitting in neutral. He loves to be involved in hands, and he does make the call here. She remains his fatal attraction. Jesse Sylvia on the button. Suited 6-4 into the muck. Folded to the big blind, Jamie Robbins. He reminds me of a tow truck driver I once got into an argument with. The guy was trying to tow my car while I was in it. <laughs> you didn't win that argument, did you? <laughs> I enjoyed the ride. <laughs> All right, ace king of diamonds against the 10-7 of spades, <laughs> Greg Mercer. Good luck, Greg. <laughs> All right, here's the flop. Queen do six, one spade, one diamond. Ace king still best for Hill. And she's not slowing down. Four lavender and a green. That makes 425. 
and Greg makes the call. I understand Hill's continuation bet. I don't understand Merson's continuation call. Turn card Jack of clubs brings no relief to Merson. Hill with a Broadway draw. And this is where she's learned well from the boys. When in doubt, bet. She does keep the pressure on. This is 650,000. Now, if Merson's got some great read on her and raises in this spot, he'll blow her sky high back to Scandinavia. But as you said, his track record against her, not that great. And he does bow out. Hill doing all the right things. Well, it's not that Elizabeth necessarily has been out playing Greg. She simply has had better hands every time. And Hill's cheering section gets active as she moves her chip count to almost 8.6 million. Well, Greg seems to be taking that loss in stride, but his losing streak against Hill continues to grow. Norway's Elizabeth Hill is all in with Queen. She's ahead after the flop. American Greg Merson trying to score the knockout. The river card, the five of diamonds, and Elizabeth Hill will double up. Elizabeth raises Merson all in. I think Greg Merson's body just went limp. Oh, my. Three aces into the muck. I'm spitting. This could be the start of a beautiful relationship. Sort of a defensive bet by Merson, hoping to see the river for cheap. Merson gets out of the hand. Stay away from Elizabeth Hill. <laughs> the guy trying to outplay the gal again. It doesn't work. I keep telling him to stay away from her. 850. Now look out for Hill. It's as if Merson has shown up at the rodeo, but he forgot to bring his bull. <sighs> Actually, I've lost, like, every single hand turn. I've warned him, stay away from the dame. <laughs> I don't think we've seen him beat her in a pot. It's been like watching when Tom Arnold was trying to outmaneuver Roseanne. Ain't gonna happen. <laughs> First day Hill began with over a million chips was day five. Merson did not begin any day of the main event with over a million until this day seven. All right, let's get over to the secondary feature table. Jeremy Osmus under the gun with pocket nines. He's the family man, wife, baby, another on the way. 32-year-old grad of Colorado State University and a raise to 325,000. Gail Bowman, the other woman still alive in this main event with pocket tens. She's the femme fatale. As a rule, family men should stay away from femme fatales. Osmus may have the, the most experience here with women, and he's only been married a few years. <laughs> and the femme fatale looks like she's moving all her chips in, just shy of three million with the pocket tens. Yeah, Gail pushing with 18 big blinds left. Her game right now is to wait for premium hands and hope they hold up. And she does have one now, and she's got Osmus dominated. It is folded back to Jeremy. He is in a similar spot as UV Bronstein was against Danny Wong's all-in. Nines versus tens again. Osmus with the same stack Bronstein had, but a call here is for not as much of his stack. I call. And there is the call with the nines, and he sees he's in trouble against Gail Bowman's tens. Bowman at risk, and you can see she is on edge. One of the last two women left in the main event with all her chips in the middle. <laughs> Same exact thing. One hand later, right? With this sign, yeah, the nines will probably win this one. The flop, Jack flop four, Jack five. Four, Bowman's four, tens five, keep five. her ahead. Gail still nervous, but in great shape here. Yep, indeed. She realizes Osmus has just two outs in the deck. Turn card now. Turn Deuce card. of spades. Gale one step closer to a double up. Osmus is going to need a nine to knock out Bowman. It's an ace. That does Osmus no good. Gale Bowman will stick around a little while longer. And you can just sense the pressure Gale is feeling. She's quite relieved to sit down and fight on. Jeremy gives up a third of his stack, dropping him to 16th place, just behind Gale Bowman, who now sits with 39 big blinds. It was getting dicey for Bowman, but a pair of tens keeps her in the game. And when you're in the game, anything can happen. There is a high-level look at the highest-regarded bracelet in the poker world. Still 25 potential owners doing battle here at the Rio. Let's get to the featured table. Greg Merson sitting among the top nine. His nemesis across the table, Elizabeth Hill. Likewise, just one notch behind in her first World Series cash. Action on Cy Watson, 24-year-old poker pro, born in New Hampshire, living in the San Francisco Bay Area with pocket sevens. He reminds me of the guy I used to try and copy answers off of on 11th grade algebra <laughs> tests. He sits with 5.9 million right now. 
And Watson with a raise to 350,000 to Hill. Elizabeth with ace jack. She reminds me of the girl in 11th grade algebra who would never speak to me because I was such a dork. <laughs> and Hill puts oh. the chips in to call. Things change, though. I've gone from being a dork to being a donk. A lot of sir. Looking good. On the button. And he'll lay it down to the small blind, Merson. Merson has the Jack Lynx beef jerky wild card hand. Well, if he wants to come in from the small blind, I can't stop him. Maybe he figures Silas Watson will provide protection from Elizabeth Hill. So you should be able to figure out Merson pretty well with that Maryland connection, I imagine. A call. Well, getting better than four to one on a call here. I'm going to put Greg on C. Queen nine suited. Whatever he has, he'd be behind Hill. Sylvia folds. Silas Watson. That's C-Y-L-U-S. That could be a typo on his birth certificate and no one bothered to correct. <laughs> the flop. Five king tray. Merson. Check. Uh, energy saving check. When Watson was in kindergarten, he'd play hearts or a game called Huckledy Buck with his parents and sisters after dinner. The two losers would have to do dishes, which he hated to do, so he quickly got good at that game. Watson with a bet of 475,000. With the pocket sevens. Now to Hill, who missed that flop, and she steps away. All right, now we can play poker mano a mano, man versus man, like the good old days. <laughs> Action to Greg Merson, needs 475 to call. And that's what he does. Okay, it's either diamonds or D, which would give him a pair of kings right now. Heads up. All right, heads up to the turn. Six of spades. Merson Check. <laughs> checks again. Well, I think Greg would be betting kings at this point, so I'm guessing it's a diamond draw. Watson checks behind. River card is another six, six of clubs. No, I don't think that card made a difference. Greg could have hit trip sixes there, but I don't see how he'd call with 6-4 preflop from the small blind. Merson checked the flop and the turn, but now reaching for chips here on the river. And with the paired board, bet 625. I think he missed his flush draw. He probably should have bet the flush draw on the turn, and then this would be even harder for Watson to call here with his pocket sevens. If Watson could see our four multiple choices, I think he would call. <laughs> I think he's going to call anyway. Looking very cautiously at Merson after that pretty small river bet. Watson reaching. And there's a call. And it was Queen 9 C. Merson, though, loses the Jack Lynx Beef Jerky wild card hand. Norman, you get a win. That's the only time I will ever outplay Greg Merson. <laughs> Watson with more ammunition to bring his total over 8 million. Good for 10th place. You know, at least Greg didn't lose this one to Elizabeth Hill, because if she stayed in the hand, she would have beaten him. Merson's stock drops to 13th best, but if recent history repeats, he'll be back. All right, let's go over to the secondary feature table. The action has been folded to Danny Wong on the button. Danny with King Trey offsuit. Oh, hi, Danny. The polite thing is to say hi back. Celebuuru always playing the game with cards or with his mouth. What? That, was that cool. is an odd call on the button with King Trey off. Volpe, the small blind with ace five of spades. 30-year-old Philadelphia-born poker pro. Had the chip lead, end of day four, beginning of day five. He calls, and now Salabura with a quick raise with Queen Jack. You said that was sick, and then you raised? I was sick, I wasn't expecting that. You gotta do the unexpected. Huh? You gotta do the unexpected. Very true, very true. No shame in folding King Trey and giving up 160,000 chips. Danny Wong says, I'm just fooling. Now Volpe. And now Volpe, the next squeeze victim in progress. He with the weak ace. Volpe started the hand with just under 4 million. Hi, Paul. Would it kill these guys to return a sincere greeting? <laughs> This is all business, Norman. Uh, right, right. Wolpe folds. Yeah, what are you trying to try to rep there, bro? <laughs> I'd be limiting my old range. I wouldn't raise there. I know you're going to raise like 100%. Just another Salaburu special.
He says hello individually to both players during the hand, and then Ooh, takes both their you chips. Did it. Who? You should have did it. Yeah, I didn't. Hand. You did. You think I was complete with like? So two the big eight? stack gets a little bigger. Back over to the featured table. Nearly 300,000 bucks to the next seven out the door. A nice payoff, but like Oz in the distance, the final table will dish out over a million bucks to seven players. Elizabeth Hill with five tray of diamonds. Hill with a lot of respect for fellow Norwegian Annette Overstad, who won the inaugural World Series Europe main event in 2007. Raised From middle position, 000. she's getting a little tricky again. A raise to 325. Well, we saw Elizabeth raise earlier in the main event with four deuce. She's upgraded to five, Trey. <laughs> Latticer folds to Merson on the button. 6-4. And he doesn't want to tangle with Hill at this moment. Sylvia in the small blind with King-Queen on the Jack Link Speed Jerky hole cam. Jesse once worked as a waiter. Elizabeth, of course, currently a waitress. Rob Salaburu also worked as a waiter. I wonder if he trash-talked his customers. <laughs> From the small blind, Jesse called over to Percy Manhattan, the big blind. 25 players left in the main event, at least three of them with waiting experience. That's a big number. Big blind folds, so heads up. Hill and Sylvia. Heads up. Flop is deuce, eight, ace. Sylvia missed. Hill with a wheel draw. Jesse checks over to Elizabeth. She's going to get busy. She certainly knows how to use that continuation bet. 425,000. Yeah, Hill with that wheel draw. Sylvia with a problem. And the problem's name is Elizabeth Hill. Well, he suspects this might be continuation hooey, but he doesn't have the best hand in the world to play back at her. And that ace out there, certainly a worry to Jesse. And he does lay it down, and Hill will take down another pot. Small steps here and there. Keep her chip stack moving ever upward. And Elizabeth's boyfriend, Harold, has the poster right. The men do have a hill to climb. Well, Hill's aggressive game keeps paying dividends. And it's not getting any easier for the rest of the field. Hill in the ninth place right now on day seven of the main event. And the stakes are just getting higher. Tonight's bracelet moments are brought to you by PokerNews.com. UNLV Gaming Management student Kenny Shung managed a big win in the 3K Limit Hold'em event, taking home the bracelet and $165,000 in prize money. And Greg Hobson, a former teacher from Alaska, captured gold in the debut running of the $1,500 Andy Only No Limit Hold'em tournament, his victory worth over a quarter million bucks. The World Series of Poker has a history of innovation. New games and new limits played each year. This year, there were three brand new events, the Million Dollar Big One for One Drop, the Four-Handed Tournament, and the Andy Only event. One of the Chinese poker bracelets won by one of my favorites, Steve Zolotow, Stevie Z. At the feature table, under the gun, Cy Watson with a raise to 350,000 with Ace King. I've proposed playing Hold'em with three blinds, small blind, big blind, super blind for more action. But that anti-only Hold'em event, Lon, that's a great fun game. Definitely more action. It is quite popular with the players indeed. A lot of sewer folds to Greg Merson. Merson on the Jack Link Speed Jerky Hole Cam, pocket tens. Greg says poker saved his life at 18 because he was so messed up on drugs. At first, poker paid for his drug addiction, but then poker got him clean. Merson in late position with a re-raise to 775. Jesse Sylvia on the button folds king seven. After Greg's relapse, he went to rehab again and has been clean seven months coming into this World Series. He rig folds his big blind. So back to Watson, the original raiser with ace king. Cy Watson mulling over Merson's three bet. Both players with premium hands. Wow, that's a lot of the lavender chips. A re-raise to over 1.9 million. Watson's four bet leaves him in a tough spot if Merson calls or raises here. And now it's getting serious, and this is where Merson's reads have been spot on. If he puts Watson on a bigger pair, he's got a release. But anything else, he'll put the pressure on Watson, who's only got him covered by less than a million chips. All in. All in. And there is the pressure. Watson certainly knows how serious Greg is now. And Cy Watson now with his moment of truth. 
Indeed, Norman. Does Watson want to risk almost all of his chips against this premium player in Greg Merson? I call. And he oh. does. He says, let's go. Ace King has the pocket tens covered. Just your routine 14.7 million chip <laughs> race with two main event fates in the balance. Merson with all of his chips in the middle. I flipped good, Greg. Watson confident he can send Merson out the door. A huge pot here on day seven. Here's the flop for Jack seven. Merson still best, gets through the initial storm. Watson says he flips good, but Merson's got to like the look of that. Turn card. Tray of hearts. Watson comes up empty. King ball one time. King ball one time. Ace or a king would end Greg Merson's main event. The river card. Another seven. Greg Merson is very healthy once again with that double. While Cy Watson in critical condition. Nice hand, Greg. Merson's high wire act remains a thing to behold, and no change in his demeanor, win or lose. Watson cut down to five big blinds. Greg Merson now in fourth place here on day seven of the main event. The question is, can he finally hang on to the chips he's won? If you're the turtle. Fear the turtle. Fear the turtle indeed. Watson now the short stack as Greg Merson makes Maryland proud. Welcome back to the World Series of Poker main event presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Just 25 players remain, but that may change right now. Two races or one? Okay. Roland Israel Ashvili on the ropes against the pocket jacks of Russell Thomas. All right, here's the flop. Rolling at risk, looking for an ace, nine, queen, nine. The actuary trying to knock out the former race car driver. Turn card is a king, no help to Israel Ashvili. The 54-year-old needs an ace. The river is a seven, and Roland Israel Ashvili is out in 25th place. 37th in the 2007 main event, now 25th here. Plus he was fifth at this year's 50K Poker Players Championship, pretty good. It wasn't the checkered flag the former race car driver was looking for, but another fine finish. And Russell Thomas gets two million richer. And the actuary's got quite a chip stack now. He does indeed, 17.8 million, second only to Rob Salabua right now on the leaderboard. Rob with a pretty good lead there at the top, though. Merson could have been out, but instead he's in fourth. Young Jake Balsiger in sixth, and Elizabeth Hill right now in ninth place. All right, back at the feature table, Wilfried Herig of Germany on the button. It has been folded to him. He has jack six. He raises to 350. Herig stepping out, showing players in plaid can play. Small blind Watson folds, and the big blind Elizabeth Hill looks down at jack nine of hearts. And Elizabeth Hill looks like she's up to no good. Bigger chip stack than Herig. Wondering if Herig is up to no good. Looks like she wants to play. A re-raise to 750,000. She has very good timing. Well, she plays any two cards, and this is a nice read. Here it looks like an 11th grade science teacher I had who failed me three times. <laughs> Poker brings back a lot of yes, bad memories for you. <laughs> he rig makes the call for 400,000. We'll go heads up against the woman that few have been able to solve so far at this table. Boy, he's now invested 750,000 with Jack Six off suit. King Four Ace both missed that, but that hasn't worried Hill in the past. Yeah, she repped big cards with her three bet, so she probably can continue to posture here. Yeah, she does a strong continuation bet. 675. He rigs snap folds. Well, sometimes the deck has hit her, and sometimes she just hits hard on her own. Give the lady her due. She moves up a notch on that virtual final table into eighth place. So Elizabeth Hill continuing to strike fear in the remaining players at the main event. Some good work on those signs supporting Elizabeth. The Norwegian waitress who works the evening shift and half the year. That could be a very long shift up there. Up to 24 hours. At the outer table, Daniel Strelitz and Scott Abrams locking horns pre-flop. Scott opened the action with his two kings, but then he had Daniel Strelitz three-bet him with his measly pocket fours. Action now back on the Stanford grad, Scott Abrams. Another silent duel. Abrams lives here in Las Vegas with a girlfriend in Texas. I have found that long-distance relationships are tough. 
You also have a problem with short distance relationships. Good for you. Abrams with a four bet. Strelitz moved all in and a snap call from Abrams with the Kings. Boy, Strelitz has run into a lot of big hands here on day seven. Strelitz started this hand with 40 big blinds and got all of it into the middle with pocket fours. I guess he's in a gambling mood. My goodness, 13.3 million chips in the middle as well as Daniel Strelitz's main event tournament life. Abrams in great position to pick up a huge pot. Strelitz needing help immediately. And there's a king in the window. That's a crusher to Daniel Strelitz. Turn card now. The nine of spades ends the hand. Strelitz drawing dead and knocked out of the main event. For Strelitz, wonderful day six, woeful day seven. From penthouse to outhouse in a hurry. Out and 24th, winning almost $295,000. Scott Abrams, the beneficiary of the overplay of pocket fours, now in third place. And the one-time chip leader takes the loneliest walk in poker. The best poker content on the internet. Your super high roller bowl seven champion. Oh yeah. Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that fight? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. At the secondary feature table, Yuval Bronstein with ace queen off. He hasn't bounced back yet from pocket nines versus pocket tens. He's under 25 big blinds. And from under the gun position, a raise to 365,000. Bronstein has made two final tables of this year's World Series. And just put yourself in the player's position, knowing they're so close to huge money in poker history, but realizing any hand they play could be their last of the main event. Fold it around the table to Jeremy Osmus in the small blind with pocket jacks. This is his ninth cash at this year's World Series. Looks at Bronstein and wonders how serious he is from a first position raise. Usually that means I'm pretty serious. Bronstein started the hand with just under 4 million. Osmus with 4.4 million. Big blind Gail Bowman yet to act. All in. And Jeremy all says all in. Gail gets out of the way. So now back to Bronstein, a decision for all his chips. Yeah, he knows that Osmus' range isn't very wide from the small blind against an under-the-gun raise. So much to consider for Yuval Bronstein now. He hopes taking his shades off will allow him to see things more clearly. You know, Yuval, no doubt, has noted that Jeremy has been pretty snug lately. Good call. Bronstein calls all in, and Osmus will try to win this race and knock out Yuval Bronstein. And it's another pretty big race. UV at risk, but if he wins, he'll have an average stack. If Jeremy Osmus loses, he's left with three big blinds and needs a conversation with Greg Merson. Some help here. A sportsmanlike handshake between the two combatants before the flop. Yuval Bronstein at risk. Yeah, two tough players with a lot of respect for each other. King 7 9, all hearts missing Bronstein, adding a flush draw to Jeremy's ledger. All bad news for Yuvi. Yeah, because of that flush draw, Yuvi loses two outs. <laughs> Bronstein looking for something to extend his main event. Turn card, the six of hearts closes the deal. Osmus flushes Yuval Bronstein out of the main event. Great run, disappointing finish for Yuval Bronstein. Jeremy Osmus gets healthier just in the nick of time with that knockout of Yuval Bronstein, who finishes the main event in 23rd place. And that caps a very fine World Series for Bronstein. Osmus up to over eight and a half million. That's good for 10th place. At this stage of the World Series of Poker main event, everyone has a defining moment. For Maryland pro Greg Merson, it's a recovery from just under three big blinds. He's left with just a few more chips than he started with on day one. For Jesse Sylvia, the kid from Martha's Vineyard, it's a blind on blind blow up gone good. And there's an A! Big blow up turns into a big double up. 
And for Rob Salaburu, it's his tableside manner. Six balls. Mark of the beast. Good for TV. Going into tank mode. Real serious right now. Are there new chapters to write in their main event stories? So where do you guys want to go for dinner? Or will someone else steal their shot at championship glory? The race to the final table is coming down the stretch. To continuing coverage of day seven of the World Series of Poker main event presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. There's been a lot of build up to this day, and now we are deep in the trenches as the 22 remaining players try to make the final nine. I'm Lon McCarran with Norman Chad and Kara Scott. As anticipation grows, Canadian Marc Andre Ladassur has remained calm. If I had a big chip stack and movie star looks, I'd remain calm too. Jesse Sylvia's day seven has not gone as planned. They call him Jesse James, though he's got kind of a James Dean look. Jamie Robbins has moxie, but he's still got work to do in 11th place. And if he finishes in 11th, he will be one unhappy 11th place finisher. Steve G, one of two bracelet holders remaining in the field. Almost everyone here seems to be half his age. G hoping he's got twice the heart. You may remember him from the pink plaid shirt. That's 27-year-old Rob Salaburu, the current chip leader. You want spunk? He's got spunk. Rob has over 23 million chips, a stack that would be above average at the final table. Norwegian Elizabeth Hill with over 9 million million in ninth. Challenging Hill for last woman standing is Francis Gail Bowman sitting with about five million. These two women play different styles, each trying to make final table history. Gail's biggest main event rival, Hungarian Andras Koroknoy, has 3.5 million. American Cy Watson with under four big blinds. Dealers don't like you today. Did you have a shower this morning? Guess not. No? Up, put after shave on. Just wearing the same, uh, same lucky boxers for the last one. Uh, Nice. Couple weeks. <laughs> Must be it. A lot of sewer and the rest of the table hoping to smell like roses when it comes time to seat the final nine. Mark Andre in a tough spot with Merson on his left. Big stacks normally open a lot of pots and keep their foot on the gas. I'd follow the speed limit if I were Mark Andre. For Watson, a coin flip gone bad against Merson leaves him in rough shape. With about four big blinds, Cy needs to find anything resembling two cards and hope for a double up and then another one and another one. Action has been folded to him on the Jack Link's Beef Jerky hole cam. King Queen of Hearts is all in. Yeah, he'll gladly take King Queen in the cutoff. He might have gone in with just one face card. I Hill folds to the small blind Dave Balkan, King 7. He makes the call. Now to Mark Andre in the big blind with pocket tens. Part-time poker pro, left his job in an accounting office recently because I think they asked him to change his boxers every day. <laughs> he was running so good in that job. Lattisar woke up with a real hand. Marlin. That's all a raise in. big enough to put Balkan all in. It's not very nice. Balkan gets caught in the crossfire here. He was just looking for a cheap knockout for only 495,000 more, but he gets out of the way. So Watson I trying to too. scratch and claw and hang on against the pocket wow. tens of Lattisar. I had, I had one of your kings. I had one of his kings. So Cy with not as many outs as he originally so hoped. The New Hampshire bred Poker Pro needs some help Five, to seven, stick around the main event. All right, here's the flop with Watson at risk. And he does find top pair, and he takes over the lead. To look at him, you wouldn't know Watson just went way ahead. The turn card. Tray of spades. Lattisar with just one card now in the deck to knock out Watson. Only the ten of diamonds would bust Watson. If a spade hits the board, they would chop the pot. The river card is a spade, and they will chop it. Watson does stay alive. He doesn't get the triple up he was gunning for. Uh, actually, with the blinds, Annie's, and Balkan's dead money, still almost a double up for Watson. And I might throw in a few bucks to make Cy smile. <laughs> Cy is still in the game, but remains in last place on the main event leaderboard, but just shy of one million chips. Lottasaur in fourth place right now. Lottasaur walks around every once in a while to give his old boxers a workout. 
The main event brings together people of all backgrounds, people from different places, people going different places. For Canadian Mark andre Lottisor and Maryland's Greg Merson, the path to this point could not have been more different. Lottisor, the college athlete and online phenom with the cover boy looks. Merson, fresh out of rehab with as much poker talent as anyone we've seen. At times, poker produces players to root against. Merson and Lottisor are players we root for. Both have interesting life stories, both with an uncanny feel for the game, both act the right way around the felt. Now they have next to nothing in common, but in a game crowded with talent, it's easy to see why they've been so successful. They play a brand of poker fit for a champion. The payout that Cy Watson would have received had he been knocked out, almost 295000 The final seven will earn a million two at least. The champ will wallow in eight and a half million dollars. Action on Greg Merson, who's barely had a chance to spend his winnings from his recent brace of win. He jumped right into the main event. Queen, 10 of clubs. Merson talks poker strategy with former roommate Tony Gregg. He's also close with fellow Maryland pro Christian Harder. Merson with a raise to 325. Sylvia with aces. When Jesse first moved to Las Vegas, he stayed with Russell Thomas. Now both of them in the final three tables of the main event. It pays to choose your roommates wisely. Good timing for Jesse Sylvia, one of the shorter stacks. He just calls with the aces. Jesse is a three betting machine, but he's going to slow play here. It's Percy Manhattan out of the hand. Over to Cy Watson, still with us on the button. 7 6 goes into the muck. Now Elizabeth Hill. Does she want to tangle with Sylvia and Merson? Not with those cards. Big blind Dave Balkan with four deuce will do that. Balkan getting more than six to one on his money to come in with his big blind rags. Might as well give it a shot. It was cheap. Three players. Trey, eight, jack, two clubs. Balkan missed. He checks. Merson with a straight flush draw. Merson shows no signs that he has a straight flush draw. I'm twitching here in the booth. <laughs> I know you are. Is that a chick? Yeah. Curiosity yeah. killed a 2% hand. Sylvia still good with the aces for the time being. Jesse once worked as a lifeguard. He quit that job because he couldn't leave his right hand on his left shoulder all day long. He bets 530000 with the best hand. Balkan with four deuce gets out of the way. Merson now with the draw. Oh. The monster draw says all in. And a snap call from Jesse Sylvia with the aces. He's going to have to fade some danger. Oh. Uh, he sees that his pocket aces are under siege. Some nice hands. I have aces. He's got a combo draw. Now the best starting hand of the game, not always the best finishing hand. Jesse will try to hang on. Couldn't just show me ace jack. I thought you had aces pretty too. Yeah. I'm seriously just like, I'm just gonna check that. forward like queen five deuce. Um, he's got like four. On the right is Jesse's girlfriend, Ashley Sleeth. Turn card. Tray of clubs, Merson's flush comes through. And club sends Sylvia one foot out the door. Only an ace or three will save him. The river card is the three! Oh! Jesse Sylvia fights back with a full house. Merson seems happy for Jesse, and Greg just lost a quarter of his stack. That's the second time we've seen Sylvia blessed late in this main event. Jesse! 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 A stunning river card, and Greg Merson will have to pay off Jesse Sylvia. Sorry, that was absurd. No, nah, nice hand. Nice yeah. 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 Sylvia collecting 8 million chips in the process. Greg Merson not in any danger. He still has 10 million plus, but now is not the time to be losing big pots. Nice hand, Jesse. Thank you. That nice hand keeps Jesse Sylvia in the tournament. Welcome back to the 2012 main event. A huge hand just before the break. Jesse Sylvia survived. Greg Merson lost a quarter of his stack. Based on how Greg spends some of his free time, it doesn't seem like a stretch to say it didn't bother him. Right now I'm living in Lower Maryland, which is pretty much right in between Baltimore and DC. I decided to move home to pursue a relationship and then things didn't work out with me and her. Let everything go that's outside. I started doing yoga the first week of January, so it was kind of like a New Year's resolution type thing. And we'll deepen our breath here, hearing that soft wave-like quality of your breath. 
and softly bow down to your inner guide, that voice within you that we're gonna listen to today. This is your home. They had a bunch of free classes in my building, so I went and checked it out one night, and then, you know, there's like 14 chicks, and, and I'm like one of three guys, so I thought it was like good ratio for me, so I just kept going. But the odds were in my favor. Full even breaths. Doing yoga certainly helps, and having a balanced life, because if you're just doing poker nonstop and it's gonna affect you emotionally, I would suggest doing it to anyone who struggles with downswings. It's really relaxing. This career path is like super stressful, so it's nice to have something to relieve stress. It is nice to see a poker player sweat something other than a river card. <laughs> Merson open for 325,000, holding pocket eights here at the featured table. A min raise plus a nickel, folded to the big blind. Mark Andre Lottiser with ace king. I'm not a yoga fan, but I would follow Lottiser into yoga class. Lottiser makes the call for 165,000 more. He and Merson will see a flop, and there is a king with a jack and a seven. There go the pocket eights down in flames. Lottiser checks top pair. Lottiser out of position against a tough opponent is playing ace king like it's six deuce. Merson bets 350,000 with his pocket pair. Marc Andre just with a call. Lottiser passive. Merson looks serene. Turn card. Deuce of diamonds, no threat to Marc Andre. He has a huge advantage on Merson, and he checks again. Merson checks. Greg slows down, fearing Mark Andre might have a hand like Jack-10. Nope, he's got a hand like Trip Kings now after that river. And that river card will awaken the sleeping monster of a hand. Lattisor now, as you mentioned, awakened and will push the action. That's 1.17 million. It's a close one. I don't think Merson's ever put him on a king in this hand. My call. Merson will hand over a pretty good chunk to Mark Andre Lattisor. That was a well disguised hand and back to back blows to Merson's stack. This time it's Merson giving his chips to the Canadian pro. And about two million more drained off of Greg Merson's stack. He's in 10th place now. I was afraid I was going to see Ace Jack. Not Ace King. Lottiser, 63rd in last year's main event, on track for the final table this time around. Indeed, Norman, sitting in third place right now. At the top of the leaderboard, Rob Salaburu has quite the advantage on second place, Russell Thomas. Jeremy Osmus is holding down the ninth spot right now. The secondary feature table has only two above average stacks, LA Pro Danny Wong and chip leader Rob Salaburu. Hungarian Andras Koreknoy with about 20 big blinds. So this table's seven-handed right now with the high blinds and Andy, no time for Andras to wait around. Salaburu in control of this table and the tournament. Rob could probably fold his way to the final table with that stack, but that's definitely not his style. Expect him to be active. The chip leader was born in San Benito, Texas, but has lived most of his life in San Antonio. It's been folded to him at this table. King five of hearts and a raise to 340,000. If you like poker played at a fast pace, Salaburu is your guy. If you like poker played in a pink plaid shirt, Salaburu is your guy. Osmus with Jack nine of hearts made the call. Well, when Salaburu is playing, it just feels like the poker table is on rollers. Except when you get to Steve G, who takes his time to fold 10-4. So heads up, Salaburu and Osmus. The flop, six jack deuce, one heart. Salaburu missed. But he's got chips. 435,000. Osmus with top pair. Osmus a, a bit more deliberate than Salaburu. Heck, a bolt of lightning is more deliberate than <laughs> Salaburu. <laughs> Jeremy with 435,000 to call. Both players resting their heads. Osmus should be also wearing a seatbelt. Salaburu with the better of the two flush draws now has a gut shot. He checks. Osmus checks as well. I'm shocked neither one of them bet the turn. River as a five, Salaburu with a pair of fives now, but it's no good. He checks again. Osmus deciding whether he wants to value bet top pair here. Might be worried about getting check raised. Jeremy decides to check. As well. Is he what do you got? A five. Wow, dude, I would have stacked your ass. Nine. Heart one yeah. time? 
Oh, you're gonna check raise a turn, maybe too, probably. Oh, yeah, real big. She got, got a 5k in it right up in front of you, sweetheart. Wow, hard on the river? Asa hard? Good game, sir. Even when he loses a small pot, Salaburo is an electric presence. Oh, this is sick. Sick fade. Poker is a non contact sick. sport that yeah. could be a personal foul. That would have been bad. That would have been epic. It would have been very ugly for Jeremy, but he did dodge that danger. Back at the feature table, Cy Watson, who doesn't have very many orange, green, or lavender chips, sitting with just under a million right now. He looks like he's waiting for someone to give him a cigarette and a blindfold. <laughs> he does have a target on his back. All in. And he says all in for 920,000 with ace five. Watson with not even six big blinds left. Ooh. Any takers here at this table? Mark andre Lottiser in the small blind. Ace deuce. No, thank you. Namerson with Jack 10. Greg wondering, do I want to stack the nice guy from New Hampshire? Yeah, I call. Yeah, I'll give it a shot. So Cy Watson once again at risk. Battle of the Beards again. Watson lost that huge flip to Merson. Ace King to pocket tens, and that brings him to here. Merson trying to take the last of Watson's chips. There's the flop. 7, 8, 10. Top pair and a gut shot from Merson to put Watson close to the exit. Could be last meal time for Cy Watson. From Cy's point of view, looking for one of three aces. A queen won't do it. Looking bleak for Cy Watson. Cy Watson's going to have to have an ace or his main event is over. The river card is a deuce. Merson scores the knockout. Cy Watson out in 22nd place. A fantastic performance. Merson did the early damage and finally takes Watson out. Pleasant, classy, and very tall. And he wins almost 295,000. Merson adds a million or so to his stack for a slight rebound from his recent woes. He's got a seat right now at the virtual final table. Can he keep it? 21 players now remain. Oh, yeah, I call. Welcome back. Kara Scott is with 22nd place finisher, Cy Watson. There can be quite a lot of pressure playing here on this stage, under these lights, this deep in this tournament. Can you describe uh, the emotion for us? It's kind of a weird feeling. You, you daydream about this tournament all the time, just throughout the year. You, I wonder what it would be like to have eight million chips in the main event. But when you're playing, it's, it's much different. It feels weird. It's like a numb feeling. You know how big the stage is, but you, you know, you're just, it's, I play poker every day. It's just another game of poker when you sit at the table. So all this morning I was very nervous, you know, butterflies in my stomach. Once you get to the table, it's, it's just another game. Okay, thank you so much. Yep. It's just another game, but Watson just scored a 300K payday, and yet if he could outlast 21 more players, it would have been eight and a half million. So it's just another game like no other. Two women still remain among the final 21, Gail Bowman and this woman, Elizabeth Hill. Hill under the gun at the feature table with 9-4. She'll fold over to Dave Balkan, married with a three-year-old daughter. Another on the way, 10-6 of clubs. Balkan is a vegetarian, right. swimming with sharks here who only eat red meat. <laughs> a raise to 325, Mark andre Lottisur, ace-queen. Part owner of a nightclub in Greensboro, North Carolina. It's possible they have some vegetarian dishes there. <laughs> He's a pretty recent addition to the live tournament scene, been playing mostly online. He makes the call. You know, it could have easily have been Greg Morrison on the rail rather than Cy Watson. Remember their huge flip, tens versus ace-king. Morrison won both of the major hands against Watson. Jesse Sylvia folds his button. Percy Mahatton in the small blind. Two small cards go into the muck. Now the big blind, Wilfried Heerig, German player with 5-4 of spades. I'm guessing here it's two carnivores against the vegetarian. He got in cheap, and he will be one of three seeing this flop. Trade do six. All oh, spades. He rig flops the nuts. A six high straight flush, and he checks it. The, the odds of flopping a flush are less than 1%. The odds of flopping a straight flush are about one in, in, in a very big number. Oh, my goodness. Ball can check it to Mark Andre. I'd say this is a bad spot oh, for the Canadian. Boy, both he and Balkan drawing dead after the flop, and a bet for Marc-Andre of 545. 
I just don't think he bet enough to push Herig off his hand. <laughs> you don't think? I'll say this. I don't think even Joe Navarro could find a tell on Herig here. The checks on his plaid shirt have moved more than his face. <laughs> Speaking of checks, a check raise from Herig to a million two. What the heck is he check raising for? You got a straight flush, son. Let the other guys try to make something. Well, Balkan says, no thanks. And then Mark andre with only ace high, can he stick around? Well, the only reason it says 0% next to Lottasaur's name is we don't like using negative numbers. <laughs> three and a half behind, four behind. I guess he could three bet them all in and see what Herig does. Three six. All right. Lottasaur lays it down, and Herig will take it, but he left some chips on the table. That check raise was awful. You know, there's only been one straight flush in main event final table history, 1994. Champion Russ Hamilton made one when he busted Vince Burgio in fourth place. The Canadian gets off easy. Let's go down to Kara Scott for a report on the international nature of the main event field. Last year's final table was an international affair with seven different countries being represented and only three of the November 9 players coming from the United States. This year there's been no discernible difference in the number of foreign players flying in to play World Series of Poker events. However, American players have taken a higher portion of the bracelets than usual. At the start of day seven, there were nine foreign players left in a field of 27. And at the moment, there are just six in a field of 21. There hasn't been an American World Series of Poker main event champion here in Vegas since 2009 and Joe Cata. Canada's lone representative sits in fourth place, but as you'll see, this is not Mark andre Lottiser's first success in an individual game. To me, poker is a lot like tennis, where it's a, uh, somewhat of an individual sport where you have to train and be disciplined and have that desire of winning. I find a lot of the same uh, environment, you know, traveling for poker and traveling for tennis. You know, you make friends in poker. Um, that you, you share a lot of same experiences with. You know, and in that sense, I feel like it, it, it looked it look a lot like uh, uh, tennis to me. I hope he plays poker better than he played tennis at UNC yeah, Greensboro his freshman year. His singles yeah, record was 2-20. and 20. Statistically, that's the tennis equivalent of busting the main event 45 minutes into day one. That is a tough tennis conference. Mark andre with pocket jacks. Uh, and now he's playing pocket jacks, which lose 87% of the time. He sits with over 17 million right now. And he puts together a raise of 345,000. Merson was 7-4 into the muck. Jesse Sylvia now. Jesse has the Jackling Speed Jerky wild card hand. Jesse played ping pong a lot in college, but he was not on scholarship. With a Lattisor raise in front of him. An early position raise, but Jesse is not impressed. I agree. There's a re-raise to 830,000, and there are your choices. Well, with that group of choices, I like D, pocket nines. I just can't see Jesse three betting here with those other hands, unless he just reads a lot of sores weak. A tray for the big blind, Elizabeth Hill. She folds back to Mark Andre with the jacks. He says, I'll see that raise. Let's go to the flop. And you're saying D for Jesse Sylvia. Yes. Flop is 10-6 king. Lottasaur sees an overcard to his jacks. Now what? He checks. Well, if Jesse bets here again, it's either the club draw or kings. If he bets, you're saying A or C, he but he checks. Well, that's either ace, queen, or pocket nines. Turn card, deuce of diamonds. Ace, queen, or pocket nines line for Jesse. B or D. A check from Lottasaur. Sylvia. Oh, don't bet. I'm officially not putting them on any hand. <laughs> Put it in the loss column you for me. Do I have that. no idea. <laughs> I have a better chance of solving the New York Times Sunday crossword than figuring out what Jesse's hand is. You were running so good. 775 from Sylvia. By the way, I don't want to pick on uh, Mark Andre, but he also was 4 and 17 in doubles. But I'm sure it wasn't all his fault. <laughs> Lottasaur with the call. Lottasaur doesn't believe Jesse. All right, the river card now. Another 10. Lottasaur jacks up. Checks again. Jesse checks. A two pair. Yep, and Jesse with ace queen. He's wide eyed as he missed everything, and that leads to him losing the Jack Link's beef jerky wild card hand. Yeah, I'm disgusted with Jesse, and I'm disgusted with myself.
Well, you had two hands that always lose. Pocket Jacks and Ace Queen. They're up against each other. Nice I guess hand. one of them had to win. <laughs> Sylvia on the short end of that. Mark Andre Lottisur makes the Jacks work. He jumps up two notches on the leaderboard into second place with more than 19 million chips. Robin started with nothing, ends with nothing. 1.6. 1.6 million for Robbins. Boy, that is cold. Wow, G folds the ace king. Robbins will take the pot and shows the four. Oh, wow. You'll see the other one on TV. The other one was an eight, a memorable bluff on day six. And as Jamie Robbins tells us, his state of mind helps him pull off plays like that. The way that I prep before we get out there is I usually take a nice walk, a nice hike. I'll do uh, push-ups, a little bit of yoga stuff. Head to Whole Foods, get a nice big green juice, organic fruit, spring water. I do all that stuff, clear the mind, no text messaging, no emails, any of that stuff. I'll take a nice 45 minutes of just that type of, uh, you know, atmosphere for myself to keep the distractions out and to kind of get zen-like for the tournament and be clear so I know what I'm getting into that day. Merson does yoga, Robbins does yoga, so 10% of this field does yoga. Soon we'll be playing poker while doing downward dog. <laughs> Robbins trying to get chips from Russell Thomas right now, but his King Jack dominated by the King Queen of Thomas. After the flop, Robbins bet 525,000. Robbins trying another one of his bluffs. I guess Whole Foods was out of green juice this morning. <laughs> Thomas picked up a flush draw. Thomas looks like an actuary interviewing for a secret service position. <laughs> he makes the call. 2.1 million in the middle. Robbins 11th at the main event in 09. Queen of spades. That hits Thomas. Robbins drawing dead now. And Robbins reaching for chips. 1.1 million. In for a dime. In for 1.1 million. Thomas is not going anywhere. Thomas hot on Robbins trail. Maybe FBI work is in the kid's future. <laughs> the river card now. Another seven. Well, Robbins had no draws. The question for him is, is this a good board to bluff at again? Point six. He thinks yes. How much? A call. And he gets a call from Russell Thomas. And that is a very good call. Boy, Russell Thomas, no doubt about it on the river. And boy, that's a lot of chips to bluff off at this stage of the proceedings. All right, Russ. Thomas with a strong call on the river. A huge pot for both players. Robbins cut down to 32 big blinds, while Russell Thomas has taken over the lead on day seven of the 2012 main event. The best poker content on the internet. Your super high roller bowl seven champion. Oh yeah. Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that fight? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. Salaburu now down to third with just under 19 million. All right, back to the secondary feature table. Jeremy Osmus in early position. Look down at King Queen offsuit. He's in sixth place overall. He raises it up to 325,000. Fold it over to Andras Koreknoy, the Hungarian version of Mark Andre Ladasur. Queen 10. Koreknoy, a self employed computer engineer turned poker pro. A re raise to 775,000. And there is something intoxicating about Queen 10, Norman. I really can't explain it. Well, this explains your poker losses. <laughs> the table has emptied because the players are going on a short break, leaving our two combatants here. Well, for some reason, there's always a lot of bluffing and stealing on the hand before a break. Can't explain why. Osmus calls for 450,000 more. His King Queen against Korknoy's Queen 10. Flop, eight a seven, two spades. Both players miss. King high for Osmus is ahead. He checks. Whoever three bets pre-flop usually has the advantage when neither player has an ace and an ace flops. Can't explain why. Andrush with a bet of 825. <clears throat> All right. Osmus gets out of the way. And Korknoy will take that pot. Osmus smiles at Korknoy after losing that pot to him. Can't explain why. Jeremy remains in sixth place. 
Korknoi up to 5.8 million. And indeed, when the light hits him in a certain way, Andres does have a lot of sore quality to him. A hand still in progress at the outer table. Nine million chips in the pot. Scott Abrams with ace queen called the shove of Bobby Corsioni with pocket tens. The flop is Trey Queen Jack. Corsioni's tens are no good any longer. Turn card eight of hearts. That gives Corsioni a little help with a gut shot. Corsioni triples his outs. Now a 10 or a nine keeps him around. The river card, yeah, another eight. Yeah, Abrams yeah, wins it with two yeah, pairs, sweeping yeah. Bobby Corsioni off the 2012 main event stage. Scott Abrams is an unassuming top five stack. Corsioni, 34-year-old poker pro, makes his first World Series cash a good one in his first main event ever. A six-figure score for Bobby Corsioni. Scott Abrams, the Stanford grad turned Vegas cash game pro, moves up into fourth place at the 2012 main event. Just 20 players remain in contention for the World Championship bracelet and the eight and a half million dollar first prize. This is the World Series of Poker main event presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Just down the hall at the Rio, the Pavilion Room is returning to its original form. Inside the Amazon room, just three tables left, including the feature table. Right now, Connecticut's Russell Thomas is the overall chip leader. At the feature table, he raised it up to 400,000 with Ace Jack. Dave Balkan called with Ace Queen. Jesse Sylvia in the big blind on the Jack Link's Beef Jerky Hole Cam. Queen of Hearts, Eight of Hearts. Sylvia would be getting six and a half to one on a call here. Um, about how much did you start the hand with? 6.1. Sylvia folds. So heads up Balkan and Herig. The blinds are up this hand, 100,000, 200,000 with a 30,000 chip hand. Heads up to the flop. Ace, Jack, King, all hearts. That would have been the nut flush for Jesse where he in the hand. Ouch. Top and bottom pair for Herig and he checks. Jesse plays a lot of pots and wishes he were in this one. He would have gotten a lot of action off this flop. Balkan checked a pair of aces and Broadway draw. They see the six of spades on the turn. Herig still ahead. Neither one of these guys has a heart, but they both have a hand. 600,000 from Herig. Now the German betting to the Australian. Who is a game security manager working for Poker Stars? And Balkan comes along with the call. Jesse Sylvia flopped a nut flush line, but he's no longer in the hand and will not get any of this pot. No, he will not. River card, four of spades. He rigs two pair is best. I'm not happy with the turn in the river cards line. They, they just have no zest. Nothing I can do about that. We started off with really big cards. Million and a half from Herig. Yeah, but how about a big finish? I, mean, I just think it's better when the turn and river cards create, you know, some type of buzz around the room. It's good for the game. <laughs> Balkan missed his draw, left with top pair, and he gives it up. I definitely just folded the queen eight of hearts for the men raise from the big heart. Herig up to 11th place with about seven and a half million. That was a good fold by the amateur. That hand didn't hurt Balkan too much. Yep, he's now sitting with six and a half million and change. 20 players remaining with two more eliminations. The field gets a raise. At the secondary feature table, we check in on Steve G, who thinks status as an elder statesman helps him here at the main event. For the young guns, I think I have a better range, better, better line on their play than they do on me. They're thinking, here's a little guy, probably conservative, Probably middle of the road, probably Republican, right? He's probably the guy driving in the slow lane, doing 55 speed limit, right? But that can't be further from the truth because I'm actually, the California DMV actually says that I am in, a, in the bottom 1% of all drivers in California because I have so many speeding tickets. Steve G lives in the fast lane. Wouldn't have guessed it in a million years. Folded to the 56 year old here at the secondary feature table with pocket eights. Come on, man. He says all in for over 3.9 million on the button. Danny Wong with tens. G all in with just under 20 big blinds left. And this is bad news for Steve G. I'm all in. And Wong moves all in for almost 8.4 million. Volpe with Ace King. Two big hands behind G. Bad news twice. Volpe, one of the short stacks left in the tournament. Wow. And he's all in. Salaburu gets out of the way. 
Really bad shape. Ah, she's not in bad shape. Yeah, not in bad shape. She's got me. Dangerous Danny Wong in position to pick up a lot of chips with a double knockout. Wong, the biggest of the three stacks with the best hand. G and Volpe at risk. Yep. G is ready to go. He's probably a valet guy, so he can hit the road in a hurry. <laughs> we could be down to our 18 players right here. Good luck, man. Well, Volpe looks like he's planning on staying. And G packed up and ready to make his exit. Ah, but he's changed his mind. Let's sit down and see something happen. <laughs> Why not enjoy the flop as long as you're still in the game? All right, Wong ahead. 5-7-6-G with an up-and-down straight draw. Wong is still best. Yeah, he's holding on with pocket tens, but they are under siege. Volpe missed that flop. Turn card. The Jack Turn of Clubs. Card. Wong's yeah. pocket tens holding on. He's in good shape for the double knockout. G needs a four, eight, or nine, or he's gone. Volpe needs an ace or king, or he's gone. The river card. And G wins. He hits the straight and scoops all the chips. I can't, I'm on my way out, man. Best, best thing that could have happened. Oh. Idiot gets all the chips. Wow, I guess Rob's happy that G got the pot. I was hoping for a coin flip. I didn't even have a coin flip. <laughs> and G knocks out Paul Volpe in 20th place. It's a good river, Danny. <laughs> I was just hoping for a flip. <laughs> Wong loses half his stack. Volpe's gone. G triples. And Rob Salaburo is thrilled with the developments. <laughs> I can't believe this. <laughs> I already gave up. I already gave up when they both call, right? If the main event wasn't interesting enough already. I'm all in. Wow. Wow. Is the four of clubs. <laughs> I can't believe this. Hey. Best, best thing that could have happened. Oh. Idiot gets all the chips. Tonight's bracelet moments are brought to you by PokerNews.com. 72-year-old Pete Philandos, a Greek-born retiree from Houston, won his third World Series bracelet when he took down the 5K No Limit Hold'em event. These young kids, they know more and more about poker. But we, the old people, know the old tricks. We, are, <laughs> we can compete with them. And Yen Dang was the last woman standing in the 1K Ladies No Limit Hold'em tournament, earning gold for the Vietnamese-born pro. Let's go down to Kara Scott, who's with Elizabeth Hill. One of the two women still left in the field, Elizabeth, is sitting at our feature table. Uh, talk to me about how you're preparing before the event starts every day. Are you getting enough sleep? Um, I probably should get some more. Um, but I wake up, I get breakfast, I take a shower and just try to stay calm and stay focused. Can you describe what it's like to go this deep in this event? Uh, it's unbelievable, uh, beyond every expectation, and I'm just enjoying every second of it right now. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hill, along with Bowman, the last two women standing every day has been a small victory for these two, though Bowman has faltered here on day seven. Shorthanded play has proven difficult. Hill's style is better suited for shorthanded play. She is a risk taker. Bowman plays it more snugly. That is Norman Chad, along with Kara Scott. I'm Lon McCarran. Back to the featured table. Action on Percy Manhattan under the gun with 10 deuce. He folds to Wilfried Hierig, Jack 10 of clubs, and a raise to 400,000 over to Elizabeth Hill. She looks down at King Queen. Hill and Bowman deserve a lot of credit. Very few women ever make it this deep here. You expect it to be Vanessa Selps or Maria Ho or Jennifer Harmon or Kathy Liebert. Instead, it's two relative novices. A call from Hill. Indeed, she's earned the respect of her competitors for her performance to this point, as has Bowman. A lot of sword with King 4. He throws that away. And the small blind, Greg Merson with King 10. He folds. Greg finally read my text message about staying away from Elizabeth Hill. <laughs> Sylvia in the big blind with Queen Trey. And he folds. So it will be Hebrig and Hill to see a flop. Norway and Germany battling it out once again. The flop. Queen 7 ace. Hebrig with a Broadway draw. Hill picked up middle pair. Erick trying to Martin Stashko his way to the final table sartorially. <laughs> Indeed, what Pius Hines did for the hoodie, he's trying to do for that plaid. He bets 900,000. Yeah, Elizabeth, it's the guy in the plaid shirt betting 900,000 into you with Squad Douche. Hill with the pair of queens. Calls for 900,000. Hill playing this hand a lot more passively than we've seen from him. 
Turn card, Trey of Hearts, the third heart on board, gives Hill a flush draw. Jim Lloyd. Hill ahead with Jim. those queens. Hebrig missed, but bets a million eight. I said it last year, Platt is the new black. Hebrig plays it like he hit the flush. Good spot, I think, for him to posture. He's been pretty tight in the latter stages. But aggressive throughout this hand. Elizabeth with a little twitch. And then she puts her cards in the muck and Wilfried Hebrick will take that pot. Nice play by Hebrick. She doesn't like getting pushed around, but she got pushed around there. In 10th place now, Elizabeth Hill. And look who has stormed his way onto the virtual final table. Wilfried Hebrick sits in ninth presently with 9.3 million. All right, let's go back over to the secondary feature table. They're playing six-handed here. Rob Salaburu with ace-queen offsuit. A raise to 425. Andras Koroknoi on the button. A king and a queen. Koroknoi doesn't play as fast as Salaburu. No one does. Plus, I think that Juji Fruit is also slowing him down. <laughs> the Hungarian pro looks like he wants to play. He'll use some of his 6 million chips to challenge the 19 million chip man. Danny Wong with six tray in the big blind, and he folds. So Salaburu and Koroknoi heads up. The flop is 10, deuce 5. That misses both. Salaburu checks. He's ahead with ace high. Two polarizing figures at this main event. Korknoi because of the ruling. Salaburu because of the personality. With king high, Korknoi bets. Salaburu calls. The Hungarian bluffs at it. The Texan calls quickly. Turn card. Six of hearts is a blank. And by the way, Salaburu was calling quickly on the flop with just ace high. He checked it. Korknoi checks. River card is the queen that hits both. Rob's ace gives him the nod. He quickly bets a million two, and he quickly gets a call, but Rob's ace will take it. Korknoi shows his queen, but it's Rob Salaburu stacking more chips. Salaburu showing silent swagger that time. Though I've got to say, Huevos Rancheros just might catch on. <laughs> rushing man, rushing man. Korknoi took quite a hit there. He is left with four million and a nickel, 18th out of 19 players. At the upper end is Salaburu, once again the main event chip leader. This is the World Series of Poker main event presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Back at the lone remaining outer table, Jamie Robbins locked up with Jake Balsiger. Big pot developing before the flop. The 21-year-old Balsiger just three bet with pocket nines. Action on Robbins with King Jack of Diamonds. Robbins sitting on 20 big blinds here. He's in a danger zone. And Robbins calls for 700,000 more. Balsiger, the 21-year-old Arizona State student. All right, here's the flop. It is four, nine, five top set for Balsiger. Robbins checks after missing that. Of course, this is Balsiger's first World Series. He knocked out his college roommate, Greg Milliron, on day five. And Balsiger checks, slow playing the nines. Turn card, 10 of diamonds. Robbins with flush and straight draws. Come on. And he says all oh, in, and a snap call from Balsiger. Balsiger's slow play, about to pay big dividends. And Jamie Robbins, who has said it's final table or bust, is staring at bust. Balsiger set, trying to fade danger. Oh, wow. Robbins needs a queen for a straight or a diamond that doesn't pair the board to stick around. Robbins trying to avoid being the 19th place finisher. The river card, the tray of spades, and Robbins knocked out of the main event. For Robbins, the second time in four years, he's made it to the final three tables, 11th in 09, 19th this year. You've got to feel his pain missing the final table again. 19th place worth almost $295,000 for Jamie Robbins. Another impressive main event run. Jake Balsiger climbs into third place. He's had a very profitable day seven so far. And by knocking out Robbins, he gives himself and the other 17 a pretty nice pay raise. We're down to two tables at the 2012 main event. The outer tables are no more. 18 players are left. Just nine will make the final table. Players will now redraw and come back to play nine-handed again. Call it what you want. Yeah. Crunch time. I flipped good, Greg. The stretch run. A push to the final table. Oh, man. I'm on my way out. All 
the cliches work at this moment. 18 players left, but just nine spots to fill at the final table. Welcome back to Las Vegas for more Day 7 action at the World Series of Poker main event presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Everyone fighting for what everyone can't have, a seat at the final table and a shot at $8.5 million. I'm Lon McCarron with Norman Chad and Kara Scott from the Amazon Room at the Rio. It was hard to overlook Norwegian Elizabeth Hill before, impossible to do it now. Somewhere in Bergen, Norway this week, diners at the Aroma Restaurant are waiting for dishes that aren't coming because their waitress is here. There's Francis Gale Bowman, once the chip leader, but now the short stack. Blondes have more fun when they have a lot of chips. I hope we can see her smiling again. 29-year-old Marc-Andre Lottasur hopes to stay away from the rail tonight. Is this the main event or is this a modeling agency? These are some pretty good-looking poker players still hanging around here. At the top of the leaderboard, Mr. Personality, Rob Salaburu. He puts the person in personality, Lon. What type of person? I'm still trying to figure out. Connecticut's Russell Thomas right behind Salaburu. Vegas pro Jeremy Osmus is in sixth. Who let the Canadian in there? Our virtual main event final table right now is virtually an all-American affair. Greg Merson has a slightly below chip average right now in 10th place and there you see Hill and Bowman on the outside looking up to the top nine and all eyes on Hill and Bowman right now each trying to become the first woman to make the main event final table since Barbara Enright in 1995 just two tables left many here to see that guy Greg Merson wants a short stack on day five now a contender here huh? we're both Thank like free rolling anyways heard, heard you had two big blinds at some point two and a half yeah Here's a look at tonight's feature table. They'll start nine-handed, then play short-handed until the two tables combine ten-handed. Mark andre Lottasur in great shape. Yeah, he's in great shape physically and with chips. <laughs> Lottasur should cruise tonight. Maryland's Greg Merson poised to make one of poker's most amazing comebacks ever. Under three big blinds on day five, Merson continues to impress. He has amateurs to his left, which is usually good news. There is the main event bracelet. The blinds right now at 100 and 200,000 with a 30,000 chip ante. The oldest player left right there, 67-year-old Bob Buckenmeyer. Retired consumer products executive. Younger players dubbed him the gangsta because he's so aggressive. He would be the oldest player ever to win the main event. Folded to Greg Merson. And also left in this field, 21-year-old Jake Balsaker. He could become the youngest ever to win the main event. Action on Dave Balkin with pocket aces. Right. The Aussie Raised. amateur has hung on since losing a big pot. He thought he had one. A raise to 425,000. Michael Esposito, another amateur with ace eight of clubs. Balkin, 36-year-old IT specialist. Cool. Esposito, 43-year-old commodities broker. Esposito comes along for a call. 11 of the remaining 18 players are in their 20s, and actually these days it almost seems surprising we still have three players left over 40, Buckenmeyer, Esposito, and 56-year-old Steve G. Hungarian Andras Koroknoy folds to the big blind, Elizabeth Hill. From Norway on the Jack Link Speed Jerky Hole Cam, Jack 7 into the muck, so heads up, it'll be Esposito and Balkan, a couple of amateurs. There's the flop. Eight king, eight trip aids for Esposito, leaving Balkan's aces in shambles. Balkan pretty comfortable. Why shouldn't he be? Balkan cutting out chips. 625. A lavender worth 100,000 each. Add a green chip, that's 625. Esposito usually acts quickly. Right here, thinking about how fast to play his trip eights. Is it Hollywooding if you're from New York? Well, if you're living on Broadway, it's not. <laughs> I call. Esposito just with a call. Both players pleased pretty much where they stand, I imagine. Turn card. Queen of clubs. Balkan now checks. Yeah, Balkan trapping here, I think, hoping uh, Esposito might bet a draw or have a king in his hand. Oh, he'll get Esposito to bet. Esposito in good shape here. Bets 925,000. Yeah, I think Balkan got what he wanted, but he's not going to like what he wanted. All in. High call. All Set of queens. Eight. Oh, eight. Yeah, I got aces. Ice, eight. Balkan misheard Esposito. Balkan thought he was ahead. Well, few things worse than 
thinking you're slow playing than seeing you were drawing to one out. Esposito in great shape to knock out Dave Balkin. Balkin needs the last ace in the deck or he is wamboozled. Another queen, Balkin misses, Ed is out in 18th place. Highest finishing Australian at this main event. Great run for the amateur. So Balkin yeah, wins over $369,000 for his first ever World Series cash. A nice bump to Michael Esposito's chip stack late on day seven. With eights full, he's over 18 million. Getting some chips there. The unassuming New Yorker takes a big step toward the final table. As Michael Esposito races up the leaderboard, it's important to look at three chip count groupings. Odds are the top few will make the final nine. The bottom few need some luck. For the middle group, we will see different strategies. Is tight right or should the chips fly? Even though Malcolm had a lot of success in the middle, the middle is usually not a good place to be. Middle seat, middle child, middle marriage. Enough said. So what should the middle of this pack do? Don't get too comfortable. In 20 years, when you reflect on your main event run, I tried to limp my way into the final nine, won't sound so good. Remember, the middle of the road is where you can get crushed. It's now a 17-player field, just eight eliminations from the final table. The blinds at 100, 200,000, 30,000 chip ante. Jesse Sylvia got lucky on day five against AJ Jigilowo, but now he sits with a below average stack. Sylvia's table nine-handed right now and has more big stacks than the feature table. Good for Sylvia? It's good news, bad news, more opportunities to double up, more opportunities to bust, but I'd like it if I was Sylvia. Gail Bowman has the shortest stack in the room. What does she need to do? Uh, she's a smart woman. She has two more master's degrees than I have, but if I were her, I'd keep my stack in action. Sitting back is a recipe for missing the final table. All right, at the secondary table, Gail Bowman under the gun with Queens. Her stack has grown every day, but not in huge leaps. Now all in for just over three million. 15 big blinds for Bowman. This is the third time two women are going to finish in the top 20 in the main event. In 1993, Marsha Wagner was 19th, Wendini Olis 20th. In 2000, Annie Duke was 10th, Kathy Liebert 17th. Gale started day seven with almost 6.3 million. She has backpedaled. Any takers here at the secondary featured table on the small blind, Jake Balsiger, he folds. Jeremy Osmus gets rid of it, and nobody challenging Gail, and she'll pick up the blinds and Annie's, and for her right now, that's pretty hefty. Yeah, no double up for her, but that's almost a 20% increase to her short stack. So Gail Bowman now with over three and a half million, still in last place. Back to the feature table, eight-handed here. Now tournament officials will move players as needed to balance the two tables. Danny Wong has the Jack Lynx beef jerky wild card hand. Wake up, Norman. Already? I have a whole Jack Lynx wild card hand pregame calisthenics routine I do. <laughs> Sorry, he raises to 405,000. Well, with just 18 big blinds left from the cutoff, I'm going to go avant-garde, D, 8-7 suited, see a flop for cheap, and push it if he likes it. To Elizabeth Hill with Queen Jack off suit in the small blind. Of course, he could be trying to induce someone to come over the top right now so he can try and double up with a big hand like A, B, or C. Elizabeth Hill has been quite a formidable opponent, and she re-raises to 850. Well, he will four bet all in here if he's got A, B, or C and, and just pick up her dead money or be a favorite to double up against her hand. The big blind folded and Danny Wong just with a call. Uh, if he's just calling, it's 8-7. This turns out to be the easiest one I've had all year, Lon. It's 8-7 suited. I'm sure nobody will mind if I left for the rest of the hand. You are doomed, I am sure. All right, here's the flop. Heads up four. Jack King Hill gets a piece of that with middle pair. I think she's supposed to bet. I'm sure. Oh. She asks, how much do you have? Yeah. And Danny just moves his arm so Elizabeth can count it from across the table. I <laughs> like that. Chivalry is dead. <laughs> so with a pair of jacks and a queen kicker, 725,000 from Hill. This is an insta-fold with 8-7, which I claim to be a stone-cold mortal lock. I wish I had left Lon so I wouldn't have to see him push all in and prove me wrong. <laughs> Uh-oh, you might be wrong. You know, you all just fouled me up, putting the wild card hand on this early in the telecast. I wasn't properly warmed up. Wong, the second shortest stack in the tournament. This would be for about 30% of Hill's remaining chips with middle pair. Hill with a peek at her jacks and folds. Wong had aces to win the Jack Lynx beef jerky wild card hand. Thanks for making me look this bad this quickly. TW. You got an extra 725. Yeah, that was Danny's bonus for slow playing the aces pre-flop. He gets a little richer. Elizabeth wonders if she was had. 
I need that, you know what I mean? We need it. This is bread, baby. Wong's bread includes a slice of Hill's stack. No showdown poker. Welcome back. Just 17 players have chips, each one trying to win the bracelet and that big first prize money. At the feature table, Wilfried Herrick with Ace King just called the all-in of Bob Buckenmeyer, putting the 67-year-old at risk, holding just Ace Queen of Hearts. Okay, haven't used it one time yet. One time. Johnny Moss, the oldest main event champion at 66. Buckenmeyer would eclipse that. Four, seven, five, no hearts. Buckenmeyer needs a very simple solution right now. Yeah, the flop does not deliver Buckenmeyer's one time yet. It's a nine of hearts on the turn. That heart comes too late for Bob. Uh, Buckenmeyer looking around for help. He rigs not going to help him. The San Diego retiree needs a queen. The river card is the six of clubs. He rig takes the chips. Buckenmeyer will take the walk. The field just got younger, Lon. Bob Buckenmeyer out in 17th place. He rig now up to almost 14 million into eighth place. Go get him, Mark. Good play, Bob. Awesome play with you. A nice payout for the amateur retiree. So 16 are left. The average stack almost 12.4 million. Gail Bowman, the short stack with three and a half million to balance the table. She has been moved to the main featured table, both now eight handed. We're here at the secondary featured table. Jesse Sylvia gets rid of his hand over to Percy Manhattan. The amateur looks down at Pocket Queens. 32-year-old with an economics degree from the University of Maryland. Lives in Rockville, Maryland. Short stack at this table with just over four million, a raise to 450,000. Jake Balsiger, the youngest player left, gives it up. Rob Salaburu in the big blind, 9-7 of spades is gonna play. He cuts quite a figure. He came back after you see she. All right, here's the flop. King 5-9, second pair for Salaburu is second best. He checks. Manhattan, a financial analyst for a government contractor, won a seat to this, his first main event through an annual company tournament. If he's not the nicest guy left in the main event, he's certainly in the top three. A bet of 550 and a quick call from Salaburu. Well, as usual, one guy takes 10 seconds to bet. Salaburu takes a tenth of a second to call. <laughs> Turn card seven of hearts. Two pair now for Salaburu to grab the lead. Where did that two pair come from? Wow. All in. He puts Manhattan all in. Oh, did you spike that? An overbet from Salaburu. That is sick. I call. Manhattan calls with the Queens, and we'll see a very disguised two pair has him in trouble. Manhattan was in a tough spot down to 15 big blinds. Probably put Salaburu on a draw. All right, it's nice playing with you gentlemen. I need a little more than help. That is a sick turn. He needs a five queen or king. The river card is a four. Salaburu with a big win. Percy Manhattan headed for the payout cage. We lose one of my Maryland interests, and boy, that's an impressive run for an amateur in his first main event. So we saw Balkan go out with aces. Manhattan with queens don't take anything for granted here on day seven. Percy Manhattan wins over 369,000 bucks. Well done. Take care, buddy. All right, you too. Good luck, man. And Salaburu just goes about his pink plaid business. And with the nines and sevens, he extends his lead here in the main event on day seven. And with the dismissal of Percy Manhattan, only 15 players now have a chance to be the 2012 world champion. And they're all chasing this guy right now. They'd better hurry. He's pretty fast. Let's go down to Kara Scott, who's with Percy Manhattan. It's $369,000 and a very deep run here in the main event for you, Percy. Can you describe the emotion of this moment? Uh, it's an unbelievable experience. I'm just relishing everything here. And you managed to get to this point through, I think, a company tournament? That's right, yep. And uh, it's, it's just been incredible. Does it make you want to come back and do it again? Does going this deep motivate you to play more poker? Absolutely. Definitely want to play. I just wish in the United States we could play online, but unfortunately we can't. So, um, But it's been an awesome experience and just really blessed to be here at the moment. Is there one thing that you'll remember the most? Probably this interview. <laughs> Me too. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> The best poker content on the internet. Your super high roller bowl seven champion. Oh yeah! Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that fight? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. 
Well played to the end by Percy Mahatton with his elimination. The remaining players get a raise. The next three to go out will earn over $465,000. Right now at the feature table, both women remaining are seated. Elizabeth Hill and Gail Bowman. Only one woman has ever made the main event final table. We could have two of them make it in one year. Mark andre Latasseur, the French-Canadian pro with 9-8 of spades, an early position. He started playing hockey at age 6, but turned his attention full-time to tennis at 15. He can easily afford to splash around with nearly 19 million chips, a raise to 430,000. Andres Koroknoy on the Jack Links beef jerky hole cam 8 tray. And he lays it down to Elizabeth Hill. Hill looks down at aces. And Elizabeth Hill stares across the table at her next innocent male victim. <laughs> she's got about 12 million fewer chips than Mark Andre, but she's got the aces and a re-raise to 925. Yeah, it's important for someone like Hill to three bet with aces since she three bets with a lot of weak hands. Folded now to Michael Esposito in the big blind. He lays it down, so action back to Latasur. The Canadian actually with the, the right type of hand to crack aces. Latasur four bets to over a million and a half. Oops. That'll get him some information. All in. <laughs> All in from Elizabeth Hill. And Mark Andre immediately wonders, why didn't I just see a flop for another half a million? <laughs> he, as you said, he had a hand to crack the aces, but no longer. It's in the muck, and Elizabeth Hill will take that pot. A one upside down sign, maybe part of her rails up in the rafters. 8.8 .8 million for Hill. He got a terrible sign guy. He had the sign upside down. I mean, that's, that's pitiful. Hill wins this battle of the beautiful. <laughs> Pocket Ace is the early theme so far. They sent Balk into the rail, but gave Wong and Hill much needed rocket fuel. Back inside the Amazon room for day seven of the World Series of Poker main event presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Rob Salaburu with about a four million chip lead over Russell Thomas right now, an American heavy top nine with Latasur and Herig, the only non-Americans. Let's get over to the featured table. Action on Elizabeth Hill from Bergen, Norway. Currently in 10th place. Her first World Series cash ever could become an historic one. She and Salaburu both with their first World Series of Poker cash. She folds to Greg Merson. With Hill out of the hand, the water is safe for Greg Merson. Queen 10 of diamonds, a raise to 400,000. So you have like 10 million, right? Thank Esposito you. asking questions with eight tray. He folds to Wilfried Heerig on the button, a seven of hearts. He cashed in last year's main event, finishing 217th. Backing it up with a very strong run this year, a re-raise to 960,000. Mark Andre Latasor, 63rd in last year's main event. He's one blind that gets out of the way. Danny folds his big blind, now back to Merson. When Merson won his six max bracelet just before this main event, he cried tears of joy. It wasn't about the money, it was about what he's been through in recent years, overcoming drug addiction. Almost two and a half million in the middle, and that brings straight draws to each player. Double gutter for Merson, up and down for Herig. Merson checks. Merson might be the first person to ever make it through the main event by checking without ever touching the table. <laughs> they both check. Turn card, Jack of Spades. Merson hits the straight and has Herig drawing dead. Yeah, Merson with the stone cold nuts at the moment with no flush draw out there. Merson reaching for chips. He's out chipped by Herig by about three million. There's a million fifty thousand. The 0% next to Herig's name indicates there are no cards in this deck that can give him a winning hand. Herig, though, with the draw himself. Oh, he's speculating here at a bad time. Mm -hmm. And he makes the call. River card now. Five of hearts. Oh, that's not good for Herig. Rivering a smaller straight. All in. All in. And a call, and a call from Herig. And oh. Greg turns over his better straight. That was a quick call with the third best straight. See, the five helped Herig's hand, but there were no cards in the deck that could give him a winning hand. So Greg Merson with a queen high straight moves up to over 21.3 million chips. Big pot for Merson. Hill's adversary has a much bigger stack. Now a devastating turn of events for Herig. Phil Locke and Antonio Esfandiari now with their thoughts. 
Wilfried, day seven of the World Series of Poker main event leading to the final table before the end of the day. This is not the time to have a catastrophic emotional breakdown. What are you doing? Think about what's going on here. There's a lot of chips at stake here. The guy's made a huge overbet. What, you're gonna call and chop? What if you call and what happens, happens? He has a 10-7 or a queen-10. You're just crippled. This is not the time to make the hero call. Fold, preserve your chips, wait for a different spot. Right, this is definitely not the time to make a huge call and be wrong. There's too much at stake. All I ask is that you actually sit back and think about your decision. What I don't like is that you insta-called. I understand Greg can't really put you on a seven, but you really don't need to make a decision for this much at stake without thinking about it. It's all about taking the emotion out of it and getting back to the logic. Go back to the logic. Emotion, no, logic, yes. I didn't think it was an awful call. He thought he got lucky when, in fact, there wasn't a single card in the deck that could give him a winning hand. <laughs> he was drawing dead, right? <laughs> so Merson with a big leap after Herig got a little too anxious with the inferior straight. Back at the secondary feature table, a look at Jake Balsiger, a student at Arizona State whose recent bike accident affected him profoundly. Uh, I go to Arizona State University. I'm a senior there. I just switched into political science last year. Had a lot of fun doing that, looking forward to graduating. ASU is a great place to go. Campus is huge, tons of people. The girls are pretty nice at ASU. Can't complain about that. This is a spot where a year ago, I got in a really bad bike accident. Got hit by a truck coming south here. I was biking home from school, going this way. And um, I don't really have much memory because I cracked my skull. I just have a few five second clips of, you know, being an MRI machine, waking up, having no clue what was going on. For a long time, just sat in bed, just staring, you know, thinking that life was pretty much over. Emotionally, when I was recovering, I was just kind of numb. It was hard, you know, to care about anything. It gives me faith in humanity that even when things are going really bad, you can come back, you know, in a year later, be from your lowest low to, you know, highest high, the best you've been on in such a short time. The success I've had in poker has given me more confidence in life, everything, you know. You don't have to take life so seriously now. Everything seems a lot more relaxing and just fun. A political science major, Jake says it's likely he will become a poker pro once he graduates, as it's unlikely he'll find a job in political science. He'll stick around poker if he keeps being dealt pocket aces here at the secondary table. The youngest player with a raise to 400,000. Russell Thomas on the button with queen nine off suit. I can't believe how plaid heavy this group is. Wilfried Heerig is on the waiting list to get onto this table. <laughs> Four monster stacks at this table with 19 million or more. A re-raise to a million 50,000 from Thomas. Salaburu gives up his small blind. Thomas picking a bad time to get aggressive on the button. G folded his big blind back to Jake now. Boy, we have seen a lot of pocket aces tonight, and we've also seen a lot of pocket aces getting raised before the flop. So Jake has a customer in Russell Thomas, and Jake just calls the re-raise. We saw Balsiger sublimely slow play top set to knock out Jamie Robbins earlier on day seven. All right, here's the flop, heads up. Trey King seven, all spades. That should make Jake feel pretty comfortable with the ace of spades. He checks. Well, the good news for Russell Thomas is that it doesn't say less than 1% next to his name. <laughs> yeah. Thomas, though, with the 1% hand and reaching for chips. And there is a million 200,000. It's called a continuation bet. It should be called the continuation charitable contribution to my opponent. What doesn't Jake Balsiger like about that flop? Even if Thomas flopped a flush or a set, Jake has outs. And Jake just with a call. And he'll keep Thomas on hook for another street at least. Turn card. Eight of spades, and that brings the nut flush to Jake Balsiger. Thomas now drawing dead. Jake checks again. Cool hand, Jake. Thomas, no pair, no draw, no clue that he is facing one of the greatest hands in the history of this game. <laughs> he does bet a million six hundred thousand, a little smaller relatively. Somehow, Balsiger reminds me of Sam Holden, which is a good thing. Holden, ninth place finisher at last year's World Series of Poker main event final table. Jake with a nut flush. He started with pocket aces and just got better. A check raised to 3.2 million. And at this point, I believe it will occur to the affable actuary that his calculations have been off. 
he has misread the strength of his opponent's hand and that it's time to go pick out a new checkered shirt. And it's time to pick out a new checkered shirt, Russell. Well, or you can just call. Wow, that's what he does. He's not scared off. They're just chips, Lon. <laughs> They're just chips. All right, river card now. Ten of diamonds. So Balsiger wondering what can he bet that Thomas will call here on the river? Well, Thomas has picked up a two-way straight draw. Thankfully for him, there is no card after the river <laughs> because if he hit his straight, it still wouldn't be good. <laughs> Already 11.5 million in the pot. One guy's got the nuts. The other guy's been drawn dead for close to an hour. Now three more million in the pot. Thomas could raise here and go into the Mike Mattiso wing of the Actuary Hall of Fame. <laughs> but he does save himself from that fate, and Jake Balsiger takes a pretty big pot from Thomas. Very nice fold from Russell Thomas. <laughs> Thomas, the maker of his own undoing there, drops to seventh. Show one. Show one. On TV. <laughs> His pleading is fruitless as Jake Balsiger becomes the new chip leader. Jake came a long way since that accident, and he's come a long way here at the main event. He's the man to beat on day seven. Back in Las Vegas as day seven of the main event continues with just 15 players. With that huge pot just before the break, Arizona State student Jake Balsiger takes his turn as the chip leader. Salaburu, almost three and a half million behind him. Greg Merson has given back some of his chips. He slides to six. Elizabeth Hill and Gail Bowman continue their march to final table history, but they're going to have to pick up the pace to get there. No woman cashed in the first 15 years of the main event. Then in 1986, Wendy Neolis finished 25th. Elizabeth Hill at the feature table open for a min raise to 400,000 with ace eight folded to the big blind. Latasur with seven tray of clubs. And he's thinking about it, getting nearly five to one on a call with his rags. And the North Carolina nightclub owner with the suited cards will go club mining against Hill. You know, this whole main event reminds me of guys in a club, one by one, trying to pick up the most attractive woman in the joint <laughs> and each time getting shot down. Jack, 9, 10, two clubs, a flush draw, and a gut shot for Lattisor. Hill is open-ended. Lattisor hoping to turn rags to riches here. Reaching for chips. Betting into the pre-flop razor. 475,000. Hill again looks at her prey before springing to action. Hill. With some lavender and a few green. That's a call. So these two good-looking poker players have built a pot of over two million. Turn card now. Eight of spades and Lottasur comes up big, hitting a jack high straight. And that gives Hill a pair of eights. <laughs> a little smile from Elizabeth, maybe trying to induce a check. She got it. So now Elizabeth Hill. No, oh, I thought she wanted a free card. Oh, no, she's reaching. What was I thinking? And she does bet. That's 675,000. Mark Andre can't like that. But even if she has the higher straight right now, he still has his club draw. Mark Andre with the bottom end of the straight. He's got chips, and there's a call. And boy, this is one good-looking heads-up hand. <laughs> All right, the river card now. King of diamonds, so no improvement to a flush for Lattisor, but his straight is best. And he checks again. We've heard her say you can't let them push you around. And the corollary to that is you've got to push them around. And it looks like that's what she wants to do to Mark Andre here. Elizabeth Hill. Putting troops together, that's almost 1.3 million. Pretty small wager. She makes it look like a value bet. A lot of sore. Getting nearly four to one here to call, and he's got the chips to spare. It looks like Mark Andre has doubts here now. And he does fold his straight. Wow. He was convinced she had the queen. And she is final table worthy, Lon. Whatever she did, however she did it, she made a believer of him. Well, Lottasur is also final table worthy. He just confounded me a bit with that fold. 
So Mark Andre with a misread, allowing Elizabeth Hill to increase her holdings to more than 11.6 million chips right now. Hill getting stronger here on day seven. We have tracked her since day three, and she is impressed throughout. She's only played poker for about four years, doing odd jobs before and during that time. And here she is on day seven, a major contender. We've seen her get the better of Mark andre Lottasor a couple of times here on day seven. And of course, we've seen her get the better of Greg Merson repeatedly from day three on. Let's keep it here at the feature table. Hill with a suited queen five. Enough bluffing for the moment. She folds Greg Merson with King Jack. 24-year-old's volatile chip stack now stands at nearly 16 and a half million, folded to Michael Esposito with ace eight of diamonds. Ace eight suited good enough to bust David Balkin's pocket aces here earlier. He called and on the button, Herig has the aces this time. All in. He says all in for almost two and a half million. Pocket aces just in time for Herig, 12 big blinds left. Folded to Danny Wong in the big, he folds. Now back to Merson with King Jack. He re-raises. I fold. That sends Michael Esposito running. And so he, Rick, who shipped over 10 million to Merson a short while ago, will try to get some back. Merson willing to gamble there for about 12% of his stack. And he is way behind he rigs aces. He rig at risk. All right, here's the flop. Heads up. Trey Queen King. Merson gets some help with a pair of kings. He rig doesn't look all that comfortable, but he's still a three to one favorite. Hierig hoping to become the second straight German to win the main event. Merson's rail looking for Greg to turn this hand around. The turn card. Oh, and that does it. Merson with two pair. And that puts Hierig on the edge of elimination. Wilfred Hierig still with 12 outs to fight back and stick around. The last German player left looking to hit the river. The river card, the seven of spades. He rig falls short with the pocket aces. Greg Merson finishes what he started earlier tonight. Merson's rail calling for him to be player of the year. I had to fall the hand before on the river against you. He rig reflecting back on his bad call against Merson earlier with the straight. Another strong finish for He rig. Greg Merson now near 20 million. Good for fourth place. Wilfried Herig will have nightmares about Greg Merson. First the higher straight, then the ace is cracked. Merson on the rebound one more time. Aces and aces cracked have ruled the night here at the World Series of Poker main event. Wilfried Herig, the latest victim. Greg Merson, the latest beneficiary. The pay ladder is paved with big dollar signs now, and it only gets better. Over at the secondary feature table sits Steve G, a World Series bracelet winner who thinks he's flying under the radar. They're not really focusing on me. They're not really concentrating on me because they're really targeting each other, right? This guy is an internet superstar. This guy, you know. So they're really focused on each other. I'm just sitting there playing my poker, accumulating chips. A poker pro in the 1970s and 80s. He quit playing professionally for 20 years, and now he's back closing in on a main event final table. Steve G in the small blind. Wait, 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 wait. And uh, he thinks the wait, dealer wait, wait, wait. has aired here. I'm the... I'm the no. dealer? No, no, the dealer dealt the card. Uh, here. You the last card. No, 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 no everything's dealer. right. We're good. Who's We're the good. dealer? Who's the dealer? Oh. Yeah, you're getting your second oh, card. Yeah. Everyone's getting their second okay, card okay. now. Everybody relax. Well, Scott Sorry, Abrams thinks everything is right, but it is not. The first card actually was dealt to the button. Yeah, the players agree to play on, but Rob Salaburo did get the first card. All right, on the Jack Link's beef jerky hole cam, Abrams was dealt ace 10 suited. Abrams, number two on the leaderboard, raises it to 425,000. Salaburu folds now to Steve G in the small blind with pocket sevens. G says that winning his bracelet in 2010 validated his return to poker. He calls it the magical summer for him that year. He's now the oldest left in the tournament with Buckenmeyer gone. He calls Jesse Sylvia with ace jack off. 15 players left. Jesse Sylvia now sitting at the same table with Russell Thomas, with whom he first lived when he moved to Las Vegas a couple of years back. And Sylvia makes the call to make it a three-way pot. A million and a half in the middle almost, and there is a seven as G hits bottom set. He checks to Sylvia with a gut shot. No hood for Steve G. I knew Joe Navarro was wrong. <laughs> he checks to Abrams. Top pair, top kicker is the long shot. Abrams lives here in Las Vegas. One of his roommates, Leo Wolpert, finished 50th at this main event. A bet of 750,000. Oh, geez, there's the hood. I knew Joe Navarro was right. <laughs> 
You know, you know, it's pretty incredible, Lon. Roommates finishing in the top 50 of the main event, and ex-roommates, Thomas and Sylvia, still alive in the final 15. Action back to G, who flopped a set of sevens, just a call. G looking to trap. Sylvia folds, so heads up now between the guy who called for the missed deal and the guy who called it off. Turn card now another 10, and trip 10s for Abrams as G turns sevens full. Abrams is going to wish it was a missed deal. G checked again. Abrams, a Stanford grad, originally set out to be a financial analyst on Wall Street, but thankfully he found poker. We didn't need another Wall Street financial analyst. <laughs> Abrams, that's a million and a quarter. After he quit playing professionally, G saw the rise of poker since Moneymaker and said, I can do that. So he came back, and it turns out he can do it. He can do it very well. Won a bracelet a couple of years ago, and G calls his full boat is strong, but not airtight. The 56-year-old slow playing his monster. All right, almost five and a half million chips in the middle. The river card. A tray of diamonds brings no help to Abrams. His trip tens are second best here. I think we'll hear from Steve G now. G with the full house. He checks a third time. That is one slow playing 56 year old. <laughs> Abrams, though, reaching for chips. And with the trips, bets a million eight. Small bet from Abrams, begging for a call. G regarding his much younger opponent. Abrams looks like he wants to put on a hoodie to disguise the strength of his hand. <laughs> Steve G with a lot of those lavender chips. And he is getting busy, Norman. There's the check raised to 4.3 million. Abrams didn't see that coming. He thought he had G nailed. And the hood comes back on. Abrams should fold. I call. He makes the call. Boat. Rob Salaburu yells out boat, and he is right. Steve G takes a yeah, big pot. That's right. It's black magic. Don't touch your money, bro. Get your money for it. Hey. Salaburo knew what G had. Abrams had to find out the hard way. Uh, keep on keeping on. Salaburo keep once on, again happy. On. Steve G has a lot of chips. Uh, you like that? You like that? I don't know what if every push all in, though. <laughs> you call yeah. happily. Yeah. Trip tens wind up tripping up Scott Abrams, and a missed deal turns into a good deal for Steve G. This is the World Series of Poker main event presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Tonight's bracelet moments are brought to you by PokerNews.com. In a year of overwhelming success for women at the World Series, Vanessa Selps captured the second bracelet of her storied career by taking down the six-handed $2,500 10-game mix event along with nearly a quarter million dollars. And just days before his deep main event run, Greg Merson won the 10K 6 Max No Limit Hold'em event and over $1.1 million as well as his first bracelet. No one knows the marathon better than Greg. Four days to win his first bracelet, and here we are in day seven of the main event. He's been playing for 11 straight tournament days. Current payout over $465,000, but both remaining women have their sights set on greener paydays. At the secondary table, Jake Balsiger with the dealer button and the main event chip lead with ace nine, a raise to 400,000. Jeremy Osmus with pocket kings. He has not been too active on day seven. I guess Jeremy's been waiting for hands like this. It's nice to look down at pocket kings in the small blind after a button raise. And there is a re-raise to a million 175. When he started playing as a teenager, Jake says he was the tightest player on the planet, but now at the ripe old age of 21, <laughs> that has changed. He saw Russell Thomas fold the big blind. Now back to Balsiger, running deep in this 21-year-old's first ever main event. He makes it two million straight. Well, it looks like Jeremy's patience on day seven is gonna pay off here. This is a good spot for the 32-year-old Las Vegas pro. Oh, yeah. Bossma says all in. The total is just shy of 10 million. Balsiger thought Osmus was making a move on his button raise. Now he's got to think, boy, this guy's been pretty snug, and he just five bet all in? I'm a goner. Jake with a much bigger stack, but warning bells better be going off in his head, and he does get rid of the hand. 
And Osmus gets some no-flop chips, some of the sweetest kind. Well, just a small ding to Balsiger's stack. Osmus, the family man, moving on up. Yep, he's into 10th place now with over 12.2 million. Balsiger still has the tournament lead even after that hit. Jeremy Osmus probably okay whether Jake called or folded, but the fold comes with a lot less stress, I'll tell you that. Rob Salaburu nearly even with Balsiger now after Jake's loss to Osmus. Elizabeth Hill hanging on to her virtual final table seat in ninth place. Gail Bowman just hanging on, has been playing pretty snug. She's down below two million now. Action on Elizabeth Hill at the feature table, seven four of diamonds. The breakthrough year for women during the poker boom came in 2004. Annie Duke, Kathy Liebert, and Sydney Violet all won open bracelets. Hill with a raise to 400,000. Merson folds over to Gail Bowman. She, the one with the aces now, and she loves to see that all in for over a million and a half. Just in the nick of time, Gail was down to eight big blinds. Now, Ladasur in the small blind. Folds queen six. Wong gets out of the way. Back to Hill now. And with Bowman so short stacked, Hill could make this call with 7-4 suited. It's for less than 10% of her stack. And this is the first time we're seeing these two women square off here in the main event. Hill does fold, and Gail Bowman will pick up some much needed ammunition. She garners the blinds and annies and Hill's raise. And Gail Bowman now up to almost two and a half million. That pot will help but not solve her short stack issues. Hill opts not to go for the knockout, as Teddy KGB would say. Bowman hanging around. 14 players remaining here on day seven. Average stack just over 14 million. Jake Balsiger in the lead. Gail Bowman on the short stack at the featured table. Danny Wong opened with ace-10 off for 405,000 from the cutoff. Jack Link's beef jerky hole cam shows ace nine of spades for Andrush Koroknoy. Koroknoy was 339th at the last year's main event. The second shortest stack in the game says all in for 4.4 million. He pushes with 22 big blinds left. Merson in the big blind folds back to Danny Wong with ace 10. Wong, 27 year old Las Vegas pro. Like Greg Merson, a cash game stalwart with a very difficult decision here. If yeah. he plays and loses, he's got next to nothing left. But if he wins, Wong would have a stack he can play. Yeah, Wong the third shortest stack in the game. And perhaps he holding Korok Noy's tournament fate in his hands. So four more million, basically. That's three right there. I feel like I have the best hand. I call. He oh. is right. He has Korok Noy dominated and all in. Yes. That is a gutty call. Wong felt like he had the best hand. Korknoy at risk, cracking his knuckles, hoping for help. As you mentioned, Norman, the player is so close and chips pretty much a double all in here. Korknoy waits his fate. Wong doesn't want to watch. Here's the flop. Jack King Trey, two spades, a flush draw for Korknoy, a Broadway draw for Wong, but he can barely watch. Yeah, no wonder he didn't want to look. An excruciating flop. Wong now the slightest of underdogs. What a moment here, late on day seven. The turn card, an ace hits both and moves Wong closer to winning this hand. What a river card for these two. Wong can't bear to look. Korknoy looking for a nine or a spade. It's a spade on the river. Korknoy saved by the flush. Korknoy gets another life. And Wong must channel his inner Mersin now, under four big blinds left. The river brought a life vest to a drowning Andrash Koroknoy and his 9.3 million <laughs> have him in 11th place. Koroknoy trying to contain his utter joy. Gail Bowman watches as her day five antagonist survives again, this time with a Hail Mary pass. The first time it was with a Hail Mary rule. Andrash can barely believe his good fortune. As we said, nearly the entirety of both stacks were at risk. Danny Wong left with 740,000 crumbs. Yeah. To make it this far in the main event, you need to be good. Oh. <laughs> he moves all in. A lot of sir hoping to turn rags to riches here. Levels and shadows. And you need to be a little lucky. Here we go again. Mullen. And there's an ace! So where do you guys want to go for dinner? Thomas went way out on a ledge and managed to survive. The river brought a life vest to a drowning Andrash Koroknoy. 
Tonight marks the end of day seven and the beginning of the final table anticipation. 14 are left. Nine will make the final table to play for the jewelry you can't buy and for eight and a half million dollars cash. The best poker content on the internet. Your super high roller bowl seven champion. Oh yeah. Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that fight? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. Welcome back to Las Vegas for the World Series of Poker main event presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. The wait is over. It's time to find out who will make the final table. I'm Lon McCarran with Norman Chad and Kara Scott. The fifth largest main event field is down to 14. Just nine will make it through the night and play for eight and a half million dollars in first place prize money. Jake Balsiger, the youngest player remaining, has the most chips. And the 21-year-old could become the youngest player ever to be main event champion. 24-year-old Russell Thomas sits comfortably in second place. Ever since the Whalers left Hartford, it hasn't been the same. Russell Thomas could bring that city back. Jesse Sylvia is one of the short stacks. And at this table, he's sitting across from the guy he wants to live with, Russell Thomas. America is a small world. 24-year-old Greg Merson is still making Maryland proud. Maryland is a small state with big assets like the Chesapeake Bay and Greg Merson. Elizabeth Hill has not backed down from anyone in the last week of play. But she has been holding on to that bottle of water for dear life, Lon. Gail Bowman's day seven not going as planned, but she's still fighting. There's an old French expression, nunca perder la esperanza. Actually, that's Spanish, but it means never give up hope. Jake Balsiger with the inside track right now, but not by much. Thomas and Merson both over 20 million. The old man, 56-year-old Steve G, hoping to fend off all the youthful aggression around him. Hill and Bowman being watched by everyone as they hope to chip up late on day seven. Danny Wong, the short stack. Hill knows the difficult task in front of her. Today, my focus is going to have to be just to stay calm, don't freak out, <laughs> um, just do level by level, and I'm just going to have to try and play my best um, and hope that that's going to be enough. The main event is special for so many reasons, and stories like Hill and Bowman certainly qualify as special. These two women trying to become the first pair of women ever to make the final table. The last time it came close to happening, 2000, when Annie Duke and Kathy Liebert made the final two tables. Hill and Bowman have played different styles. Hill willing to mix it up with the boys. She's been like Annie Oakley on the felt. Bowman much more conservative. She's been more like June Cleaver on the felt. <laughs> Hill and Bowman have talented company at the featured table and in the form of some very big stacks. Bracelet winner Greg Merson right now sitting with more than 20 million chips. Merson is the most skilled player at this table. His even keel demeanor is a major asset as the pressure mounts. Well, but they have to watch out for amateur Michael Esposito with the second biggest stack at this table. If I were Mike, I'd only play pots with the short stacks. Don't get into an ego war with Merson or Latissour. This feature table has seven players sitting here. The blinds right now at 120,000, 240,000 with a 30,000 chip ante. Elizabeth Hill looks down at nine tray and will sit this hand out. There is Greg Merson. He will not play 8-7. Fold that over to Esposito. Esposito used to weigh 225 pounds, which goes to show that if you exercise every day for a few Wait, years, you can lose a lot of weight. <laughs> with Queen Jack suited, he raised to a half million on the button. Mark Andre Lodisser with pocket fives. Mark Andre, on the other hand, was born with a six pack, and his hairline will never recede. <laughs> a re raise to a million 250 from Lodisser, folded to the big blind. Andras Koroknoy, the Hungarian with King Deuce folds. Back to Esposito now. Esposito now competes in triathlons. Lottasaur used to be a tennis player. Esposito wondering what this Canadian pro's up to. All right, cool. Call. And he calls. I just talked about how Esposito should stay away from Merson and Lottasaur, but, but like most poker players, he's ignoring my advice. <laughs> Here's the flop. Jack King, Jack, trip jacks for Esposito. Esposito checks it. Man, he looked guilty of something when he checked it. That's a no fun flop for Mark Andre with pocket fives. But I think Mark Andre is going to want to bet this and see if he can just pick up the pot right here. He re raised pre flop and here with a bet of a million and a quarter. Good spot for Michael Esposito. 
I raise. And he said raise, and that's a min raise to 2.5 million. Yeah, this reminds me of that old story. Guy kills 20 people. Judge is about to send him and asks, is there anything you fear? Guy says, yeah, the check raise. <laughs> if I'm Mark Andre, I fear this check raise from a pretty tight player representing a pretty big hand. Mark Andre re-raising pre-flop with a small pocket pair. And now finally gives him up. And Thank you. Michael Esposito joins the 20 million chip club with that pot. Uh, nobody asked, but if I were Esposito, I would have just called the flop, though it's possible Lottasaur was not going to put another chip into the pot after that. Now I got more money to call you again, Daniel. Good. Keep me alive. Keep me alive. I'll raise to the point where I only have one chip left. You check, I bet you fold. Okay. <laughs> then when they throw us both out. No, you just, no. You just actually brain farted and folded your hand. I doubt that's going to happen. With just two tables of seven players left in this event, some players are thinking final table, while others are thinking bigger world champion. And at this stage of the event, it is fair to think that big. Norman, we've seen nine champions crowned in our time together. Who has the tools to be number 10? Hey, I can tell you who's going to finish sixth. I have firsthand experience there. But a champion? The last thing I won was an eBay auction. Still, if you want a pick, I'll give you a pick. As Greece once was the cradle of Western civilization, Maryland, my Maryland, is the cradle of modern poker. Maryland's Greg Merson will be the 2012 main event champion, and if he's not, he'd better move to Virginia. Greg has shown he's willing to get involved, not be pushed around, and ready to live the Maryland State motto, strong deeds, gentle words. Action underway at the secondary featured table. This table playing seven-handed as well, but a lot more chips in play here. Six players in double digits. The short stack, Jesse Sylvia, has over 8 million, 33 big blinds. Jesse on a bit of an island at this table, but that probably makes him feel right at home given his childhood upbringing. Russell Thomas now one of four players over 20 million. With Salo Buru to his left, no stack is safe for Thomas. Russell knows risk, and I tread lightly if I were him. Russell Thomas looks down at queen six of spades. The actuary will fold to Rob Salaburu with pocket jacks. A quick raise to 550. On the button, Steve G with ace nine offsuit. When G has his hood on at the beginning of a hand, I assume he's just a little chilly. <laughs> he does have a tendency to keep the hood down. When he's got a pretty good hand, he puts the hood up. But here, as Norman mentioned, starting with the hood and makes the call. In the small blind, Jesse Sylvia. King, queen. Jesse, very likable, very honest about his game. He says, sometimes I feel like a donk stuck inside a good player's body. As we mentioned, Jesse with the short stack at this table. Mullen. And he says, all in for over eight million. Wow. I'd like this play because Salaburu opens a lot, but this time Rob's holding a big hand. I'm all in. And he moves all in over the top. So back to G. He says, I can't call, and he folds. So Rob Salaburu will try to make the pocket jack sing and eliminate Jesse, James Sylvia, in the process. We've seen Jesse in this spot before. Remember ace three against AJ Jejelowo's pocket kings? This time, Jesse's a smaller underdog, but again, it's for his main event life. Jesse's girlfriend, Ashley, on the side, suffering through this moment as well. 17 million chip pot. Jesse Sylvia on the hook. Here is the flop, and there's a king, and Jesse's double up now looking good. Jesse would love to celebrate that flop, but he's got the good poker sense to wait. Rob's brother Yule, not happy about the developments here. All right, the turn card. Sylvia trying to hang on, six of clubs. Jesse in the comfort of his rail. Salaburu will need a two-outer now, a jack, to knock out Sylvia. Sylvia will either be out or one of the big stacks. Seriously, this is not cool. The river cards, the nine of diamonds, and Jesse Sylvia with the big double up. Jesse James will ride again. <laughs> Salaburu takes a big hit. Rob now counting out the damage. He loses over 40% of his stack. Jesse Sylvia took a chance with King Queen and it paid off suddenly as a dangerous chip stack as he has a seat at the virtual final table for now. 
Nothing quite like a warm Las Vegas night. Jesse James Sylvia just had one foot out the door, but a king on the flop kept his main event dream very much alive. Sylvia now with an above average stack with 14 players left. Rob Salaburu, the man who lost the hand with a below average stack. We've talked about this being the year of the woman, but as we wind down here, the main event has become the year of the cash game player. Sylvia and Salaburu, along with Greg Merson, Scott Abrams, Danny Wong, mostly cash game guys left. You see the payouts. How can those numbers not affect your play? Well, the best say they can ignore the money ladder. Current payout is over 465,000. Lottis are with 10 9 of clubs. Another cash game guy, Russell Thomas, Jake Balziger, Jeremy Osmus. A lot of cash game grinders here. Lottis are with a raise to a half million. Corknoy folds over to the small blind. Elizabeth Hill, eight tray into the muck. Greg Merson in the big blind. Greg on the Jack Link speed jerky hole. Cam with ace king off. Before Black Friday, Merson, an online cash game monster. His favorite game was 5 10, no limit hold him six handed. I'd love to get him seven handed. He won't know what he's doing. And for 260,000 more, just calls with Ace King. Yeah, earlier on day seven, we saw Lattisar just call with Ace King out of position against Merson. Now Merson returns the favor. All right, here's the flop. Heads up. Ten Jack Deuce. Broadway draw with over cards for Merson. He checks. Lattisar with middle pair. And he checks back. Lattisar exercising pot control checking there. I love when he exercises. <laughs> Turn card five of diamonds. Merson misses that. But he's reaching for chips. The lavender worth 100,000. He bets five and a quarter. Lottisar with the best hand. His tens with the big advantage. And there's just a call. Uh, he might put Greg Merson on a flush draw now. River card. Another five. So Merson comes up empty. Merson almost zen-like in his motions and his actions. He is a yoga practitioner, and that is 2.8 million over betting the pot. Wow. Yeah, and if, if Mark Andre had him on a flush draw, that River 5 doesn't make a difference. And that is a tough one for Mark Andre to decipher. And Mark Andre Lottiser lays down the best hand. Well, it's possible Lottiser had seen Merson over bet before, and it usually meant strength. Merson with another good play. Lottiser lays down another winner. We saw Elizabeth Hill run him off his straight before. Now Merson turns the screws. Greg into third place after that pot. Here are Phil Locke and Antonio S. Van Diari with some thoughts on Merson's big river bet. I have to say I'm super impressed with the way Greg has played this table tonight. He's controlled his opponents, he's made all the right decisions, he's put everyone to the test, and in this particular hand, he even got his opponent, Mark andre to fold the best hand on the river. I don't think he can fault Mark andres fold. Mark is basically in a bluff catching position. I don't like the call here. I think folding's right. Mark andre even though he had the best hand, it would be a thin call, and I don't like that spot here. Just because Greg makes a big bet does not mean he has it. Just because a diamond comes doesn't mean he has a flush. People bluff. Sometimes you got to catch them. I don't it's not a clear fold. I, it's not a clear fold, but I think it's a better fold than a call. I disagree. Okay, we agree to disagree. Well, the boys are split. You want to cast the deciding vote? Yeah, like I'm qualified to break a tie. <laughs> I thought a straight beat a flush until three years ago. <laughs> Elizabeth Hill with King 10 off suit. With the payouts where they are, does she go back to the restaurant to keep waiting tables? A raise to 480000 The answer to that is no. And the answer to Greg Merson is get out of the hand. <laughs> With Queen 5, he does just that. And the small blind, Gail Bowman says all in for over $1.5 Six big blinds left for Gail. Michael Esposito in the big blind. A seven of diamonds. I call. Makes the call. Well, if Esposito had folded, Hill probably priced in the call here. But she folds the hand with Esposito calling, and they flip him up, and Bowman dominating Esposito and looking good for the double up. Yeah, that works out well for Gail here. As you mentioned, Esposito was dominated. Hill would have had two live cards against her. So Bowman with a short stack trying to pick up a little steam here on day seven. The flop, and there's a nine. Bowman pairs up to solidify her advantage. Boy, Elizabeth Hill would have flopped two pair and had Bowman on the ropes. Bowman and Hill each trying to become the second woman ever to make the main event final table. All right, the turn card now. 
Is another nine, and the trips guarantee a double up for Bowman, who refuses to be shown the door. And that really relieves Gail Bowman's stress <laughs> in a hurry. Ends up being a lucky fold for Hill. And we still have two women on the road to main event history here with 14 players still left. Well, that barely makes a dent in Esposito's holdings, but it means the world right now to Gail Bowman and her supporters. She's over 3,700,000 right now. If I don't call, are you calling? Yeah. You are, huh? Huh? You're calling? <laughs> that... <laughs> Nice hand. I didn't want to give her the free it's shot at it in that spot. Bowman's still short, but her stack and her hopes are growing. Welcome back to the World Series of Poker main event presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Still alive in this main event on day seven is Jesse Sylvia, who still calls an island off the East Coast his home. Martha's Vineyard is the most beautiful place in the world. It's a small island and by a place called Cape Cod off of Massachusetts. There's just waves and beaches, and tons of people here in the summer. It's just got a great vibe and everyone's really happy. Getting out here is not particularly easy. You gotta take a boat or fly out. And I always tell people when I come home from Las Vegas that I travel land, air, and sea, so. It's kind of a long trip whenever I come home, but I'm always happy when I get here. What's up? You're looking handsome. Oh, thank you. How you doing? Good. Yeah. My dad works on a uh, oceanographic research vessel. Yeah. How you doing? My mom's a florist. Good. Yeah. Good. So what are you up to today? In the winter out here, there's probably about 12 to 15,000 people living on the island. And then the summer, there's probably 100 to 250,000 people just walking around the island. You get to uh, take my sandwich now? My dad and I, we're always making fun of each other. When it gets down to it, we love each other a lot. We're very supportive of each other. The response, it's been, it's been wonderful. How's it been for you? It's been fun, man. Have fun. I love Good. you. Nice to see you as always. Yeah, you too, dude. You know? I wrote my college essay about the island Whoa! and how it's a special place to be. I've been a lot of places. This, is, this will always be my home, and this will be the place I want to like hang my hat at the end of the day. I was thinking of visiting Jesse on Martha's Vineyard, so I went online to look at some hotel rates. Mind you, this was for off-season, and there wasn't much I could afford. <laughs> Paradise is expensive. Come on, you made a final table. You can make the trip. <laughs> All right, action on Jake Balsiger, the 21-year-old, coming off his junior year at Arizona State with a raise to a half million with Ace-10. Steve G. folds his small blind, Jesse in the big blind, with pocket eights. Jesse, of course, now lives here in Las Vegas. The main event field this year, about half the size of Martha's Vineyard in the winter. <laughs> Jesse's sitting with nearly 18 million chips now. He'll make the call with the pocket pair. So he and Balsiger will see a flop. The flop is king. Eight for a set of eights for Jesse Sylvia. He checks. He's picked a good time to run good. Balsiger with ace high. Balsiger born in Portland, Oregon which I believe I would like more than Martha's Vineyard, and it's more affordable. <laughs> Half million from Balsiger with just his ace high. We saw Michael Esposito check raise with three of a kind on the flop. What will Jesse Sylvia do? Well, Jesse reached for a pretty healthy stack of chips. Yep, those are lavenders. There is the check raise to over 1.6 million. Well. Well, see, Lon, this, this is where I just play ABC poker, bluff at it on the flop, and if I'm check-raised, I leave. But Balsiger has other ideas. Yeah, he is not going to be run off his hand here. And there is the call. Well, he might put Sylvia on a flush draw and figure his ace high is good right now. Turn card, another king, and proves Jesse to eights full and a hand that cannot be bested. Well, Jesse plays a lot of pots and splashes around a lot of chips, so he will get paid off on those occasions he has a hand. Jesse with a lot more of those Lavenders here. That's over 2.6 million. So if Balsiger, you know, has Sylvia on that flush draw, Jake's ace is still good right now. But boy, the water is getting deep here in the desert. It gets expensive when you get stubborn on what you put your opponent on. Well, here he comes, and this all started when he tried to bluff at it on the flop. Now Balsiger calling, drawing dead as we head to the river. Wow, pot of almost 10 million. The river card now is a 10, and Balsiger pairs up. 
But it is another diamond out there. Jesse had bet a little more than half the pot on the turn. Jesse's girlfriend dancing on the sidelines. And that is 4.3 million at Jake Balsiger now. That 10 of diamonds might save Jake some chips here. Sure, it paired him, but if, if Sylvia were on that diamond draw, it got there. What can Balsiger beat right now? You know, only a bluff. Now Jake looking quite serious, but now finds a way to gracefully exit the hand. His bluff crash landing into Jesse Sylvia. Well, Jesse is the chip leader now, so if I'm coming to Martha's Vineyard, he's paying. Jesse with over 23 million now. Balsiger with some bad timing cost him almost 5 million chips. Yeah. <laughs> is your middle name James? Oh, he may not be from a big place, but Jesse's supporters here in Las Vegas have been big time loud with good reason. He is top dog right now. Back inside the Amazon room, we are still five eliminations away from the final table. Jesse Sylvia using his small town upbringing to build a big stack. Here on day seven, he's the chip leader. Thomas, Esposito, and Merson all above 20 million. Merson and Steve G, the only bracelet winners left in the field. Elizabeth Hill below 10 million. Gail Bowman under 4 million. The short stack, Danny Wong with five big blinds left. And there's Sylvia, who has more than tripled his stack today. Also at this table, Stanford grad Scott Abrams, who has had a small taste of World Series success, but never anything like this. Everyone dreams of the final table. Before you enter the tournament, everyone already has that vision of them winning first place. I mean, that, that's what they do. I, I've thought about the final table, but every time you do, it, it just kind of pulls you away from the game. And, and really, the, the best way to get through it is to not think about the money, not think about the final table. Just think about the cards you have, the chips you have, and your opponent's cards, and, and just go from there. Scott grew up in Illinois, one of the best high school chess players in the state. Also took up Taekwondo, and he has a first-degree black belt. Action folded to Jesse Sylvia at this table on the Jack Link's Beef Jerky Hole Cam Pocket Aces. Welcome to the Jesse Sylvia Main Event Poker Hour. No martial arts for Jesse growing up, just cribbage and gin rummy. A double up, then a flop set. Now Pocket Aces. Oh, and the Main Event Chip Lead, a raise from Jesse to 480,000 to Abrams with Ace Seven of Clubs. I believe Scott Abrams is wearing a shirt with various math problems and hearts instead of numbers. I don't expect that to catch on. <laughs> I bet he understands it, though. Abrams with the suited ace and a re-raise to a million two and a nickel. Well, Scott probably read a lot at Stanford and might even read the book on Jesse Sylvia, which says that Jesse will play a lot of pots and often raise light on the button, but this time Jesse has raised heavy. Big blind folded back to Sylvia now with the aces. Sylvia with the four bet, two million six. And Scott now may be wondering why he reads it all. We just heard Scott say that you have to think about your cards and your opponent's cards. It's about time he starts thinking about Jesse's hand. Yeah, no kidding. He does fold, he says, I've donated enough of my stack to you, Jesse. And Jesse James Sylvia stacking chips again, this time at the expense of Scott Abrams. Well, at least Scott had the smarts to give it up at that point. Our chip leader gets chippier. Jesse riding his rush to over 24 and a half million now. If I push you, huh? Sometimes. I almost did. I'll bet you Martha's Vineyard doesn't even have a bowling alley. I'm not going there. <laughs> All right, over to the luckiest seven players left in the main event because they do not have Jesse Sylvia at their table right now. The goal is to win all 198 million chips. One of our remaining players will do that. You can see our coverage of it on ESPN and ESPN2, October 29th and 30th. Danny Wong, the short stack, folds to Andres Koreknoy, queen eight of hearts. He started playing poker six years ago after he had a moped accident in Greece. He was laid up for three months, started playing because he was depressed and needed to find something to do. This Hungarian poker pro with a raise to 505,000 Hill with Jack Ten of Hearts. The Norwegian amateur reaching for chips. And she'll make the call. Greg Merson folds his button. Bowman, the small blind to Esposito in the big blind with pocket sevens. I call. Esposito trying to become the first triathlete to make the main event final table. In fact, he might be the first poker player since Huck Seed in 1996 to have gone for a job. He makes the call. Look at the percentages. It is a three-way jump ball. 
All right, here's the flop. 10-4, Trey won the heart. Hill gets the best of that with top pair. Esposito comes up way short for now, but he does bet 505,000. Esposito hoping his bet ends matters. It certainly should end Cork Norrie's participation in the hand. Yeah, that was a bad flop for the pre-flop raiser. And he does get out of the way. Pair of tens for Hill enjoys a nine to one advantage. And she'll call. Annie Oakley left her holster at home. Where's the uh, pep in the step we saw earlier? Yeah, no raise after flopping top pair. Turn card nine of spades, no help to Esposito. I check. Check. He says check. Michael checks. And Hill checks. Don't know why Elizabeth didn't pull the trigger there. River card, deuce of spades, and who did that hit, Norman? I check. Check. <laughs> Nobody. Checks. Pocket sevens left in the dust. Esposito checks again. Hill's got to figure she has the best hand. I would never go for the thin value bet here, Alon, because I don't even know what it is. <laughs> High call. A quick call from Esposito. Case high. And he's beat. Well, that was a thin value bet, I believe. She got a thin value call from a thin guy, and as a result, a thin value boost to her chip stack. <laughs> Hill fighting for every chip. Esposito helping to keep the ladies in the main event. He doubled up Bowman and now hands some chips over to Elizabeth Hill. Hill stacking her winnings over 12.1 million now. She's still not on the virtual final table, but Elizabeth Hill is climbing. This is the World Series of Poker main event presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. This year's main event bracelet is a thing of beauty. Retail value of $150,000, but its real value? Priceless. I'm Lon McCarron with Norman, Chad, and Kara Scott here on the final day before the final table. Elizabeth Hale and Gail Bowman trying to become the first female duo to make this final table. Barbara Enright finished fifth in 1995, the only woman to make the main event final table. Then in 96, Barbara, the first woman to win an open bracelet. For Michael Esposito, this main event run, nothing compared to the runs he takes during his training. I live in a town called Seaford, New York. It's a, you know, a middle-class neighborhood in Long Island. I get up 4.50 or 5 in the morning and I'll go biking or I'll go running or I'll go to the gym and work out. I take a 704 train to work every day. We train almost every single day, sometimes twice a day. You ready five more? <laughs> yeah. A few years ago, you know, working on a trading desk, I was very heavy and it was easy. You know, guys would order breakfast pizzas, you go to business dinners and you're eating and drinking and lo and behold, one day I get on the scale, I was 223 pounds. And I felt like I was about 50, 60 years old. And it was like, you know what, I could either be really miserable about this or I could do something in my life to kind of change my life. And I basically went home and got healthy. And I went on a straight kick. Lo and behold, I went from like 223 to like 187. I saw somebody the other day I hadn't seen in years and they're like, wow, you're half the size you used to be. Triathlon training and living a healthy and good life makes you a little bit calmer. I don't care what anybody else in the tournament's doing. I don't care what any chip count in the room is except my own. I recently completed a poker triathlon, Lon. Bet, raise, fold. It was tiring. <laughs> that was Michael's girlfriend, Laura Marino, training with him in the feature as she does every morning. Korknoy with an opening raise to 505 with ace 10. Now on Esposito in the small blind with the Jack Link beef jerky wild card hand. I right, call. Cool. Cool. And he calls. I'll completely throw out C, Jack 3. It's either A, B, or D. I've got a triathlon of choices, Lon. I'll narrow it down after the flop, which is the swimming portion of this hand. Wow, what a great way to avoid having to pick a hand. The flop is 8, Queen, Ace, Esposito, first to act. You know, I'm not avoiding anything. I'm going about this in a very logical, deductive way. <laughs> Esposito bet 600,000. Korknoy now with top pair. Well, don't think Michael would bet queens in this spot. It's either a set of eights or a diamond draw. We saw Michael check raise trips earlier, but this is a draw-heavy board. It's either A or B. I'll narrow it down after the turn, which, of course, is the cycling portion of the hand. Gorgnay with the call of 600,000. By the way, I originally thought Esposito was bluffing when he told us he was a triathlete. Turn card king of hearts gives Gorgnay a Broadway draw to go with his top pair. Esposito 
Puts out a million one hundred thousand. Okay, I'll put him on A, pocket eights. I can't believe Michael would still be pressing a diamond draw. I believe he's a, a conservative triathlete. He's not going to start running unless he has his shoes on. Ah, good point. That transition stage. Korknoy now. He's got a good hand, top pair drawn to Broadway. And he does make the call. The river should be the swimming portion of the hand, but it's actually the running portion. <laughs> river card 10 of clubs, four cards to Broadway on the board now, which gives Korknoy aces up. Esposito checks. Yeah, I would check too. That was a scary card. That put a cork in the action. Esposito with pocket eights for a flop set to win the Jack Lynx beef jerky wild card hand. You're back, Norman. Bad river. That's not Mike. That was a bad river, I said. If Andras bets, maybe Michael does run away. I, I doubt it. Korknoy with about 8.1 million. He has to guard against misplays now. That river cost me like 2.5 million. You know that, right? At least. Yeah. I think he might have tried to push me up the hand that he had two pair. The best poker content on the internet. Your super high roller bowl seven champion. Oh yeah. Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that fight? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. Jesse Sylvia continues to lead the main event here at this secondary featured table. Rob Salaburu with a short stack at this table. Thomas folds 7-4. Salaburu with queen eight of spades and a raise to 495. Salaburu's been a bit quiet ever since he lost that big flip against Jesse Sylvia. Jake Balziger folds a small blind. Jeremy Osmus, the local pro, with 9-7 of spades and the big blind. And he likes having the home field advantage here. Like Jeremy says, something? I have my own bed to go to at night. Jeremy and his wife, Adria, became parents last year. A daughter, Kalia. And she is pregnant with their second child now. Jeremy calls for 255 more. Good style, sir. What's that? You get a little discount from 500. Osmus enjoying his ninth cash at this World Series. A lot of caches. The flop, four, five, queen, two spades. A flush draw for each. Salaburu's is better. Plus, Rob caught top pair. Yeah, huge flop for Salaburu. Osmus checks Salaburu with 580,000 as his brother looks on. Jeremy calls for 580,000. If the flush comes, Jeremy is going to be depositing chips in Rob's account. Seven of diamonds, that pair is Osmus, gives Salaburu a gut shot. Osmus checks again. Salaburu quickly puts chips together. That's a million two. Osmus not going anywhere. Might even be thinking about check raising Salaburu here. Salaburu was put on his heels as Jesse and his former roommate Russell Thomas taking a picture at the rail. And there's a call from Jeremy. Almost five million in the pot. The river card, another queen trips for Salaburu. Osmus checks. Salaburu checks back, shows his hand, and Jeremy will ship the chips. Well, Salaburu might have thought Osmus had a queen with a bigger kicker, and Jeremy now is thinking the poker gods were with me. No spade on the turn or river. So that pot of almost five million goes to Salaburu. Osmus down below 13 million, still in ninth place right now. Yul Salaburu with some encouraging words for his brother, who now goes over 12 million chips. Rob Salaburu is on the comeback trail, but it doesn't quite seem like he has talking chips yet. Tonight's bracelet moments are brought to you by PokerNews.com. Becoming just the second Russian to win multiple bracelets, Vyacheslav Zukov followed up his 2011 win with a victory this summer in the 3K Pot Limit Omaha High-Low Tournament. Both of New York pro Nick Schulman's bracelets have come in the 10K No Limit Deuce to 7 event as he followed his 2009 win with another victory here in 2012. Of the 14 remaining players, only Greg Merson and Steve G have won World Series bracelets. No seconds or thirds from the other players. Danny Wong has finished fourth twice. The last bracelet winner to win the main event was Chris Jesus Ferguson in 2000. And like Greg Merson this year, he had won his first bracelet earlier at that World Series. Here at the featured table, under the gun is Greg Merson. And he'll fold 10-7. 
as these remaining players vying to become one of the October nine here in 2012. Folded to Mark Andre Lottasur, Ace King offsuit. I could watch this guy trying to figure out a bet size all day long. <laughs> 28-year-old pro now lives in Montreal, has plans to be on the poker trail for a while. A raise to 480,000. Wong folds his button over to the small blind, Andras Koroknoy. On the Jack Link Speed Jerky hole cam, Ace King offsuit. When he had his moped accident, he says a sign stopped him from falling 200 feet off a cliff. Andras feels very fortunate to be alive. With a raise in front of him, a re-raise from the Hungarian pro to over a million two in the big blind, Elizabeth Hill. 10-9 of spades. She folds. So back to Lottasur with his ace king. Lottasur 63rd in last year's main event. Korgnoy 339th in last year's main event. With ace king, those biceps are bred to four bet. <laughs> He'll need big biceps to put all the chips required for a four bet, and that looks like what he's gonna do, Norman. And he makes it 2,150,000. Two healthy stacks, heading for a kiss in your sister showdown. Lottasur has Korknoy covered. Neither one's gonna be seeking cover here. Got him covered by a little more than five million chips. Andrash now. They move all in. Says all in. For almost nine million. I call. And a quick call from Lottis, or they love their ace kings. Same hand. Two hunky guys in two black shirts with two good looking hands. Let's chop it up and move on with our lives. Cork Noy officially the one at risk. Yeah. All right, the flop is all clubs. Well, well, well. That could change everything. Cork Noy now can only lose to a running jack nine of clubs. And now Lottasaur is looking at a potential disaster. He could lose 65% of his stack here. Korak Noy with the ace high flush draw. All right, turn card is a club! Oh! Korak Noy doubles through Lottasaur. Korak Noy delighted. Lottasaur devastated. And with that eight of clubs, Lottasaur suddenly one of the short stacks while Korknoy takes over fifth place. Boy, Korknoy was all in, ace nine versus Danny Wong's ace ten and River to flush. Now ace king versus ace king, and he makes another flush. What an amazing and stunning turn of events for Mark andre Lottasaur. I move on him. I call. That's going to be a tough one for Mark andre Lottasur to come back from. He's now one of the short stacks in the room. Here at the secondary feature table, seven-handed still Russell Thomas with King Nine and a raise to a half million. Thomas made a final table at the first World Series event he ever played in 2010. Then he was 248th at last year's main event. On the Jack Link Speed Jerky Hole Cam, Jesse Sylvia with the big blind, 6-5 of spades. They were roommates when Sylvia first moved to Las Vegas two years ago. Sylvia stayed here. Thomas went to work in Connecticut. And they have had dinner with each other every night since day three. Jesse calls for 260 more. Heads up. Two big stacks. Two former roomies. The flop. Deuce 7-4. Sylvia picks up an open ender. Each of these guys knows who leaves the cap off the toothpaste. <laughs> he checks the Thomas with two overguards. Thomas is going to continuation bet that flop 90% of the time, I'd imagine. 450,000. Russell says he taught Jesse a lot about hand reading and ranges when they lived together. Hopefully he didn't teach him how to read Russell when he's weak. Jesse Sylvia with his draw comes along with the call. And Jesse is certainly capable of check raising in that spot sometimes. The Jack misses both. Jesse, first to act here. Checks again. These guys have some similarities. Neither likes to give up on bluffs. We saw Russell Thomas bluffing off a lot of chips, drawing dead against Jake Balsiger earlier on day seven. Russell in a much better spot here. He's bluffing with the best hand, Jesse with six high. Thomas comes out with a bet of a million fifty thousand. Jesse's girlfriend nervous as always on the rail. Russell there betting half the pot. It might be just cheap enough for Jesse to stick around and see if he can get lucky. And he does just that with his draw, Norman. All right, the river card. Trey of spades jumps out to buy Thomas. Sylvia's good fortune now brings him the straight. 
Jesse hits Jin on the river. And if they were still living together, Russell Thomas might change the locks. Jesse checks a third time. A good spot for Jesse to check because Russell Thomas here can't win the pot unless he bets at it, and he just might do that. And that check will get Thomas to keep firing, it looks like. Yeah, an ill-fated three-barrel bluff in progress. Over a million and a half. No, this is what I know. Jesse is not folding, and Jesse is not calling. So the question now is how much from Jesse? Jesse Sylvia with the stone cold nuts. And he is putting chips together, Norman, using some of the new beige chips worth a quarter million each. He brings out the hammer to 3.9 million. That should do it. And a quick fold from Russell Thomas. And Jesse Sylvia will take that pot from the former roomie. Jesse should pick up the check tonight at dinner. The chip leader upping his count to almost 29 million. And he takes almost 4 million from Russell Thomas, who drops into fifth place. So we swing away from the secondary feature table back to the featured table. Michael Esposito, the big stack with about 21.5 million. Danny Wong, the super short stack with only 1.9 million. Gail Bowman folded now on Michael Esposito. Surveying the situation. Wait, wait, we only have one more. They didn't post the other one. Yes. Oh, you pulled it in, okay. Yeah. A weak ace for Esposito into the muck. Mark Andre Ladasur with a weaker ace. Mark Andre now sitting with that shorter stack, just 20 odd big blinds, courtesy of that ace king, ace king disaster against Andras Korknoy. With ace deuce, Ladasur wants to play. I'm all in. And now Wong with his own ace deuce is all in for a million nine. And he's got the real short stack, eight big blinds. Korknoy and Hill out of their seats, their hands are dead. Merson now. And he says all in with ace jack of clubs. So Ladasur folds his ace deuce. Now Greg Merson will try to eliminate the short stack and move everyone a notch closer to the final table. Wong at risk. The 27-year-old Las Vegas pro dominated by Merson. 4-3 deuce, all spades. You wouldn't mind doubling me up, Greg. Ace jack against ace deuce. She's got it. Who's this coming? The Here's the flop. Queen, six, five, two spades. The bigger ace is still better. Wong made that great call against Andres Korknoy, ace 10 versus ace 9, but got unlucky to lose most of his chips. Wong, of course, didn't see Lottisur's hand. The graphic represents what Danny views as his outs. Eight of clubs. Merson adds a useless flush draw. Does that have a case deuce? Huh? Three deuces? Wong's got to have a deuce. No, you saw it. Yeah. Three deuces. Yeah. The river card is the seven of spades. Merson wins the pot with a better race, and he puts Danny Wong on the outside looking in. Great run, bad luck, no final table. Danny Wong takes 14th place worth over $465,000. On day one of the main event, the final table is but a mirage. Though here late on day seven, it's crystal clear. I always wanted to grow up and play in the main event, but I never thought this would happen. As a poker player, if you could pick one tournament to win, this is going to be the tournament you want to win. Elizabeth Hill and Gail Bowman are trying to finish a job many thought impossible. Reach poker's promised land. Today, my focus is going to have to be just to stay calm, don't freak out. <laughs> Tonight, the final table will at last be set. First, 13 players face their toughest poker test yet. Mullen. Level wrench it out. Only nine chairs are available at the World Series of Poker main event final table. It's time to secure a seat. Welcome to the final hour before the final table of the World Series of Poker main event presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. 
four eliminations to go before we have our October 9. I'm Lon McCarron with Norman Chad and Kara Scott. Here inside the Amazon room at the Rio, the excitement level is peaking as the remaining players hope for some luck and to stay away from the shark. Gail Bowman stack is short, but her legend is long. She could become the second woman ever to make the main event final table. Norway's Elizabeth Hill is one of two women remaining. She hopes to punch her ticket to the final table tonight. She could become the second woman ever to make the main event final table. Maybe we'll have a female daily double. Mark andre Lottisor's stack is running on empty. He could become the first French-Canadian on tennis scholarship to make the main event final table. Maryland's Greg Merson stands in second place. He could be the third person from Maryland to get there if he ever stops texting. Chip leader Jesse Sylvia, a product of Martha's Vineyard. You know, I don't even think they sell playing cards on Martha's Vineyard. You can't even get there unless you swim. Sylvia and Mercer in the cream of the crop. Russell Thomas in third. Steve G with a seat on the virtual final table. Sitting in seventh, Jake Balsiger with a chance to become youngest main event champ ever. Both women on the outside looking in, but there's still time to make a move. A lot of certain Gail Bowman both in the danger zone. If they both go bust tonight, maybe I'll play matchmaker and hook them up. <laughs> At our featured table sit both women, Elizabeth Hill and Gail Bowman. They, along with Mark andre Latisor are the three short stacks in the event right now. This feature table six-handed as the secondary table plays seven-handed. 540,000 chips per round. Gail Bowman needs to commit quickly. Just about any ace, any pair, or any two big cards should be enough for Gail. Plain and simple, she needs some luck. Hill not as desperate, but she still has the below average stack. Hill can still play her game, bluffing the boys, but Merson is a fearsome obstacle on her left. This is level 33 of the main event. Nearly 66 hours of poker for these 13 remaining players have been Played. The blinds at 120 and 240 with a 30,000 chip ante. With Queen Knight of Diamonds on the button hill, looks like she's going to put in a raise. It's 480,000. When Barbara Enright made the main event final table in 1995, a bad beat to Brent Carter knocked her out in fifth place. No other woman has made the final table. Folded to Bowman in the big blind with pocket four. She's had a rough day seven. Now all of her chips are in the middle, almost two and a half million. You know, I've noticed that Elizabeth's earrings are actually Advil tablets. <laughs> How much is it exactly? Gail thinking, I'll tell you how much it is. It's for the rest of my chips. Hill with queen nine of diamonds makes the call to put Bowman at risk. And after so many in the crowd have been rooting for both of these women here, these two clash. Gail would love to steal Elizabeth's earrings to help her cure her headache. <laughs> I didn't like Hill's call, not because I'd love to see both women make the final table, but because I just didn't like the call for a quarter of her stack. Hill, though, a slight favorite here. So Bowman trying to survive an all-in moment once again. Here is the flop. 7-6-5. Bowman has an up and down straight draw. The 8 is no good for her because Hill has a gut shot to the 9 high straight. Of course, two women have never made the main event final table. Hill trying to end that possibility right here. Bowman ahead for the moment with the pocket fours. The turn card. Tray of clubs, Bowman turns the straight, and that turns her anguish into a smile. And that cuts Hills out here. An eight and an eight only now would knock out Gail Bowman. The river card, the queen of clubs, and Gail Bowman survives again, keeping us at 13 players as Hills' knockout try fails. Bowman's double up worth over 5.2 million. In this country, ibuprofen goes in the mouth, no? <laughs> it does. Hill drops a quarter of her stack on that call of Gail's all-in. Bowman into 12th place. Gail Bowman can relax momentarily. With that double up, Gail Bowman has given hope to the improbable female tandem making the final table. It's a storyline we've followed since Gail was a chip leader to begin day three. And tonight, we find out if they can reach the finish line. Two women crossing that final table finish line would be unprecedented. Even one would be historic. But let's not forget the men who could make this October 9 memorable. The young guy, Jacob Balsiger. The old guy, Steve G. The controversial guy, Andres Korgnoy. The comeback guy on and off the felt, Greg Merson. And of course, the amiable, charming, engaging guy, Mr. Personality, Rob Salaburu. Bring it on. The next player out earns over $465,000. Rob Salaburu would love to send one of his table mates to collect that payout, but alas, he's the short stack at that secondary feature table at the moment. Back at the feature table, action on Elizabeth Hill. She folds jack nine to Greg Merson on the Jack Link Speed Jerky Hole Cam. Pocket fours. Russell Rosenblum of Maryland made the main event final table in 2002. Steve Daneman of Maryland made the main event final table in 2005. 
The fours just worked for Bowman. Merson will ply his trade with him now to a raise to a half million. Fold it over to the big blind. Mark andre Ladasur with ace seven off suit. Marlin. I call. Montreal Poker Pro suffering through a difficult day. Shoves all in for almost 4.3 million and gets a call from Merson. Lottasor pushed with 18 big blinds left. Merson with a big stack made the quick call. And now our chip leader at the start of this day seven is at risk. So your pretty boy against your Maryland boy. How conflicted you must be. Well, I feel bad for the pretty boy. He took that big hit in the ace-king, ace-king hand. All right, here's the flop. Lottasur at risk. And a seven in the window with another seven and a four. Lottasur with trips, but Merson scores a full house. And if Merson isn't going to react to that flop, I don't expect we'll ever see him react. Merson remains zen-like. Lottasur now more than a three-to-one dog to stick around. Turn card now. The deuce of clubs. Mark Andre needs to have it happen on the river or it won't happen at all. Lottasur needs an ace, deuce, or seven or his main event is over. And now the river card. The six of spades means the end of a fine run for Canadian pro Mark Andre Lottasur. Greg Merson taking the last of his chips. 63rd a year ago, 13th this year. $465,000 plus cab fare to the airport. Get a phone number. <laughs> Good luck. Get her number. Then oh, get his number. And understandably dejected Mark andre Lottasur takes his leave. Greg Merson caught a bigger bolt of lightning in that flop. He's the chip leader with 12 players left. Just 12 players left in the main event. The math says you have a 75% chance of making the final table, but it sure doesn't feel like that to the players. We check in now at the secondary featured table. Plenty of big stacks here, including 27-year-old Jesse Sylvia. He was the chip leader until Greg Merson's third straight knockout changed that. Sylvia open for 480,000 with Ace King. Scott Abrams comes along with King 10. Abrams has a master's degree, but if poker decisions receive grades, I'd give that an F. I don't like calling an early raise with King 10. And the big blind, Russell Thomas with Queen Jack. He calls. <laughs> Rob, who folded under the gun, trying to keep everyone loose. Yo, what? Thomas with an actuarial science degree, Abrams with an engineering degree. I believe Sylvia likes to play ping pong. <laughs> the flop, 10-4 king, two spades. Thomas is open-ended. Top pair, top kicker for Sylvia. Abrams with top two pair. Thomas checked, Sylvia checks. Well, I gave the man an F grade and he got an A plus flop. Well, he is a grad student. He likes those further studies of the flop. Abrams, bet 775. Thomas, open ended, not going anywhere. This is a spot in which I'd expect Sylvia to raise. Just a call, though. It's a weird hand. Sylvia with top pair, top kicker, and it's 6% right now. So all three pay to see the turn card, which is the three of diamonds, ensuring Abrams holds his advantage. Thomas checks again. Uh, three of diamonds on the turn line. It's such a buzzkill. Sylvia drawing dead to the other two checks. You know, all I'm proposing is that after the flop, you move all the deuces and trays from the deck and keep playing. <laughs> Abrams now. He was the one to bet the flop initially, and he'll do likewise here on the turn. A million nine with kings up. Russell Thomas folds. And with that fold, Sylvia now no longer drawing dead. Yeah, the ace works for him now. Good news for him and his girlfriend, Ashley. Like Russell Thomas, Jesse Sylvia is a charter member of the Two First Name Club, though with the rare male-female combination. Wow, that is rare indeed. And he makes the call for a million nine. So almost eight million chips up for grabs. Scotty knows that. River card, queen of hearts. Now help to Sylvia. Once again, the zero appears next to his name. And he checks. Some really nitty check back. Yeah, that was nitty. I know nitty. And Abrams will win the pot. I think I lost the minimum. I think I lost the minimum translates loosely to Scotty. You missed some value in that hand. <laughs> so Abrams will stack the winnings. His chip count now up to 21.3 million. Sylvia remains ahead of Abrams on the leaderboard by over 3 million chips. His given name is Jesse Sylvia, but many of his friends call him Jesse James. He's not from the West, having grown up on Martha's Vineyard. 
He's in Las Vegas now, but plans to move to Santa Monica soon with his girlfriend. He says he misses his college days in Southern California when he'd buy $3 sushi and lie on the beach. That's the good life, Lon. Indeed. Jesse had been so close to elimination more than once, yet now he sits behind the second biggest chip stack. Tournament officials keep the tables as balanced as possible, so Rob Salaburu has now brought his oh. chips to the feature table where he's not the short stack. He has been uncharacteristically quiet lately since he doubled up Jesse Sylvia over at that secondary feature table. Let's hold it to Korknoi. Yeah. The door is a seven, and the, the two is the seven, and then it was just like four. Four. <laughs> Greg catching Rob up on all the action here. Dude, there's been so many sick, like, made-for-TV yeah. hands on this table. Just ace-king to ace-king, ace-nine versus ace-ten. Like... He'd bink at nine or would he bink? No, he made a flush on the river here. Well, Korknoi in the small blind with Queen Jack. A raise to 555. Hill in the big blind. She looks down at 10 7 of clubs. Elizabeth with Daniel Negrano's favorite hand. But she's on a slippery slope with a short stack. I wish I did. She calls. We're still here. That's all that matters, right? So the two blinds will see a flop. Six eight five. Corknoy missed. Corknoy says he was lucky to survive his moped accident six years ago, and of course he was lucky to survive in this main event when he had his all-in and muck moment against Gail Bowman. Corknoy with two over cards to the flop and Hill's hand bet six twenty-five. This is the type of flop Hill would raise with earlier in the main event. Right now, she's thinking twice about it because of her dwindling stack. Starting the hand with just 6.2 million, and she does make the call here on the draw. Turn card now. Deuce of spades. Neither pair is up. Yeah, deuce on the turn. It's useless. Useless. Corknoy with nothing, but he might hope to push around Hill here because of her shorter stack. Corknoy starting the hand with 19.5 million. And here he bets 1.175 million. Well, on one hand, as we see, she's getting the right pot odds to call here. On the other hand, she has to commit more than 20% of her short stack to this turn bet with no hand. Hill fighting with 10 high versus the queen high of Korknoi. Nah, I don't like this here. I don't like it at all. She makes the call in this battle of hope and promise. I don't like it for Elizabeth. Almost five million in the middle and eight pairs the board. Queen high best for Korknoi. Yeah, you mentioned it's queen high now versus ten high. You can see Korknoi's chip advantage in the upper left-hand corner. Andrush reaching for chips and puts the ultimate heat on Hill, putting her all in. Yeah, good play by the Hungarian. Good bluff. Good bluff. So Laburu letting Korknoi know he had a read on him. And Cork and I will stack the chips. Well, if Elizabeth Hill goes on to bubble this final table, this hand will be a big reason. She slips to 12th and last place now with just 16 big blinds. Nice hand, Hungry. Thank you, buddy. Cork Noy picking up steam here on the critical day seven. This is the World Series of Poker main event presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Welcome back to Las Vegas, a day full of drama here at the main event. From 27 players down to just 12 at the moment, Greg Merson leads with nearly 33 million, well above the average final table stack. Jesse Sylvia in second. This deep run may be the product of Jesse teaching his girlfriend the basics of tournament poker. Jesse Sylvia, and this is my second main event. I would say a lot of kind of like preparation for the World Series kind of came from my girlfriend, Ashley. She, probably six months ago, wanted to learn poker. And so like through that, I started teaching her a little bit, just going over like different tournament strategies with her and kind of watching videos with her and realizing that kind of my tournament game was a little bit stale. As she got into playing live, she was the reason why I played so many hours lately. We'd wake up and she'd be like, oh, hey, what do you want to do? I'm like, I don't know, make breakfast. What do you want to do? She's like, I want to go play poker. And so I started putting in like tons and tons of hours the last couple of months, which has been really cool because I don't always have the best work ethic. It's nice to have someone who is helping out a little bit without trying to. 
Jesse's living the sweet life? How many girlfriends wake up in the morning and say, hey, let's go play poker? That's the stuff of fantasy. <laughs> At the six-handed table, Russell Thomas, who played a lot of six-handed Hold'em when he could play online. This is right up his alley. It raised a half million. Steve G on the button. Queen four of diamonds. At 22, he played in a version of the big game in Northern California. Most of the guys were in their 50s. Now he's the old guy in a sea of 20-somethings. He calls in the small blind. Sylvia with pocket sevens. And with the button just calling, Jesse certainly could re-raise here with that hand. And certainly holding the big stack as well. But he just calls. Big blind Scott Abrams with king jack of diamonds. And Abrams also could be thinking re-raise in this spot. But he just calls as well. well I officially protest the action of all four <laughs> players. Four-way action. Here is the flop. Seven, Trey King. Sylvia with a set of sevens. And he checks it against the three others. Top pair with a flush draw for Abrams. He checked. Thomas already drawing dead. He checks. Well, Thomas checking is the first thing to meet my approval in the last two minutes. <laughs> Steve G now with an inferior flush draw and now going covert. Yeah, here we go with the hood again. I guess he's going to bet. Steve G with the 1% hand with the queen four of diamonds and that bad flush draw. Well, the 56-year-old playing his hand like a 26-year-old. He bets a million four fifty. I suppose Sylvia got what he wanted, and I think Abrams got what he wanted. Jesse thinking, what would Ashley do here? Jesse cashed just one of 14 events at this year's World Series, and now he's on the cusp of the main event final table. It does look like he's coming to life here, Norman, with a check raised to 3.4 million with his three sevens. I wonder if that check raise changes Scott Abrams' plans at all. Big hand, top pair, second nut flush draw. Well, we didn't see a lot of action pre-flop, but they're making up for it here. By the way, if Russell Thomas were allowed to fold out of turn, he would have by this point. <laughs> and a re-raise from Abrams to 7 million straight. Thomas just trying to fold. He finally does. Back to G now. G with a big flush draw. But he's looking at a raise and a re-raise, and he's got to wonder if there's a bigger flush draw out there. In this case, there is. G is tortured. And he gives up that queen high flush draw. So now back to Jesse Sylvia. These are two of the bigger stacks left. Sylvia with the bigger of the two stacks by about five and a half million. All in. Jesse raises Abrams all in. I call. And he makes the call. Wow. Yeah, I don't think Abrams could have folded there, but he started this hand with almost 90 big blinds, and now he's a three to one dog to stay alive. And the top two stacks at this table have built a pot of over 44 million chips. That's up for grabs as well as Scott Abrams tournament life. Yeah, for Jesse Sylvia, it's either gonna be a monster chip stack or a short stack if he gets unlucky. We need it. So a hand that started rather lethargically has built into the biggest pot so far of the main event. Abrams at risk. Turn card is the queen of clubs. Scott Abrams now needs his huge gamble to pay off on the river or he will suddenly be a footnote to this main event. Sylvia staring at a possible monster chip lead. Scott Abrams needs a diamond or he's done. Now, the 44 million chip river card, the six of clubs, Jesse James Sylvia scores the win and sends Scott Abrams to the rail. A swift fall for Scott Abrams. Abrams took his shot and fired all blanks. Abrams out in 12. Where's Ashley? Where's Ashley? You teach the girl to play poker, she disappears to buy some juicy fruit when you're involved in a 44 million chip pot at the main event. Abrams wins over 590 grand. Scott's 20 million chips evaporated and reappeared in Jesse Sylvia's ledger. Nothing is certain in poker, but Sylvia could probably start making plans for the final table. Nearly 50 million chips. Wow. Eight and a half million dollars cash to our champion this year, plus the championship bracelet. But we're still two eliminations away from that final table lineup for 2012. Jesse Sylvia leading the chip count after that stunning knockout of Scott Abrams. Short stack Gail Bowman with ace four. She gives it up.
Lines up to 150, 300,000 with a 40K ante. Esposito folds to Rob Salaburu with the Jack Links beef jerky wildcard hand. I say he's going to act quickly. If he does, is that a win for me? Of course not. Salaburu wants to get involved here. 615,000 is the bid. Raised to 615,000. No. Or is it? I think they're confused on the value of the Bay ship. It's worth only 250. So his chips were not enough for a legal raise, so they're calling it a call. So now on you, wild card man. Well, he meant to raise. It could be any of those hands. I'll make no commitment on this one till the flop line. Get a ruling if you want play-by-play, -play, pretty boy. <laughs> Corknoy on the button with 7-6 of spades, limps in as well. And the small blind, Elizabeth Hill, ace eight. She does not want to play. Merson in the big blind. King Trey off. Option checks. And he checks his option. It's A, B, C, or D. <laughs> Thank you very much. Three players will see the flop. Jack, 6-4. Merson misses. He checks. Salaburu now with half a million. Well, now I will throw out ace-9. It's A, B, or D, some type of pair. And Rob acted quickly again. I've been right twice about that already in this hand. Gorgnoy flopped a pair of sixes and calls. Merson out of the way. Heads up now. The Hungarian thinking his sixes might be good here. He might be right. Sixes against the wild card hand. Turn card, deuce of hearts. Salaburu first to act, and he acts quickly. 725. And I'll act just as quickly. I'm ruling out pocket threes. It's A or D. Do you see how I methodically have narrowed it down in a, a scientific super system type of fashion? Final table, event 42, baby. <laughs> Gorak Noy, who always looks like he just swallowed a poker chip. <laughs> Calls. Cork Noy's still not a believer that he might be right. It could be B or C, but Andras has never final table to World Series event. <laughs> Eight of diamonds on the river. A healthy wager from Rob, two million. And now I'm going to go with D, pocket queens. If Salaburu had Jack 10, he might be a little worried that Cork Noy also has a Jack and has him out kicked. Now Andras. Cool. He says, call Rob, turns over Queens to win the Jack Lynx beef jerky wild card hand. Nice job, Norman. Of course, I've become a Jack Lynx savant. <laughs> and you've got a winning record in this regular season. Well done. Is that a fake misclick? Greg needling Rob about his misfire of his raise attempt pre-flop. So Rob in sixth place now. Andrush falls to fourth place, still very firmly seated at the virtual final table with 11 left and two very short stacks still in the game. No, it was a real misclick. Rob says it was an honest go, mistake. Let's take a look at his pre-flop raise attempt. He threw out a beige, a lavender, and three orange, maybe thinking the beige was worth a half a million or thinking he put in two beiges where they're worth quarter million each. That would have totaled 615, but he came up short and then made it a call. Whether his pre-flop raise slash call was intentional or not, Koroknoi still paid off big on the river. Just the third World Series cash for the Hungarian. His biggest score came two years ago with his LA Poker Classic victory. 1.7 million, a field of 745. At that LAPC, Johnny Chan was 12th, Annie Duke was 19th, and Jeremy Osmus, still looking to make this main event final table, finished 69th. Action on Koroknoi here with two black sevens. And that is a legal raise to 605,000. Hill with ace queen offsuit. Annie Duke, arguably the most success of any woman in main event history. Four caches, including a 10th place finish in 2000. All of Hill's chips moving as one, almost 3.5 million. Merson gets out of the way. He has had no luck against Hill. Well, Hill's just moved in with just over 11 big blinds left. I doubt it's enough chips to protect her hand from pocket sevens calling. So folded back to Koroknoi. They're getting a count on Hill's stack. And he makes the call with the pocket pair to put Elizabeth Hill at Do risk. Do it for Hungary. Huh? Do it for Hungary. Salaburu doesn't want to do it for Hungary. He wants to get one step closer to the final table. Could this remarkable and entertaining adventure be over for the Norwegian waitress? Hill and Gail Bowman try to make history. Hill on the brink of elimination. Seven ball, huh? Salaburu openly rooting for Cork Noy. He doesn't care much for history. Hill not amused by that. All right, Elizabeth Hill with all her chips at risk. For Trey Jack, not much there to give Hill any extra hope. Six of spades. Salaburu still calling for cards for Cork Noy. Hill needs an ace or a queen. The turn card now. Is a king. Hill with a Broadway draw. 
One last chance for Elizabeth Hill to keep her main event going. Elizabeth Hill, ace, queen, or 10, or her bid for main event final table history is over. The river is the tray of clubs, and the end has come to the 2012 main event for Elizabeth Hill with an 11th place finish. Corknoy takes care of business and Elizabeth Hill. Good luck. I hope you make the final table. She showed us she could serve up more than just the day's special. Just ask Greg Merson, who could never get the best of her. Hill out of the main event. A stirring run stopped short of history. Hi. You've had an amazing run here in the main event, Elizabeth. So much support here for you as well. Did you expect that? All of the attention, all of the support? Um, the support is overwhelming. I appreciate it so much for my friends and family back home and all the people here who supported me as well. Uh, yeah, it's very flattering and it's very nice. One of the players who went out today said that you, when you were in a hand, you were stone cold, difficult to read, and you played so, so well. Is that the truth? Were you stone cold or was it uh, a lot of nerves inside? Uh, I can feel my heart pumping uh, quite a lot. Um, well, yeah, I try to stay stone cold. I, don't, I try not to give away too many things when I play a hand. Uh, I can't say it's always as easy though. I can feel my pulse going and my heart is pumping and yeah, it's hard sometimes, but... Well, it was an incredible result, so thank you very much for talking to us and congratulations. Thank you very much. Quite a run indeed, but Elizabeth Hill's trek has ended. Good luck. I hope you make the final table. If a female is to make the final table, there's just one who can do it now, Gail Bowman. Back inside the Amazon room at the World Series of Poker main event presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. We're just one elimination away from our final nine. All ten players now at one table. The eyes of the poker world squarely on that woman, Gail Bowman, trying to make history as the first female to make the final table since 1995 when Barbara Enright did it. But it's not going to be easy. She has the shortest stack among the ten. Gail has waited and waited and waited, but she's reached a point where she can wait no longer. Less than seven big blinds left. On her left, Jesse Sylvia with nearly 48 million. The final table bubbles as good a time as any to pick on average stacks. Steve G probably in Jesse's direct line of sight. So Gail Bowman will be the focus here at this last table. And it would be difficult not to sneak a peek at that main event bracelet sitting here. Ten players left, nine seats available at the October 9 final table. Somebody's going home with a bad memory. And pocket aces on the Jack Link's beef jerky hole cam for Russell Thomas. Thomas with a raise to 750. Big Balsiger with ace king. Bad time for ace king. Joe Cata, youngest main event champion when he won in 2009. Balsiger would eclipse Cata if he can win it all. Balsiger just makes the call with Ace King. Pocket Queens for Greg Merson. Wow, no power shortage on this deal. You know, look at these monster hands. Potentially good news for Gail Bowman and her short stack. Someone could go bust here. Merson. As we've seen, not shy about putting chips in the middle with a re-raise to a million eight fifty. Bowman folds. Merson's second biggest stack. Thomas fourth biggest. Balsiger one of the shorter stacks. Now the overwhelming chip leader, Jesse Sylvia, with ten five. Easy fold for Jesse. Easy fold for Jesse. A lot of action in front of him, and big hands in front of him, as we know. Oh, Jesse. I know you have a boatload of chips, and you'd love to abuse the biggest bubble in poker, but this thing's already been three-bet. What is he up to, Norman? The kid's got spunk on. Spunk can win the day. Spunk can leave you in a ditch. The big stack bully re-pops it to 4,000,006. Salaburu gives up the button. Tom is sitting on pocket aces, and it's been four-bet behind him. Corknoy folds his small blind. Esposito now. Michael. Looks down at, holy smokes, pocket tens. <laughs> That's an easy fold for Michael. Easy as he'll ever see. And now it's up to the 24-year-old actuary with pocket aces. What a moment, ten-handed. I'm all in. All in. He says all, all in, in all for in. <laughs> over 17.6 million. Balsiger with ace king. And Russell get a taker. Well, it won't be Jake. Balsiger with the right decision. Merson has twice the chip stack of Thomas. And folds the Queens. Jesse folds and Thomas wins it and shows the aces. Oh my God, I'm so happy. I had Queens. I had Queens. 
Yeah, Queens? Yeah. I Queens. Yeah, from New Ghana. Uh, Jesse, what'd you have? Like two seven? Five three. Something like that. I mean, you're getting five back. Four thousand, everybody. Four thousand. I'm not scared of the bubble. I don't give. A so Russell inflates his stack with eight million new chips, moving him into third place. Thomas with a pretty good read of Sylvia's hand. Not that surprising, given their background. So after I graduated from college, I wanted to spend a summer out in Vegas, you know, playing the series. Um, I met some people online to get a house with, and Jesse was one of those people. Um, so we, we, we played poker all summer. We became great friends. We, uh, we both improved greatly over that summer. Um, you know, after that summer, I took a full-time job, and he, uh, you know, played full-time out in Vegas. But um, we've stayed in touch, and, you know, every summer I come out, and, uh, you know, we have a good time. Russell taught Jesse a lot about poker, and Jesse says, for about a year after I lived with Russell, I would sometimes hear his voice in my head. All right, fold that at this 10-handed table to Steve G on the button. Ace tray of spades. By far the elder of this group at 56. He's been pretty short stacked virtually this entire main event. Started with just under 17 million chips. He raises to 700,000. Merson in the small blind with Jack nine. And the small blind with a bad hand and a lot of chips. Merson giving this some serious thought. And he raises to a million eight. That's more than what Bowman has. But she wakes up with kings. A welcome sight for Gail. And she calls all in. The action back now to Steve G. G folds his weak ace. So now the only woman remaining at risk, but a healthy favorite with her kings. Greg figures with Elizabeth Hill gone. Let me see if I have any luck against the other woman. I will not be happy with my Maryland guy if he knocks her off the doorstep of history with Jack Nine. All right, Gail Bowman trying to double up one more time. And her kings say she has a pretty good chance. But this is a moment that could create our final table. All right, here's the flop. Merson catches a jack to put some heat on the Kings. Ball. We've seen Gale on edge so many times in the latter stages of this main event, and that flop gives her little relief. The turn card is a 10. Merson's knockout plan comes together even more with a gut shot. His outs keep growing. If this hand goes on all night, eventually Merson will bust Bowman. <laughs> Eight, nine, or Jack ends Gail Bowman's final table bid. Do we have our final table lineup? It's a deuce, and Bowman will survive as her kings carry the poker pro to a small double up. Still 10 handed, still one woman left. Well, Merson gave everyone a charge when he picked up outs, but he couldn't close the deal. So Bowman still the short stack, but now sits with 4.6 million. And it's pretty clear here at the Rio who the fan favorite is. Gail Bowman takes a step in the direction of history. Still a long way to go to reach that final table. Ten players with designs on the same nine seats. Bowman is short, but still fighting. Tonight's bracelet moment brought to you by PokerNews.com. It was the biggest buy-in in the history of poker. 48 players bought in for $1 million apiece to play in the big one for one drop, making its debut at the World Series of Poker. The tough final table included all-time bracelet leader Phil Helmuth and high-stakes specialist Sam Trickett. But it was Antonio S. Van Diare who took home 18.3 million bucks and became poker's all-time tournament money winner. Dad, can you come over here? Because this bracelet is for you. Come here. Antonio had been a successful tournament player before this score, but he was nowhere near the top of the earnings list. Now firmly in first. Without taking into account any other earnings, the 2012 main event champion will be at least ninth on this list. My World Series earnings are just over $50,000, which puts me, well, somewhere in the red. <laughs> All right, folded to Greg Merson here at this 10-handed table on the button. Ace four of clubs. Merson earned 1.1 million for his bracelet win earlier at this World Series. Min raised to 600,000. Gail Bowman in the small blind with pocket sixes. 
Pocket sixes, 15 big blinds left, time to push. Counting out her stack. Is it time? No, she says the sixes are not good enough. In the big blind, Jesse Sylvia on the Jack Links beef jerky hole cam. King 10 off. I'm sorry, the button min raised, and she doesn't push with pocket sixes? What's she waiting for? So Jesse Sylvia calls the two biggest stacks will clash here. The flop now. Trey, seven, deuce, rainbow. Sylvia with king high. Merson with ace high and a wheel draw. Merson, the pre-flop raiser, follows up with 850. 850,000 is the bet. The overwhelming chip leader folds, and Greg Merson will take that pot. Well, Bowman baffled me there, Lon. If she doubles, Gail would be up to 9 million, and then she has breathing room. At 4.5, not a lot of breathing room. Yeah, playing on thin ice with lead skates, but still in the contest. Earlier in the main event, she was involved in another hand with a questionable fold against Andres Koraknoy. I double-checked it with the tournament director, Jack. He says, you owe 60000 We're going to keep you in the tournament. You're not losing your tournament line. 60000 goes here, and, and it's over. Whoa! That an outer table, Andras Koroknoy in the middle of another kerfuffle. It seems he's been given a one-round penalty reportedly after he moved all in and exposed his hand with action pending. Andras said he felt the world was going to end after he went all in and mucked his cards, not realizing Gail still had a hand, but the ruling kept him in, and both of them still have a shot at the final table. Gail the short stack, Andras the fourth biggest stack. Gail with ace tray, it's been folded to her, and she says all in for almost 4.4 million. The chip leader folds to Rob Salaburu in the small. He gives it up to Andras. Now she just has to get by Korknoy of all people. And he gives it up, so Gail Bowman shove gets through, and she'll add over 800,000 to her stack. Gail with a smile. It would be too cruel for Andres Korknoy to knock her out. Bowman still with chips in this main event, and those newcomers add a little bit of oomph to any future all-ins, and that has to make Jeremy Osmus a little nervous as he sits in ninth place. The drama of the main event, day seven, reaching its final act. The final table arena packed to capacity. We await just one more knockout before we have our final table. Folded to Gail Bowman with ace nine. And she says all in for 5.2 million. She's been pretty tight. I'm surprised to see her push here with 17 big blinds left and a so-so ace. To Koroknoy in the small blind with ace jack. Well, no automatic call here by any means for Koroknoy. He knows she's been playing snug and this would be for 22% of a stack. The other players know they have a pretty good stake in this decision. If he does call, Gail Bowman will be dominated and in dire straits. Plus, Corknoy has Michael Esposito yet to act in the big blind. Andras makes the call. Gail Bowman at risk. Now to Esposito. Esposito with five deuce. Can't fold quickly enough, and Gail Bowman once again facing elimination, this time at the hands of the same man who knocked out Elizabeth Hill. Boy, is it possible? Uh, on day five, Corknoy involved in that controversial hand versus Bowman, where he could have been eliminated if the ruling went the other way, and now the Hungarian in position to bust Bowman one spot shy of the final table. Bowman shove met with a bigger race, and short stack Jeremy Osmus looks to be heading to the final table. Corknoy, the one-man roadblock to history here. First taking out Elizabeth Hill in 11th place. Now trying to take out Gail Bowman in 10th. Here's the flop. Trey, queen, queen. Bowman still behind. But the paired board opens up the door for a chop pot. She'll take that. Now Bowman seeking to become the second woman ever to make the main event final table. But she's still way behind and running out of cards. Everyone here on their feet awaiting this outcome. The turn card, eight of spades. Gail Bowman with just one final chance to hang on. The nine others a blank away from adding main event final table to their poker resumes. Gail Bowman needs a three or an eight to chop the pot, a nine to win it. Or once again, there will be no woman at the main event final table. Gail Bowman's final shot. The river card is a king. Bowman out of the main event in 10th place. Korknoy, a villain to most, a hero to eight others. Korknoy 
with a gracious handshake to our 10th place finisher. For the other nine, it's cause for celebration. Utter joy for nine men, one woman in a world of hurt. Like any poker player, Gail Bowman second guessing a losing hand. This one will stay with her for a while. I'm happy for these guys, Lon, but it was painful to see the two women go out in the last two spots here before the final table. Gail wins over 590,000. Jesse Sylvia, the chip leader, shakes hands with the short stack, Jeremy Osmus. Korak Noy with back-to-back -back knockouts of the last two women. Let's go down now to Kara Scott. So much support behind you. How has your experience been? It's been great. It's been awesome. They, they have been awesome. And yeah, I'm really proud to have been so far, even if it's probably the worst place. I mean, not the worst place to end in, but it's. I'm, I'm disappointed right now, but I'm still very, very proud to of what I've done. So I, I'll be fine. <laughs> it, it was an amazing run for you. Are you happy with how you played today at the tables? Yeah, except the last time. <laughs> Yeah, there was a, a big hand between you guys on day five as well, where he could have been out instead. And uh, so clearly, not the result you were looking for. You've had an amazing run here. Tenth. I didn't realize until you told me, actually. I was t um, so, it's so huge. I mean, wow. <laughs> it, is a, it is a huge moment. And hopefully, when you've had time to reflect on it, you'll be very proud of the run that you've had here. And I'm sure your supporters and your friends are very proud of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Here now, the 2012 final table chip counts. Jesse Sylvia with a huge lead on the field. Jeremy Osmus, the beneficiary of Bowman's exit, he'll come in as the short stack. Let's go back now to Kara, who is with Jesse Sylvia. Jesse is not only going to the final table of the main event of the World Series of Poker, you're going as the chip leader. Could you have dreamt this in your wildest dreams? Um, yeah, I don't know about that. I, uh, I always dreamed I'd make the final table. I didn't even have the chip lead as part of it, so this is like gravy, you know what I mean? We saw you on your phone, you know, as soon as the final table was set. Who were you talking to? My mom. Uh, I called my mom. I was going to call my dad, too, but you guys pulled me over, and I was like, okay. She must have been so proud of you. What did she say? Um, it's funny because there's only been, like, I don't think she's, like, the biggest fan in the world of poker. And um, to hear her like freak out and be proud of me was like really amazing. I'm sure we'll have her here in October in the rail watching you. So uh, we look forward to speaking to her. Yeah, and we're gonna bring out like basically every single person that lives on the island I grew up on, and we'll just take busloads out, and it'll be incredible. We might need to get a few more chairs in here. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm headed to Martha's Vineyard during the October 9 lot. It's gonna be a ghost town there. <laughs> Feels so good. I'm as happy as I can be. Next stop, a championship table for nine at the Penn and Teller Theater here at the Rio. If you are a fan of drama, tonight's Day 7 action had it all. <laughs> For Elizabeth Hill and Gail Bowman, a disappointing end to a main event run that was anything but disappointing. For the final nine, a seat at poker's most exclusive table. For Norman Chad and Kara Scott, I'm Lon McCarran. We'll see you on October 29th and 30th for the 2012 main event final table. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.